The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice, could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Trenches Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023, this sports program starts now. Football! It's happening all around you all the time, especially tomorrow as we celebrate Thanksgiving with the entire United States. Hell yeah. Woo! Heck yeah. Woo! Today, we'll obviously talk about what we're grateful for. Uh, one of them would be football. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Another one would be sports as a whole. Life. Then obviously, it'd be family and friends and that we get to do this for a living. But also the fact that you all allow us into your lives every single day. It makes no sense to us why you choose to do so. But the fact that you do is incredibly awesome. And we'll be forever indebted to you for it. So today, we're going to enjoy the hell out of talking about all yep. the sports happenings as we go into... A four-day weekend. Yeah. Ooh. We're off tomorrow. Bye. Friday. Bye. College game day Saturday for Man Army. Boom, boom. The game, baby. Come on. The game. Ohio State, Michigan obviously taking place. We'll be there. Cannot wait to do game day. And then we'll be back for Overreaction Monday with a lot of things happening. So thank you all for everything that you've done for us over the last 365 days. In this next year, next Thanksgiving, we're going to be uh, even more grateful for everything. Hell yeah. Amen. Remember, it could be dead. Bingo. Okay? Remember that. Could be dead. Could things be better? All the time. Of course. Everywhere. But could you be dead? Yes. That's an actual option that could take place. Whenever you get into your car, you drive, over. Boom. Walking down the street, over. Yeah. Accidentally try something, over. Maybe don't wake up, over. Heart just stop, over. So whenever we wake up, let's be thankful for that to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then with Thanksgiving, let's look a little deeper and see what everything around us is that maybe we need to pay a little bit more appreciation to that we don't for the rest of the year. So today should be a very fun one. The Toxic Table is here at Boss Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Con man, great bear shirt. Yeah, I, I was looking for a turkey. You know, I was looking for something. Because uh, they're going to die. Exactly, yeah. A lot of dead turkey. You could be a turkey. You're could not be. a turkey. Boom. Instead, you're enjoying Thanksgiving, not dying for Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah, and who knows what they do with the pardon turkey, too. I'm sure that thing they ends up. They live a great full life. Yeah, I, that's yeah. what they tell you. And dogs go to the farm when they need to, you know, get put down. Well, dogs oh. go to heaven, for sure. Let's not bring them into this also conversation. True. Also true. All dogs go to heaven. Great movie. But, uh, yeah, bear, just figure we're all going to eat and then sleep. That's what bears do. Oh, oh I like that. That's more of a little hibernation. You know, they don't just go high. Um, no, not what? the winter. They don't just disappear, though. It's not like they're just gone for six months. You know that, right? No. What do you mean? Yeah. No. No, I thought they were just gone. I thought yeah. they'd see you later. I guess that's not the case. They still do some stuff, but they just sleep a lot more. Mm -hmm. really? They're a little bit more tired. It's like really? off season. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much what I've learned. I it's was in your book. I thought they slept for... Me too. I saw it on yeah. Instagram. Now, uh, Instagram mm -hmm. taught me a lot of stuff about a lot of things, but that yeah. allegedly was one that really blew my mind last they week do. while I was taking a dump and watching. Because so, so they don't just go into the cave for like six months. Wow. That's yeah, what I thought too. Yeah, me oh, too. That's what my bears are doing. Yeah. Well, well your ba your bears are doing what the actual bears do, which is kind of lumber around slowly. Yep. Exactly. Find a little bit of food and go back to sleep. And then mm -hmm. they come out and they talk about how good they are. Hey, Coach Eberflus, remember when I made this call in one of our wins that we've had over the last two yeah. years? And then they go back into the cave. <laughs> That's what the Bears are. Anyways, oh, yeah. one half of the hammer. Down. Down. Cowboys, Tone Diggs is here. Tone, how you doing, pal? You know, primetime games. A lot of unders. Tomorrow on Thanksgiving, we got three primetime games yeah, that the entire world is watching. Should we be thinking about the unders all day? Or what are we thinking tomorrow? That's a good days? question. 26 and 8 uh, primetime games. Those are, those are Four nice. games tomorrow, sorry. Those are one Friday. Three games tomorrow. Those are night games. Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't. Hmm. The night game for sure. I'm I, I'll put your head in the press. I'm order. confident in that one. The night one, but with okay. the the middle game with Sam Howe and Dak slinging it all around, there might be sixty points in that one. And then Green Bay and those first two, I don't think I'd trust it. That night one though, I think you could take the honor in that one. Yeah, there's three games tomorrow. Obviously, we'll be watching throughout the entire that day. One. That is the evening game where have we heard if Geno Smith is playing or not? I'm not 100 percent sure. Is he playing? Do we know? 
Came I don't back. think we've heard. Yeah, we haven't heard. Yeah, yeah. He, he came back problem. in. I mean, that'd be a game changer. But I'm excited that the world is going to get a chance to see the 49ers. Mm -hmm. And if you're having a late dinner, you know, with the family, a lot of people do afternoon, you know, kind yeah. of dinner so everybody passes out afterwards. So I don't know how many people are actually gathered for this particular game, uh, the Niners game. The Ni Yep, the Niners game. Getting a chance to watch that defense, yep. I'm excited for the world. Oh, well, yeah. When you're watching them play, understanding you're watching like, yeah, this is historic shit that is happening on the field. The middle linebacker, Fred, dog. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolute dog. So good. Bosa, the jungle cat, I think on Thanksgiving is going to show up. Mm -hmm. Chase on the other side. They got green. I mean, everybody they have are freak show athletes. I'm excited that the world's going to see. It feels like we got a good slate tomorrow. Gino is limited participant in practice, but Pete Carroll says he's going to go. Okay, so that means he's going to play. Right. He played at the end of the game last year, uh, last weekend, uh, four days ago, or three days ago. Led the team to a comeback. Jason Myers, who never misses, missed one. It was bad ball. Bad ball, not oh. his fault. Joining us is a 12-year NFL vet, a man who has won a Super Bowl as both a player and a coach. Wow. That's right. Jackie Moons. Played for every team in the NFL pretty much. Ladies and gentlemen, A.Q. Shipley. Hey, How are we doing? A.Q., a lot of things happened in the NFL this week. Let's go to the team that drafted you, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, You're from Moon Township in Pittsburgh. They just fired an offensive coordinator for the first time since 1941. No head coach or coordinator had been fired in the middle of the season of the Pittsburgh Steelers organization since 1941. Mm. What are your thoughts on that happening? And do you think that whenever this decision is made, the Tomlin thinks, you know what, this guy stinks? Or is it just a compounding uh, kind of set of circumstances, you think? This was compounding. This has been brewing for maybe years at Two this years, point. Yeah. I mean, this has been going on years, for a while. Yes. We've, we, he's been very patient. This had to happen. Now, here we are. They're still in a playoff hunt. They're right in the thick of things. But how much can you actually change? The offense is in. There's five, six weeks left. You can't change that much. You really can't. You might be able to change something, though. What's that? You might be able to get receivers blocking, guys. Okay, so this uh. player right here is one that AQ wanted to bring up. He Why said, if you talk about Matt Canada and the offense and what they can get better, there is a play that actually showcases how bad everything is. Go ahead, pause that. Go back to the beginning of this play, please. So I think I actually have it on my uh, on my, on my my iPad here. So let me, let me connect to this thing here, shall we? So whenever you look at this play, AQ, tell me if I'm wrong here. All right, so yep. like... You move Jalen Warren into motion there. So now there's four, right? You count one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. And then you go over here, there's one. And then you go down here, there's one. So you're literally making this play so that you have a one-on-one -on -one or, right, you have a screen pretty much with these three guys blocking. That's exactly right. Yeah, so whenever they go four by one up top, as soon as Jalen's there, you either get it to him and it basically becomes an extended toss, right? And then the three receivers block man on. You can tell it's man coverage from the start. Down the bottom, you get Pickens one-on-one, -on -one, which oh. you want. That's the guy you want one-on-one. -on -one. You have a win-win situation here. The receivers are supposed to block. They don't even block oh, a single geez. thing. They go and run a rot. They go and run three different rots. A rot they don't concept. even know what they're doing. They don't have a clue. And I, Kenny Pickett didn't even look down at Pickens. So you would think, okay, can, can get rid of, uh, getting rid of an offense quarter and make you that much better? Well, it feels like there's a chance. You know, because unless three Different wide receivers were, were wrong on one particular play. These dudes were not taught that they are blocking the people in front of them and they are going to be essentially the offensive line on this stretch screen play outside of them. That's line. exactly right. When you look at that play, I don't, I don't even I don't know how to even describe it. Like when you watch it, you sit there and you know they have to block. Like so when you see three, like if one guy bumped, busted the play, no big deal. Oh, so that guy didn't know he was supposed to block. He didn't know. Maybe two guys, all three. Tough. Yeah. Tough walk. That means they're not getting taught what to do there. Yeah, they had no clue. They thought they were running routes. So, like, that, that's that's where it's either not getting communicated in meetings or it's not getting taught at all. Yeah, and, Tony, you were just kind of uh, gasping while that whole thing was mm -hmm. happening. I don't know if you were trying to protect who, but I appreciate to hear your thoughts. Well, it felt like you guys were, were blaming the wideouts when they clearly were all on the same page. Yeah, that's what we just said. Okay. Yeah, it was the wrong page. Sounds yeah, like that, we're blaming I mean, the coordinator. That's what we were saying. Okay. Yeah. Same wrong page. Well, it didn't come off like that from you, but... You talking from him? Yeah. Well, he he thinks quarterback stinks. He does. Yeah, yeah. You That's what he thinks. I mean, does. no matter Very what biased. you do, he's throwing for 110 yards and. Well, they, what do you expect them to do? The offense coordinator's got three wide receivers that are supposed to block, not yeah. block, and they're running routes. What do you expect from this guy? He's going to let it rip. Dano said they need Kenny Pickett just to play a little bit free, let it rip. That's right. Uh, Mike Tomlin had a press conference yesterday for about an hour. He sat up there and took all the questions and gave all the answers. Here he is talking about Kenny Pickett and Kenny Pickett's development as a whole. Mike, are these final seven games important, and critical in the long-term development of Kenny? Great question. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm focused on this week in terms of the development of Kenny. Um, 
you know, we're not urinating on the fire, man. Um, oh, we're, okay. we're, we're getting ready to play a football game and win this week. Um, that is the only agenda here. Um, it's not big picture and 2024 and all of that. This organization is not wired like that. We are not urinating on this fire. No, no way. We're trying to spark this fire. We're trying to throw a little bit more gasoline on this fire. Right. We are still very much in this. We're not talking about next year, the year after that. you got to love that from the man con. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're still going for the playoffs. I know it's doom and gloom uh, on the outside of the building, but like AQ said, they're 6-4 and four and good. I mean, that play that was just shown with Jalen Warren, it's one thing, too, if not everyone's blocking and you're throwing it to someone who maybe doesn't have – you know, big play potential. You give Jalen Warren like an inch, and he's going. Like he's gone. He's one of, if not their best offensive weapon. Like this, this is mind boggling. I, I can't imagine. It's an aptitude. This yeah. is like a preseason football play. That is why, yeah. whenever you think about this being in Week Eleven, especially against the Cleveland Browns. Yes, you're talking about the Cleveland yeah. Browns defense. We need to be on our shit mm-hmm. against this Cleveland Browns defense. Not able to do it. I wonder if that was the play where Tomlin was like, "That's it." Yeah. Can't have that. Bingo. There right. We can't have those. that in the NFL. We can't that, have that. I mean, that's bad news bears. That really is. I mean, they got there's no youth football, you're saying. It's it's worse than youth football, because at least then like they're still gonna listen. Like that's that's what uh, you know, and, and that's what Diggs is saying, right? Like it's well when you what's this? He's what's sitting this here tone. He's, he's sitting he, here thinking because I'm mad watching that. Like okay. that just can't happen okay. in the NFL. Okay. That can't okay. happen in the NFL. It just can't happen. Okay, so we think this is good then. But you're saying it can't change much, but it is good. No, but a change that. is good because they, they've been talking about change it from can't get for months. And so they had to make some change. So whether the play calling changes or whether the culture changes or whether we just get guys taking accountability changes, change is good then. Before we move on, fun fact, nineteen forty one. It was the co-owner who was actually the coach of the team fired himself. Smart. What? So way before 1941 then, if we want to go back into when the actual coach was mm-hmm. potentially let yeah. go. That's a fascinating thing, the whole the way the Steelers operate. Very patient. We don't change. Mm-hmm. We do this how we do this. This is the Steeler way. So for him to finally pull the trigger and then come out and say, it was me. Yeah. Mike yeah. Tomlin said, yeah, it was my decision, my decision alone. Didn't tell the players, didn't tell the other coaches, didn't tell ownership, didn't tell GM. So all you people that are saying, like, oh, the owner did this, GM must have did this, it was me. I saw what you saw, Mm -hmm. okay? And this is unprecedented in the Pittsburgh Steelers organization pretty much for this to take place. Change, not only like the offense coordinator firing or or any coach being fired in the middle of the season, change just in general just doesn't happen. And that's why I think fans are so excited or maybe not even excited, just relieved that change is happening because you just couldn't do what you kept doing. Put me on the side of Mike Tomlin's all the way back. Yeah, yeah, right. Mike Tomlin's all the way back, and they're going to go on a run. Speaking of going on a run, I love this particular Paisano who coaches the Philadelphia oh. Eagles. More video is being shown of him after wins in other team stadiums in the tunnel. Most specifically, this one is after the Philadelphia Eagles beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Here's head coach Nick Sirianni walking off the field. That's the head coach. Be That's the head awesome. coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Love him. That is the head coach. Run that one more time. That's the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. You see Big Don sitting next to him. Mm-hmm. Don's team security. He's like, here we go again. Yeah. Right. Don heard going in. He said, these Chiefs fans were very chirpy on oh, the yeah. way into Sirianni. Mm-hmm. He knew on the way out that Nick wasn't just going to go quietly into that really? Kansas City night. Uh-oh. No, no. Walking off the field. You think I forgot, Sirianni says? Hey, oh, The guy in the beard right in front of him is the PR guy who's been there for like 30 uh-huh. years. Yeah. He's like, all right, that's not that bad. I don't hear any more shit from you Chiefs fans. Okay, not bad, not bad. And then, uh, see ya! <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Couldn't we, couldn't we have just got through this entire thing? I love him. I love everything about him. I love that they're winning. Now, obviously, whenever he starts his entire campaign as the Eagles head coach with the whole less stinky, more athlete, yep. take over mm-hmm. press conference, uh-huh. we think, oh, this guy's big, dumb dipshit. Yeah. Then they go on to have success, so he's allowed to be himself fully and transparently all the time. What a treat. What a joy. What a guy. I would love to go play football for AQ. I mean, that city embraces him, too. They love him there. The players love him. Just the energy that he brings every single week with that, with the press conferences, with everything, it's incredible to watch. What do you think he went on to say afterwards as he was walking in the locker room, Coach? Uh, probably just something like, hey, listen, no one thinks we can win even though you know we're 9-1 and one every week. It's, oh, the, the Philadelphia Eagles, they look like shit again. They just barely squeak by. Guess what? 
I said it time and time again, O-line, D-line, Howie. We go into other people's houses, we piss on their rug, then we take a shit on the rug as well, and then we rub their faces in, okay? That's the Philadelphia Eagle way, that's the Nick Sirianni way, and then as I'm leaving everywhere I go, you know, it's just one of those, see ya! <laughs> see ya, that was awesome. <laughs> The, the thing that's awesome about him, too, though, is, like, we always talk about, like, players having chips on their shoulders. Yeah. and But, like, I, I'm pretty sure he was on the Chiefs staff when Andy Reid first got the job and then fired everyone. And then we saw the stuff with, like, Frank Reich last year. Like, he remembers all this stuff, you know? Like, I, I think he is still building on that first press conference. Like, he remembers everything mm -hmm. everyone says. And then just any little piece of motivation he can use to put a chip on his own shoulder like he still does that and I feel like even though some coaches might do that like they're not doing shit like that after games ever you never see that his team his team seeing him do that they yeah. just have to laugh or ask did him. you hear did it. you hear Nick did you hear Nick that was he him? was saying I don't hear you I don't hear you anymore that was coach yeah yeah that was Head remember coach? when he said la the last time was like uh what was he saying that last oh. video when he was walking out of there I forget, he was really dropping f bombs, like yeah. actually guy. talking shit. Yeah. This guy, mm -hmm. like loudly, which normally would be uh, I don't know, D lineman. You know, we saw Dion sure. Dawkins get into a fight there actually in the tunnel there for Buffalo um, against the Jets. Maybe a corner. You know, corner yeah. has something yeah. going on that's kind of their mentality. Wide receiver maybe just had a massive one. Sure. Hear them chirping a little bit. In basketball, you see the guys go down the tunnel and there's like sometimes there's a little bit of happy. You never see a head coach in any sport Ever. talking shit to an entire no, stadium. Never. I love it. I love everything about it and a lot of people saw his team do what they did highest or most watched Monday Night Football game in 25 years or something like unbelievable that. 29 million people watched Sir. Monday Night Football on ESPN the Eagles and the Chiefs obviously the Kelsey Bowl 2.0 sure after the Super Bowl that took place just a few months back good for them most watched telecasts in Super Bowl in fact, obviously, most watched NFL regular season games since Thanksgiving 2022. Thanksgiving brings in numbers. Why? Because everybody's watching football. Mm -hmm. Shout out to football mm -hmm. being a tag team partner of Thanksgiving, by the way. We appreciate that. Audience peaked at about 31.2 million viewers. Jeez. Monday Night Football with Peyton and Eli with 1.9 million viewers. The show's best in more than two years. Somebody should have told Mark Wahlberg that people were watching that show. That would have yeah. helped. Mm -hmm. He was horrendous. Oh, he, hated it. he has a great line of clothing with municipal. Uh -huh. yeah. I love his prayer app, too, that yeah, he promotes. Yeah, for sure. I love how jocked he is, the movies he makes. I watch Entourage. He is a terrible interview. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Do, do people tell him, hey, people are going to watch you do this? Or does he think this is all off air, and then people are going to talk about the interview that happened with Mark I'm Wilber? pretty sure he thought a couple parts of it were off air. Uh, he was pissed how many commercials there were. Uh, Which, hey, hey, speaking for agree, the people, yeah, we all agree there, right? there, Mark. But also, someone should have just been like, hey, Mark, you know, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. Like you're not obligated to come on and and do this with Peyton. He, like they, they can grab, they'll grab a quarterback, you know, who will enjoy being on there. Like if you don't want to do this, if you're going to sit there and just look like you have a dump in your pants, like just don't do it. Yeah, because you got other stuff going on. Bingo. He's got a golf course in the backyard. He just sold of a house yep. for like fifty some million. Yep. He's got this municipal. I'm sure mm -hmm. he's got a lot of movies going yeah. on. Yep. You don't have to talk to two Hall of Famers on Monday Night Football, the most watched one in the history, pretty much on Monday Night Football. You don't have to be here, Marky Mark. Is it past his bedtime? Because he normally goes to bed at like five thirty. That is something. Maybe he was already. Maybe that was him walking in his sleep. Oh. Like old buddy from uh, Step Brothers. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. maybe yeah. that was just him. Brandon, yeah. Maybe he was asleep. That entire time. That makes more sense. Okay, so sleeping Mark Wahlberg was on Manning Cast. Okay, yep. sure. Okay, that's a whole different character. That we were judging this as like an awake human being right. mm -hmm. who got a chance to be a part of the NFL's most watched Monday Night Football game in a long time. Congrats to all parties over there and to the NFL. Yes. Because yeah. mm -hmm. they're in the middle of negotiating even more TV rights, I'd assume, with Apple and all these other platforms. So whenever they're just drawing in these numbers that people used to dream of, you know, those numbers are... Um, Reminiscent to like when there was like two things on TV at a time. People used to say, oh, back in the day, Johnny Carson used to have 400 million people. He was the only person you were able <laughs> yeah, to watch. It. it was the only thing that was on TV. So now with how many different options there are, let alone entertainment-wise, but platform-wise and destination-wise and everything wise to be able to have your ratings for a live event continue to go up while everybody else seems to either be stagnant or going the opposite direction and they're gaining steam in other forms of views like digital views social views clips views everything like that they're a wagon they're always going to be oh, yeah. and i can't wait to hear what tomorrow is because i haven't heard a single person say watch out for covid 
right? Nope. No. This is the first Thanksgiving in a while where there hasn't been like some people that have been either mm. told or scared Shut to not down. go hang out with their family. Nope. Haven't heard that. So even more people are going to be at Thanksgiving family events, which means that they have that little multiplier that they have. Oh, yeah. Nielsen yeah. multiplier. Total audience delivered. The, uh, the numbers what? tomorrow are going to be grotesque, oh, I would assume. Yeah, and after last night, there's zero reason why we should have any more poopy primetime games. I don't care what it takes. Flex all of the ones that don't look like Eagles Chiefs on paper and make sure that some game that might be worth a shit is on there in primetime because it matters, okay? This stuff matters to people. We're not just trying to watch – Patriots versus the Bears, okay? We want to watch good teams football. play each other. Schefter play. put out a tweet about how we're in Monday Night Football flex season. I believe we're able uh -huh. to flex some games now. Monday Night Football is, which is huge. And uh, Bears at Vikings, who knows? Uh, Bengals at Jaguars, Titans at Dolphins, and Packers at Giants, Chiefs at Patriots, Ravens at Niners, and Lions at Cowboys. Now, that Lions at Cowboys ain't going nowhere. Nope. Nope. Or that Ravens before. at Niners ain't going nowhere. No. Chiefs at Patriots? Patrick Mahomes yeah. probably going to stick around. No. Yep, yep probably. No. Absolutely. That's how that's going to go. Yeah, that I mean, might be what? Bill, Be uh, uh, Bill Belichick's like second to last yeah, that was, game yeah, of the Patriots. That, yeah, that, that was yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll be fine. Just poop a game. It's fine. No, you guys are going to be on primetime TV. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah week I'd, 15 right there. Yeah, we'll be on it. It'll be a poopy game, but yeah, we'll be on it. I it's okay. Hey, that, that'll be like, it, it's kind of beautiful that Patrick Mahomes is the one going in there. You know, because there's one dynasty. Yeah, sure. Completely ends. Right. Completely ends. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. over. Over. Sell the house. Take through the inside. heart. Boom. Not, e not even at the museum stage yet. Mm -hmm. So don't even, it's just whoo, absent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get them the hell out of here. Ancient history. Which is allegedly going to happen. We're not saying, we're not reporting that. We're just saying this is what people are saying. That's yeah. ridiculous. The next dynasty is coming into town to say, it's our league now. Mm -hmm. I'm the captain now. Yep. And then they move on. That's actually, that needs to be on. They need to be on more than one prompt. They need to do ESPN, ABC, ESPN oh, Plus, and maybe even YouTube yeah. for that one. Yeah, they, they could do that, but they'll have to deal with the fact that they won't even sniff 20 million people watching. Well, yeah, there will be. Patrick Mahomes brings numbers. Yeah. What do you think happened right there? Let alone Taylor Swift right. maybe back in town. I love, love watching things end and burn down, too. So, like, yeah, that's true. Be. Yeah, everybody that loves to see the end of something. Mm -hmm. But every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. And that's what that Monday Night Football will kind of quantify and be the perfect metaphor for as Patrick Mahomes goes in there. Now, the other ones, Bengals at Jags, they'll keep that. Bears at Vikings, mm. potentially. Come on. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Packers at Giants can definitely see move. See ya. That, oh, that one can move for Jeez. sure. Speaking of moving for sure, uh, the Indianapolis Colts released Darius Shaquille Leonard oh. yesterday, one of the stars of the Indianapolis Colts, one of the highest paid players on the Indianapolis Colts, a man who actually gets introduced last whenever the Colts get it, uh, defense gets introduced before a game. Like, he's mm. still the guy. As of three weeks ago, oh, yeah. this guy was getting mm -hmm. introduced last. And then on the field, on third downs, he was getting taken off the field. Mm -hmm. On fourth downs, we've got to have it, he was getting taken off the field. He was on a rotation where he's playing like one play every two series or so. He was still trying to get into it, but he wasn't. Was not playing his best football. Now, is it because he didn't have a role in Gus Bradley's defense here in Indianapolis? Or is it because he's not healthy yet? Nonetheless, he gets released out of nowhere in his eyes. Still does his turkey giveaway yesterday here yeah. in Indianapolis. Awesome. Good man. Thank you for helping out the people here, Shaq. Right. Very cool. Thank you for helping out the people here, Shaq. Obviously, people drive through. He drops off the turkey, and then he says, thank you for everything. They say, thank you, Darius. And then they actually got a chance to say, hey, good luck in your next place. But everybody was thinking that maybe because he had publicly been saying about how he doesn't like the amount of playing time he has and what they've been saying to him, that maybe he's not happy there anymore. Maybe he requested his release. Well, he kind of cleared that all up. He was surprised as anybody else. Here's him talking at his turkey giveaway event yesterday, just hours after being released by the Indianapolis Colts. How, how big of a surprise was this for you? How you big not, was a surprise? It was right. the biggest surprise ever, you know, but you know, I don't make those decisions, you know. It was, it was shocking. You know, um, I asked for a November meeting. I guess I got a November meeting, so... I guess you got to be careful what you ask for. What's the story behind that? You asked, you asked what, to kind of get a, a status update or something? Um, no, nah, they actually came up to me after the after team photos. We had team photos on Monday. And then Gus walked up to me and said, hey, let's go have that November meeting that you've been wanting. And then when I got there, it wasn't what I wanted to hear. Uh, so I just wish I just wish it would have went a little different. Uh, I felt like I gave a lot to this community, gave a lot to the team, I gave a lot to the organization. Um, I just felt like I gave... I just feel like I should have 
been there through the end, I guess. You know, I think that's one thing that I'm most hurt about. Um, I wouldn't mind, you know, if I had to take a backseat role or whatever the case. Um, I just feel like I left them boys out to dry. You know, um, you know, being a leader in that locker room, you know. Um, All right, so he would go on to basically just talk about how disappointed he is with having to move on. Uh, Something was happening, right, AQ? That's what we all who have ever been in the locker room will see from that particular answer and this particular move from the Indianapolis Colts. When you start talking publicly, like you said, right, like it starts to be the beginning of the end. And, yeah, like we said before the show, we were talking a little bit about it. It's like this doesn't happen in week 12. It just doesn't happen. You don't just cut a guy who you just gave – Multiple million. Yeah, we're of paying dollars. Matt Ryan and Darius Leonard now for the rest of the year, like thirty million bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. waste of money, right? Yeah, Colts will have thirty-seven point nine seven million in salary cap charges for twenty twenty-three for Matt Ryan and Shaquille Leonard. Mm. Twenty-seven point nine seven million of that was paid out in twenty twenty-three salary. That ranks second for top two players in dead cap charges. Giants first, the forty-one point six million in first in cash. Giants as well. Is saying this from Jason from Over the Cap, I do believe is wow. the website. Yeah. So shout out to him for getting us that piece of information. I love Darius Shaquille Leonard. He was so good. I enjoy awesome. watching him play football. I love the energy that he brought. He was entertaining on a team that was very mundane last year. Yeah. Everything that he uh, kind of stood for in Indianapolis was a good thing. Uh, but for some reason, Gus Bradley couldn't find a spot for him on the defense. I don't like the defense kind of like passed him by because he was hurt whenever Gus Bradley instituted the mm-hmm. defense. And then Zaire Franklin started doing his thing. And then there was just never. Uh, Whatever reason, couldn't find his way in there. Hopefully, he'll go somewhere and have great success. We're all pulling for him. You would have thought. I mean, listen, I've, I've, I know that Seattle defense better than most. I played against it twice a year for a lot of years. He's a perfect fit for that defense. So the fact that they couldn't figure out a spot for him is insane. To it me. is. It's wild. Who knows where he ends up next? Hopefully, it'll be a contender. Speaking of a contender, ladies and gentlemen, the man joining us now against the Jets the other day, he had two picks. What? One fumble recovery, what? three pass breakups, what? and four tackles. Oh. That's one game. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, West Virginia stud, now Buffalo Beal, Razul Douglas. Yeah. Yeah. How y'all doing? Hey, great, man. Thank you for joining us. How are you doing on this glorious day before Thanksgiving? Uh, I'm doing good. Doing good. Hey, happy Thanksgiving to you. It seems like you had a great Thanksgiving gift against the New York Jets with one of the biggest games that you've ever had as a pro. Let's talk about this. We were just chit-chatting about Darius Shaquille Leonard, who got released from the Colts. He'll now go to another team. You've played for the Eagles, Panthers, Raiders, Texans, Cardinals, Packers, and now the Bills. And I feel like the world really first got introduced to you whenever you went to the Packers. How come whenever you got there, it was like a nice fit? And was the other places just not really your vibe? There was an opportunity? Like, why do you think some guys have to take this road that you've had to take to get to this place? Uh, I, I, I don't quite know why people have to take this road. Uh, but, I mean, the journey is, is probably, like, the best part of the road, you know? And, um... I don't know, I guess Green Bay kind of like treated me like family, like they wanted me, um, they gave me confidence. So being in places like that uh, makes you just play better. So, As, Did you feel like a nice fresh start when you get to these places? Do you feel like you got to reprove yourself and like everything like that whenever you end up in a new building? For instance, whenever you have a great year with the Packers, like, hey, yeah. great year with the Packers. Yes. Beloved by Packers fans quickly. Like, love this guy. Mm. You set a tone. You made big plays. And then you end up going to Buffalo. Like, as soon as you get there, is there a freshness to having to reprove yourself to everybody? Or how does the yeah, process yeah, go sure. for you? Nah, you, you always, I mean, because some people, as an elite, I think we all kind of like, we all kind of like a family. So we all know each other. We probably don't talk to each other, but we all know each other, watch each other. So, uh, some people have watched me play, but it's just always like you just want to show them who you who you are on the field and, and who they can trust in and, and who they're going to have out there next to them on, on Sundays. And what do you think about this team that you're standing next to now? I just saw Jordan Poyer on, uh, sitting on the ground, bare feet, playing the pan, dr- the pan the drum. Pan, yep. I think is what he was playing. Yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah. send it to you. It was at an event last yeah, okay, night. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. He's barefoot doing this entire thing. What? How do you feel about this Bills defense, and how quickly did you get acclimated to the squad when you got there? Uh, it it kind of took me some time. I think Coach kind of just, like, talked me through plays that we was going to be running on Sundays. He didn't go through the whole defense. I still don't know the whole defense because I know sometimes we'd be out there and they'd be saying calls, and I'd be looking around like, I don't know what that is. But uh, we got two good safeties, man, who just – who they communicate over and over every second of the play. So they always make sure that I know what I'm supposed to do. Okay, well, here's one of them. Okay, this is what he, uh, this is literally, look at him. Look at him. <laughs> look at him. This is like, you see that, Russell? That's what you got playing safety, right? Yeah. 
What, what is that? Is that an instrument? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Kind it's, of. It's from, going to. From, what kind? I think it's a Caribbean. I think it's a pan drum, I yeah. believe mm-hmm. is what he called it. A pan drum. He'd been playing it for about five months or so. Five months. You got to be barefoot, though. Got to be able to feel the vibes. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. You have to not wear sneakers for that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm assuming. <laughs> just Because everybody else is wearing <laughs> shoes. <so. laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm assuming that that is the case. Uh, but we've, we've gotten a chance to learn about Jordan Poyer a lot. Obviously, we've had a chance to chat with Vaughn Miller and Dawson Knox and Josh Allen and so many people on your team. What is it about that locker room there you think that is so special? And through this year, has there been any ups and downs with how it's kind of all gone? Um, well, being here, um, I wouldn't say any ups and downs. I think we were all just um, just trying to find ways to win uh, and close out games uh, because I think the five losses we have have all been on one possession games uh, where we've been on the field to, to get a stop or our offense been on the field to score. And we haven't got it done, so I think we've just been figuring out how to close games here. How's the locker uh, room? Vibes good? Yeah, it's great, man. The, the leaders lead, um, and everyone else just follows. Uh, so, it's hell, a great locker room. Hell yeah. Ty has a question for you. He's an owner of the Packers. Yeah, Rasul, Pat mentioned oh, yeah. it. Big-time Packers fan was absolutely yeah. gutted when they traded you. Um, was that – like, were you shocked by that at all? Because I think we saw a video right after you got traded, and a couple guys in the locker room were saying how, like, it was just such a blow because – you know, with the transition period with Aaron not being there, you were kind of one of the guys that everyone, you know, looked towards. Um, or did you kind of realize once, you know, you, you guys started good and then kind of went through that little schneid a little bit, is that – did you kind of understand that, oh, there might be a, a chance that I'm going to get traded here? Nah. I, I, I didn't once cross my mind that I would get traded. Um, I mean, I thought that I was going to be there kind of for my career, I would, I would say. But um, just got the news, and I mean, I, like you said, when I first got on the show, I've been a, on a few teams, so I understand how it goes, and I know it's a business, so you just just move on and, and keep going. They talk about people learning about them being traded by like Twitter or X. Is that same thing happened to you or did your agent get a? Uh, nah, 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 nah. Now they called me. Okay. Goody called me, and then uh, Murph called me. So oh. they both called me. Okay, that feels much better. Then I mean, it's terrible yeah, to so. say, yeah, but it feels better than just reading. Mm-hmm. Oh, I gotta. Yeah, I that that would have been crazy. I think I would have probably felt some type of way if it would have happened like that because of how the bond that we grown together for the last few years. Yeah, they preach family, family, family. Hey, we're a family. Yeah, yeah, and then sure. all of a sudden, it's Adam Schefter's family. tweeting me, telling me I'm getting traded. I thought, <laughs> well, that, that's cra- hey, that's crazy. That <laughs> happens to people, though. It really does. Con- uh, yeah. Connor has a question for you, Razul. Yeah, Razul, obviously the history in Lambeau where you just were is awesome, and that's a massive part of what Green Bay is. And then a massive part of what Buffalo is is, you know, you might not have seen this yet, but they throw dildos on the field sometimes. <laughs> Bildos. Uh, Bildo, 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 Bildo. 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 They are yeah, very similar. similar. Yeah, they look like That's the boys a, about it. a dildo per se. Yeah. Good conversation at lunch here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. ask Gabe uh, Davis about it. He's going to put one on his helmet uh, at some point in yeah, his career. Yeah, like this but, right here. Yeah, you said. Like a rhino, yeah. kind of, yeah. or a unicorn, uh-huh. if you will. Whatever. Yeah, but ha- have you been, have you had any experience yet with Bill's Mafia? There's there's another guy who, you know, he gets absolutely doused in ketchup and mustard on every home tailgate. Have you, have you kind of felt that atmosphere when playing in Buffalo, it being a little different, or is it kind of like a run-of-the-mill, just rowdy environment all the time? Oh, yeah, the, the, um, the fans here are crazy. You can feel the energy for sure. Um, but I don't think I've experienced anything crazy yet um, that you guys are talking about. I've seen anything like that yet. Yes, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Bildos? <laughs> yeah. Or like the yeah, or the tailgate and stuff. Like I haven't like experienced that yet. Oh, just go in your. You got your phone on you right now? No, I don't. Yeah, he got it. Okay, you got. He got your phone. Yeah, you got your phone. We'll just yell into your algo. Dildo, Bildo, 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 Bildo. That'll go. Double header. Yeah, No, it's not. It's a Bildo. It's a single header. Okay, okay. My bad. Suction part. Anyways, Razul, they're crazy, bro. They go through. They're bananas in the weather. The weather. There's a ketchup and mustard fella that goes out there. That's his whole face. That's in. Yep. Every tailgate. So, so you're saying he watches the game just like this. I, I, we assume he dumps beer to kind of clear off the eyeballs, but he certainly <laughs> brings the hype by getting dosed down. And then I don't know if we have any Bildo clips or uh, videos as well. Are you learning about the Bildos right now? 
Yeah, yeah, he just showed me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, that's that's crazy. Uh, yeah. That's, the... <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, yeah well, but, you know, that's on its way. Yeah. Uh-huh. Welcome to Bill's Mafia. Welcome to Bill's yeah. Mafia. They're rowdy up there. <laughs> Razul, they're rowdy up there. You better be on their side than on the other side. Yeah. Clearly, yeah, sure. in that particular situation. Sure. AQ has a question for you, Razul. Yeah, this Bills team had a ton of expectations coming into the season. Did, when you got there, did you feel the locker room being down? And is there still a ton of belief that this team can just make a run and be the best team in the AFC? No, I don't feel no, I don't feel no down. I don't feel no panic. Uh, nothing like that. Um, I feel like we all think we can win. I, I think we think that we lost games all due to us, um, to no one else. And I feel like we like now is the time that we're going to push uh, for what we think we we deserve and what we want. Did you win AFC Defensive Player of the Week? Uh, no. What? Uh, Ramsey did. I think Ram- yeah, Ramsey did. He oh, said he, Ramsey. Did. Hey, did you see that? But he did have a sick. Yeah. I mean, that. Yeah, see that. He, he looked awesome. He, yeah. You should have won it though. Yeah, West yeah, Virginia guy. Too. Yeah, I mean, it's all good, man. You, you know, how it happens. Things happen. So. Hey, so on this particular one, your break is in, insane. Like, you you do the combine drill where you're back battling, open, flip, cut, break, give me that. Is obviously you're a little bit more, I don't want to say older now, but has that been something that's always been a, a trait, a talent of yours? That's not e- – guys break that up, right, because they're a little mm-hmm. bit slower uh-huh. or a little bit less yeah. explosive. That was like teach tape, it felt like, through that whole thing there. Yeah, for sure. Even watching, I was like, I ain't know I got out that fast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, said, you just you just start reading routes, and I kind of felt it uh, in the gear, and I and I seen him drop his pads. So once I seen his pads drop, I kind of just got up out of there, and I looked back at the ball. The ball was right there, so I just kept running. Hey, incredible play. Obviously, Jalen Ramsey made a couple as well. That's going to happen. Think you yeah. should have won the defensive player of the week. As a West Virginia guy, I want to let you know. Obviously, we didn't cross pass in Morgantown, and I watched your team yeah. play. You yeah. you have handled yourself as a professional, bro. Mm-hmm. Okay, third rounder, third rounder at the Eagles, and then you move to the Panthers. That's two teams. Then the Raiders. That's three teams. Texans, four teams. Cardinals, five teams. Packers, six teams. This is seven teams now, and everybody yeah. has said they love you in the locker room. So there's many times that you could have said, "I'm getting screwed right now." Like, what is the deal? What is the deal? Mm-hmm. The fact that you just stuck with it is inspiring, bro, and it's incredible yes, representation sir. of West Virginia. Keep going, yes, dude. Appreciate that, man. Hell I appreciate yeah. that. Hey, go get all the bags, too, bro. Hell yeah. uh-huh. You deserve it at this point, bro. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey tell him that. Tell him that, man. He can call in. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. I'll give him a call. We know Bean pretty well. Uh, tomorrow, yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Favorite side whenever it comes to Thanksgiving. Favorite side? Uh, I probably had to go with uh, Stefan or Yams. Uh, you're right. Okay. You just had the right answer. There's yeah. people that say mashed potatoes to that. You know that? People say, no, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, yeah, I no. know. Well, yeah, well, thank God. That. No, well, thank no. God you just said what you just said right well. there. I love this man, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Razul Douglas, thank you, buddy. Yeah. Seven teams, dude. Yeah. yeah, good on all of them. And just staying like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, this, yeah, I should definitely be cut from this team and just go to the next one. Yeah, they should definitely trade me from this team or whatever. And everybody loves them. Like, every one of his teammates have all come out and said they're big fans of him. That's not easy to do mentally, like, just to stay kind of on course and stay within division. And then he goes to the Packers, finds a home, seemingly, and then they say, yeah, we don't want you again. It's like, all right, we got to do this whole thing all over again. Proud of that guy, Ty. Yeah, I mean, I think he was on the Cardinals practice squad, and the Packers signed him off. And then it was a a couple weeks later, they had that Thursday night game when the Cardinals were undefeated and the Packers didn't have – Devontae, because of COVID, he came in, hadn't played with the team yet, had a game ceiling interception. That was the year that they went to the NFC Championship. But, like, right when he got to Green Bay, like, the the change was immediate. It's like, oh, okay, this guy, like, like you were saying, in the locker room, guys, like, kind of respecting him and looking up to him almost. That's why it was so heartbreaking this year when they traded him because it kind of felt like one of those, like, oh, we are just kind of punting on the season now. Like, this guy's one of our best players. Everyone loves him. He's a leader. And, you know, you lose a couple games, trade him, and it's like, oh, okay, well, I guess they don't believe that this team can do anything this year because you wouldn't be getting rid of a guy like that if you thought you could, you know, go make the playoffs. And on the flip side with the Bills, they just had their best game. Yeah. Uh, he's a big part of it, obviously, with two picks there. You ask them if they believe. What do you think? You believe? Do you believe in the Bills? I mean, they have so much talent. I mean, they have so much talent that it is mind-blowing that they have five losses at this point. No, well, it, you know, do you win because you're happy? That's right. Are you happy because mm-hmm. you win? Interesting. And Josh Allen, 
you know, kind of address that afterwards about the energy and that. In my entire take of this Bills team is like, something's up over there. Yep. Yeah. So that looks like a, that looks like a different team. And then you start like piecing together some potential storylines that are happening off the field and then things that have carried into the building a little bit. You start just one, it's, it's natural just to wonder like, oh, they might have like human stuff going on. Like not football stuff. They might have some human stuff happening behind the scenes where there's maybe a beef or a betrayal or anything in between that entire thing that could take place because they just look like a different team. Even mm -hmm. Von Miller who's like super, yeah, yeah. the most positive awesome. human of all time. And now he's coming back. Obviously, he's got to recover yeah. from an ACL and all that has to take place. But you didn't really feel the same Vaughn Miller on the field as well. So it's like, does Vaughn know that something's happening in the locker room that isn't like, yeah, this one's going to be tough for us to fix? So I just started naturally thinking that. Then you see him play the Jets and you're reminded quickly. It's like, oh, yeah, when this team is rolling – Obviously, they're having more fun, but they're a weapon. Like, they are – they can hunt on the defensive mm -hmm. side of the ball. They have good special teams normally. Yeah. And on the offensive side, they can score whenever if they can go. Now, Joe Brady being the new offensive coordinator, maybe that's just a little bit of freshness, and maybe mm -hmm. that's why they played better. But, like, I'm still a believer in the Bills. And people get mad that anybody says anything nice about Josh Allen because uh, – People cook other quarterbacks whenever they have bad days. Yep. We're not a program that cooks uh, most people. Josh Allen has stunk, though. Uh huh. Like through real situations and real parts of this season, more so than any years in the past. But on the flip side of Josh Allen stinking throughout his career is these explosive plays that just oh, yeah. nobody else mm -hmm. can make. This year they weren't happening at the same clip. So I wonder if they did lose a little confidence. They did lose a little mojo. They did lose a little moxie. And then you have one game where you just beat the hell out of a division opponent like the Jets, and you're all the way back. I hope that's I hope, the case. I hope so, too, because the mind is powerful. You're right. I mean, it's when you lose even the slightest bit of confidence in yourself, and now that starts to carry on to other players, it is so big, and you've seen it in locker rooms. It oh, is, yeah. I mean, as an offensive lineman, like if you get your hands swiped, right, you're, you're telling yourself to throw your hands for the next six weeks, and you go out on film, and it's you're, yeah. you're gun-shy. Like they're not throwing, and you're like – what is happening? Yeah, professional right? athletes. Professional yeah. athletes. Yeah. Why are they not like I'm? I'm writing in my notebook. Throw your hands. I go out on the practice field. That, that, I'm looping. That, it's like, yeah. It's like what happened? Yes. And, and there might be a little case of that up there. Yeah. And if that takes place, it can spread. You know, other yeah. people start thinking, why is he thinking of that? It's like whenever maybe you have a friend who's too high, asking questions on whether or not he has to blink for himself, sure, yeah. or if his <laughs> body's going to blink, yeah. yep. and then all of a sudden you start thinking to say, oh, "That's a good question." Oh my God. Yeah, right. I don't know. You, do you I think blink? it's just my body, but. I mean, I certainly told it to blink there, though. Yeah. So that's on you. It starts spreading a little mm -hmm. bit. Whenever doubt starts creeping yeah. in, it can really start penetrating everywhere. And it felt like it wasn't just doubt. It felt like there was some stuff happening. Yeah. I'm happy they're past it, seemingly. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. I'm happy they're past it, seemingly. But it did feel like there was some stuff happening off the field in there as well. And hopefully they're able to get past it because that's a special team. Could be. Oldest average age mm -hmm. in the entire NFL on that team. Mm -hmm. Cannot be the oldest average team. And then going through, like, Amateur stuff, yes, which is like drama if in lack of confidence and stuff. They need to get back out there and find that dog, and I think they did against the Jets. And it's been a little weird from jump. Like the first game, they play the Jets, Aaron gets hurt, and then, you know, there's three interceptions, mm -hmm. and they lose in overtime on a punt return. Like it's been weird for a while with, with the Bills, but to what we were talking about with the Steelers, like how much can actually change on the offense with Joe Brady, and like, how much are they actually going to completely revamp? Because He you, did, he did with that fresh fade. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it def, the vibes are definitely better. With, Bigs, get the ball. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's no doubt about that with that fade. But you look at their schedule, you know, going forward to finish the season, it's hard to pick them in half of their games just because they have so many good teams left. Well, they're going to have to because this AFC, somebody's going to get hot. Yeah. Other than Baltimore, who's sitting at the top of this entire thing, they got three losses too. Mm -hmm. So it's like the AFC yeah, is going to be weird a murderer's row. Go ahead, uh, Tom. It feels like, and Connor said it yesterday, um, that's where Shaq Leonard should potentially go. I mean, Edmonds left in free agency to the Bears, and then they lose Milano. And like we saw, I don't, I remember who was doing it, but it was on the board when we talked about how light their box looked, like their oh, yeah. linebackers yep. and, and they had DBs. Yeah. And it feels like a really good place for Shaq Leonard to go for a fresh start. And if the vibes thing is oh. real, you know, it, Connor said, it, Connor said them and the Dolphins. Um, it just makes sense. Like the, the, I feel like the Bills makes a lot of sense for him. And I hope Shaq gets back to playing. Yeah. You know, yeah. like Shaq, because he's good for the NFL. Speaking of good for the NFL, Tank Dell has officially changed yeah. his, football, his name. That's right. Football, uh, name. Fo football name. Used to be Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. Now it's Tank. 
Love it. And Tank has been diesel <laughs> for the start of this season. <laughs> yeah. You know, he went to the University of Houston, I do believe, yep. down there. So they saw him in the backyard light up fields and light up stadiums in Dana Holgerson's offense. And now all he has done with C.J. Stroud is dominate. This dude's a stud. He's a real – he's a guy. And C.J. Stroud obviously loves him, but he – has to understand that with a name like Tank, you got to show up. Yeah. Yes. And that's what Tank Dale does, and that's why I appreciate it, Ty. Yeah, I mean, that this is one of the cooler things I've heard in a while. Just having, like, just knowing, too, you know, like, hey, I've been playing unbelievable. No one calls me Nathaniel, except mm -hmm. for maybe, like, his mom, even though, you know, she might call him Tank. But Probably. him to just be like, you know what, I can't keep putting up 150 yards and a touchdown and two touchdowns and have having people think, my name's Nathaniel. My name is Tank. I play like a Tank. You hate the name Nathaniel? I don't know how I feel about it. I, I know one Nathan. The only Nathaniel. I call him a different name, though. I don't know if I know anybody that we just called Nathan. Na no. yeah, Nate. Dogs. Nate. Nate, right? Nate Dog is a good one. Nate Dog. Nate Dog is a good one. Rest in peace. Nathaniel Hackett is really the only. So maybe that is what he was thinking, too. Is like, oh, oh, a lot of people are shitting on yeah. Nathaniel Hackett. I can't have my name kind of getting mixed in those crosshairs here. Let's just go by 10. A lot of this offense stinks. Yeah. Nathaniel yeah. offense stinks. Whoa. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm having the best offensive year I've had. <laughs> offense is great. I'm a rookie. What are we yeah. even talking about? Give me the hell out of the Nathaniel Hackett. Uh, speaking of Nathaniel Hackett, uh, source very close to him uh, in the Achilles factory. Sure. sure. Sent me a message mm -hmm. in the middle of our Rasul Douglas conversation and said, uh, AQ's wrong. Uh, whenever we're talking about the uh, the little throw to Jalen Warren. Oh! Sorry. That's a four-man pass concept. Kenny's throwing hot. And then also, it's called a hand pan that Jordan Poyer's playing. So, wow. we're getting corrected uh, on every conversation that we had from the Achilles factory. Jeez. So, you got no idea what you're talking about. Oh, no, AQ. <laughs> Just let you wow. know. I don't know why you throw a swing there and nobody's blocking out. Well, there. that's potentially a little bit more of a conversation. Like, that was the decision of the throw to make. And maybe that's why Pickens is down there at the bottom going, well, what are we... What are we doing there? So this play is a four-man pass concept. Uh, it's on up here. There we go. Four-man pass concept. And he's throwing hot, he says. Because this guy right here coming. Down, down the bottom. They got six. They got six coming. They're in like a reverse double barrel. Doesn't matter who was coming or not. It's always coming out hot. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. That it's guy in the slot's <laughs> actually open, like it's, right off the bat. It's if you rewind it, coming out hot. So that was probably supposed to go to a different place. Is maybe well. There was a uh, there was a lot of talk after the game about communication and being on the same page and all that. And then McCann gets fired. Bingo. Yep. And then everybody says well, it's all going to get fixed. I heard from a source that the he originally was moved down to the sideline because of communication miscommunication when um, uh, Mitch came into the game when Kenny got hurt that one game. And there was some talk about miscommunication after the game, and Tom would say, you know what, we're going to put an end to this. Your ass on the sideline, and then, you know, if things don't change, potentially gone. Okay, well, and he made the move. Not he the did. ownership, not the GM, nope. not the fans. Nope. Well, although I assume they had at least a small piece of it. Now Matt Cana will be spending Thanksgiving with his family out of a job. That's right. Still nice. You were celebrating yesterday. Oh, huh? boo-hoo. Oh, yes. Yeah. This guy it's Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's, like, it's a holiday season. Hey, guy made, pay, mil guys made pay. millions of dollars. He could wipe away his tears with all that money. Okay, I don't care. I love that. Sleep on about hundreds and maybe you'll rest away the tears, pal. All yeah, right, we don't care about that. Don't ruin another team. Cam Hayward, though, I did appreciate the way the players came out and said, you know, they're saying, so we, we know this guy. Mm -hmm. This is a human. He just got fired. He got kicked out of our building. He's not going to go on the journey with us anymore. And I respect and appreciate that because they know Matt Canada. But the only thing we know about Mike Canada, this guy sucks at calling off. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> this guy, he, he does. I mean, it's bad. Brutal. But now we find out, was it just Matt Canada? Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll find out. Have or to. was it potentially somebody else? AQ, would you like to elaborate on that? Ask ask Aaron. Oh, oh he lost his confidence. Throw your hands. 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 You, know the throw your hands. AQ. you lost your confidence. I think, I think obviously, we all know my thoughts on Kenny. And I think... I don't think we I do. don't know oh, them. Yeah. I don't know Expound them. Expound upon that, please. Well, has he thrown for more than 200 yards in this year? Yes. Yes. How many times? I don't. Hold on. Let me look. Yeah, let, Wait, let me know. We thought you were going to bring this Yeah, up. I thought you had the well, numbers. Well, I, I do know that every time I look at a stat sheet, it's something, something, 121 yards and zero touchdowns, two interceptions, zero Whoa. touchdowns, one interception. That's not true. Five. He doesn't. He, he's got oh, the, he like, the least pick. amount That's of right. interceptions. He, he just Five throws, times he throws hot over yeah. 200 yards, pad. and he hasn't thrown a pick since October 1st. So wow. you tell uh -oh. us. That's because he's throwing hot to swing passes uh, with nobody okay. out. Uh, uh, 
I can't throw a pick. When hey, Kenny, come on, Kenny. You got these people on your ass right now. Come on, yeah. Kenny. Yeah. This is just like with Kyler Murray, right? Kyler Murray, they get rid of Cliff Kingsbury. Obviously, the GM uh, finds his way out of the building. <laughs> you okay? What just happened? Swallowed June bug. Yeah. Out of, like, yeah, that's choked, on me. Choked on a jelly bean? I wasn't sure. Yeah. Did, was there a dog in here barking? Sounded like somebody barked into a mic. Yeah, did. Did. Yeah. Bark? Yeah. Sounded like it came from your microphone. It did. From my microphone? <laughs> But anyways, oh, so the organization, weird. the program basically said, hey, Kyler, you're the guy. We're yeah. picking you over this entire thing. This is the Steelers saying, hey, offense, Kenny Pickett included, we think you are much better than what you have been showing, and we think it's this guy's fault. And I think Tomlin was really wrestling with that, being the guy who's saying, well, it's not, it's not my fault, it's somebody else's fault. And I respect and appreciate that, but we're about to look. This is judgment period. Mark Caboli asked Tomlin, uh -oh. hey, is this a whole thing about – you know, Kenny Pickett's future pretty much. He said, I'm just worried about the game because they're still in the middle of it. We're not urinating on fire. But this is very much a, is Kenny Pickett an NFL quarterback or not? Mm -hmm. Remainder of a season and we shall see, Ty. Speaking of name changes, do you think maybe it's time to go to Ken Pickett? You know, someone pulls, pulls him aside yeah. and says, hey, Ken. you're not 16 anymore. All right, enough with this Kenny bullshit. Your name is Ken Pickett and act like your name is Ken Pickett. There's never been a Ken in the history of the world that doesn't have a mustache either, so it has to be that. Bingo. Good move. Why don't we yep. just go Kenjamin? You know what I mean? Just Ooh, kind yeah. of really piece it together. Ken, yeah. Ken, Kenji? Ken, it, he could go short for Kenji. Yeah. yeah. It's better than Kenny. I Kenji. Mean. I you like Kenny. For Kenneth. Kenneth is Kenneth, cool. cool. I like Kenny, by the way, because Kenny Wood. So yeah. true. Kenny Wood is a amusement park in Pittsburgh. That is All time. great. Yeah, Worse than overpriced, but it is uh, awesome when you get in there. Yeah. Yeah, Pat, this is something you saw from him last year that you really enjoyed. He used to hang in the pocket, take a shot to make a throw. There's been none of that this year. He's bailing on clean pockets. His head's always down looking at the rush of the line. And I think it's what's causing him to you know go short on a lot of these routes, throw these hot balls, and there's just no way to get the ball down the field like that. Okay, so maybe he's li uh, lost a little trust. You know, Maybe mm. he lacks a little bit of that. But it can all come back with a new offensive coordinator. Yeah, that's right. Faulkner out there, a new offensive coordinator can get it back in there. Oh, he's banged year. up, right? Like, Doesn't he have a rib injury? Did. I think that might be part of it. I don't want to take one. Don't want to take one. Do you think his arm's good enough to be an NFL quarterback? His arm's good enough, for sure. Well, there, we learned a lot about an arm of a Hall of Fame quarterback. Drew Brees stopped oh, by hmm. Rich Eisen's show. Yep. Uh, and with a... Foxy saying no. I think thought it was Rich. Greeny yeah, show. Greeny oh, yeah. show. Greeny with Hembo Hembo. It was, uh, green. But it was a substitute. Seeing Green is a bet on ESPN bet. I'm not sure if they hit yet or not, but... Do we got one? We're going to continue to do it. It was a guest host, so I... You that's know not I mean? Mike Greeny. It was, it, that's what I'm saying. That's why it was a guest host, which... Where's Greeny this morning? That's yeah. A, that's yeah. Hey, we got Thanksgiving tomorrow, Greeny. Yeah. yeah. Hashtag, where's Greeny? Ha hashtag, anything. where is Greeny? Yeah. Great question. I can't be having my mornings without Greeny no. out there. No, it was brutal. Anyways, guest host did a fantastic job. I mean, Evco just yeah. absolutely slaughtered it. He oh. was talking to Drew Brees, got a great answer out of Drew, just uh, kind of describing the tail end of his career that we all kind of witnessed or were scared to say publicly. Drew, when was the last time a team called you to play for them? <laughs> 2016. Uh, it was probably the, 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 year, the year after I retired. So was that 2021? Um, there might have been a feeler or two that was put out there, you know, um, after that. But no, I, I look, you know, my uh, I'll, I'll let you know a little fact. I don't throw with my right arm anymore. Uh, my mm -hmm. right arm does does not work. So when I throw in the backyard right now, I throw left handed. Um, I can play pickleball just because it's below below the waist, you know, uh, but anything mm -hmm. above my shoulders, I've got a hard time with. And it's probably a result of it was de it's definitely a result of the injury that I that I suffered when I left San Diego. Um, the dislocated right shoulder and, and all that stuff that you know so, I thought yeah, I may never play again. So I, that kind of put me on the fast track to a degenerative shoulder and um, all kinds of arthritic changes and stuff like oh. that. So no, I don't I don't throw I don't throw with my right arm anymore. So if I could, um, I would absolutely still be playing. Oh hell yeah, football. loves football. Drew Brees, we know that, and you can hit up. Greeny, hashtag Greeny on the artist formerly known as Twitter yep. Uh, yep. on the platform known as X. That was Evco and Hembo doing that conversation with Drew Brees. And towards the end of Drew Brees' career, we all felt bad because we say this guy can't throw a football. Yeah. yeah. This guy, yeah, we couldn't. he understood the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. He understood the sentiment. And I think every time he was wondering if he was going to retire or not, there was probably some sort of workout he wanted to put himself through to say, how much more do I have left in this thing? He was having the same conversations we were all having. Mm -hmm. And we would like to say to Drew, hey, thanks for 
running that thing into the ground. Yeah. Thank you, Drew. Legit. Back. Thanks for your sacrifice. Before. You imagine the pain he was in. Oh, oh, man. He imagine the pain he was in. In the throws that he sees, I'm supposed to make this throw right yeah. here. Can't make it. Got to go somewhere else. It's like that type of battle is not fun for anybody to have, especially a guy who's as addicted to football as Drew Brees is. So it's nice that we kind of learned that because I did feel like a bad guy towards the end saying, like, Drew can't throw the ball 15 yards. Yeah. He actually couldn't. Like, that's that's just how his arm was at the end of this whole thing. How about the fact that he said San Diego? I mean, that means he made 13 Pro Bowlers after the initial injury happened. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like, this one, whenever the trade happened from Chargers to this, that's probably when it all started failing. And it's yes. like, holy hell. Yeah, yeah. his shoulder was that. so bad that, that time that Dolphins didn't sign him. They yeah, went with Dante right. Culpepper instead. Mm -hmm. And then he had the whole, entire Saints. The whole thing is insane. It insane. is absolutely insane. Yeah. He's a tough guy, Texas boy. Yeah, yeah. Rivers happened it, because of a lot of respect it. now. Like, if if any, the mic was that about back Sean Payton? Yeah, what was that about? Also got struck by lightning. Oh yeah, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I do remember that. Yeah. Lightning's nothing for a guy that's been playing with no shoulder for no. thirteen years, fourteen years. No, remember they, Drew Brees is dead. Yeah. That's pretty much what oh, yeah. we were oh, told. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. And yeah. then all of a sudden it was like, not so fast, my friends. Mm -hmm. Lightning bets. Wow, what a marketing move. Killed Drew Brees? That was crazy. <laughs> yeah. that was great. I thought he was dead. It was a wild thing. We had a morning situation where yeah. we were actually in mourning yeah. for Drew Brees. We're like, no way that'd be a mark. Everybody, we sound like some marks here thinking he's actually dead, right? And they're like, no, they no, wouldn't. He wouldn't died kill Drew Brees. Yeah. Marketing stunt. They, they did. did. Mm -hmm. They did. <laughs> they sure did. They did. They blew up the limo like it was Vince McMahon. Mm -hmm. yeah. They did that whole thing. Absolutely. But I will say, Drew Brees... Last time we were supposed to talk was at Radio Row. Oh no! I had no idea you were there. Oh. I would like it to be known that I did not know you were there. I was trying. I was literally trying to talk to every other human that was there. I was in the middle of about fifty conversations mm -hmm. at the same time. I love Drew Brees. We appreciate Drew Brees. And he, the more I hear him talk about what he was going through, the more I respect the hell out of Drew Brees. Yeah. Even though he put an elbow right in the back of Tyson. I was going to say that's why I wouldn't worry about it because a lot of people were saying that was just Radio Row karma. That's kind of what happens <laughs> oh. when you do that. But now I mean, it makes sense now. He can play pickleball. I was kind of below the. He wasn't throwing a football, so it was pretty sure. easy for him. He to actually drive couldn't his get his elbow. arm over you. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, so, you know, that's the way the entire thing goes. Exactly. So, you know, maybe it's time to bury that hatchet. And Evco, great work. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. <laughs> There's stats coming out about Joe Burrow and Andrew Luck uh, comparisons on who's been hit more and sacked more. Let's just say this. It don't look good for Joey Ooh, Burrow no. uh, going forward. 148 times he's been sacked through uh, four seasons. Uh, and, and Andrew Luck, same exact time period, 115 times. Now, we know Andrew Luck retired because of how beat up he got. Let's not let that happen in Cincinnati. Nope. Come on. Let's protect this guy. He's a treat. This guy was protecting Andrew through some of that. Yeah. Right, AQ? Wait, I was. Yeah, good job. What was he that got one? released? What was that look on your face <laughs> they, while you were looking at They traded at me. They got rid of me. He did. Middle of that whole thing. Wrong guy. After the best game. Hey, right? Andrew. Andrew got his ass beat. And every time he stood right back up, like the epitome of a football player. He Joe did. Burrow is the same exact same thing. Same exact mm -hmm. thing. Somebody else has to look out for him and say, hey, listen, I understand that the way you view football is you got to, every play has to happen, but like, let's protect this guy. He's out for the season, obviously, with a wrist mm. or a hand, whatever it is. We need him back. We need him protected. Now. Let's grandstand the hell out of that because we yeah. had no decisions to make in that whole thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Hour two will be on the other side. We got JJ Watt and AJ. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Pat McAfee sell on your stunner at WrestleMania. Stunner! Where does that rank all time? I, that's got to be pretty up there. Man, top three. Top three, and I got to say top three because The Rock, number one, the way he oversold, and Scott Hall and some of the other guys that took it. But I mean, you know, Pat has a natural feel for the business, epic performer, great on the stick. I apologize that you're a punk bitch. Athletically, you know, that, that match he had with Theory was awesome. And then the, the kicker was not only the sell of the stunner, but to lay there selling, still guzzling the beer, the presence of mind to ad lib and improvise and like this is a moment without even thinking about it. I think he's amazing. Uh, he's very entertaining. And as a human being, I like him a whole lot. And here's, a, here's an off the record story. 
the, the second night that we were, we were at Mania, I was just planning on drinking uh, whiskey with my Broken Skull Sessions crew. And so we had a bottle all lined up and we were just gonna drink during the show and show respect to the people that were working. Well, Vince called me into his room and said, hey man, would you come out in the end? Stunned me, McAfee, and Theory. And I said, sure. So I couldn't drink until after the show. Okay, so the show happens. I go out there, stun all those cats. Brock Lesnar gets done with, with his match, the main event with Roman Reigns. And me and Brock have been wanting to bond together and, and have a few cocktails to begin with. And he goes, hey man, you got anything? I said, yeah. I said, where are we meeting? He goes, my locker room. So it was myself, Brock Lesnar, Larry, one of the trainers who's been there forever, you know Larry, Larry. and uh, Pat McAfee. What a day, what a dream, what a life. Now I'm gonna have a couple more Steve Wazers, wise, maybe a little whiskey, wise. And we took down a fifth. We just passed the bottle around. At first we were drinking out of little cups. Then it just turned into the bottle. And we, we uh, took down a fifth of Baker's Mark in about an hour. And then we all went our separate ways. And we fucking did it. <laughs> and I heard through the grapevine that uh, a couple of those guys woke up with some your headaches. Really? And I don't want to undersell this. Really hungry. <laughs> you know what I mean? From what you had inside the ring that we saw on camera, and then what was there a thing afterwards? Well, you know, there might have been, there might have been, yeah, a lot afterwards. <laughs> but it was a bonding moment, at, you know, after a big show like that of four guys, and I just barely met Pat, but he was already one of the boys because of his football background and how everybody, you know, the WWE has taken to him. And me and Brock were like, The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Trenches Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023, hour two of this program starts now. Football! Happy Thanksgiving. That's what this fire is all about. Yep. Hell yeah. fire. That's what this fire is all about. It's burning for the next nine hours or so. I believe this is a 10-hour video. We think the wood just kind of dissipates. I will be watching it the entire nine hours as this thing smokes up the studio on this glorious Thanksgiving Eve. We are incredibly grateful to be able to do what we do for a living every single day. And the only reason we're able to do that is because you... Watch his program, Hell, and you are the best on earth. Speaking of best on earth, the toxic table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Don Cowboys Tone Diggs is here, 12 year NFL vet, hosting in the trenches, coming later today. Nice. AQ Shipley. AQ. AQ. And joining us now, live from an attic in Ohio, is a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion. And the plug for why this guy came on the show yesterday. Oh, wow. COVID survivor, president of Ohio, AJ Hawk. Yay! AJ, all your hoity toity friends stopping by the show. I love that, pal. Love that. What are you talking about? What do you mean? You know. Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger was on the program yesterday. Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, I wish I could call Arnold a friend, but no, I was lucky enough that I know my buddy's wife is a publicist and she knows Arnold's publicist, and boom, they, they made it happen. Well, whatever the case. You made some legendary moments after this program. Yeah, and we you, appreciate Walker. you. We got Thanksgiving coming tomorrow. AJ, any thoughts to America here about Thanksgiving as a whole, the foundings of it, yep. since then, yep. what has taken Come place, on. and <laughs> what we should look forward to tomorrow? The floor is yours, AJ. The floor is I yours. would love to take this time to, to let you know exactly you know everything that I know and that I feel about Thanksgiving and the history of it. But I'm going to I'm going to take uh, probably the end of the show, right when we sign off of ESPN. That's when I plan on 
Oh, I'm really nice. giving my diatribe. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just 50 <laughs> minutes away from AJ Hawk giving a diatribe about Thanksgiving. We're on ESPN2 today, the deuce, Ooh, if you will. Ooh. Nice. I like that. That fire is beautiful yeah, behind it. Looks nice. Cool. Honestly, it looks very cozy in there. Yeah, it is. It, it is a nice little vibe. Thank you. We throw a is there a smoke, there? smoke machine in there? Oh, I think yeah. it's putting off some flames or some. AJ, AJ yeah. just threw a, AQ just threw a lot of them. Did you hear? Look at this. I did hear. Yeah. I'm sure somebody made this, and they're going to be pissed that we're just using it for free. But nonetheless, the fire you created, whoever you are, beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. This is remarkable. And for you kids in college, you know, don't be scared to get the DVD of the fire. That's right. Go ahead and play that on TV. You're super romantic. Yeah. You know, yeah. living that life. Not everybody has a house that has a fireplace in it like no. Thunderdome here. That's right. We installed this thing overnight. Yep. But you can all have one on TV, so you can be a little bit nicer, a little bit more romantic. Something you should think about, Boston Connor. No, no, no. That doesn't kind of fit my MO right now. I've been learning a lot about Stephen A's sex life on the internet. Oh, yeah. A lot yeah. of it. Have yeah. we all been doing that? Yes. What's yeah. going on? What's that? What's going on with that? Are people, uh -huh. he's just answering fan questions, I believe, right? The yeah. people want to know from Stephen A about boning. And it seems like he is just there to give all the answers all the time. Mm -hmm. His new set, sick. And don't look now. I think Stephen A is becoming an incredible social media superstar. Oh, yeah. He's buying in. He's crushing it. We're very thankful to be on the same network as Stephen A, but yeah. I'm also very thankful to learn about all the sexing that he's been talking yep. about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Guy, guy does it. He does. Salad. Not when watching sports, though. Go no. Ahead. Salad is his preferred meal before sex. Yep. Mm. He gets them ready. It's like a pregame meal. Exactly. You're listening I believe to music. he loves Latin women is what he says. Yeah, I believe yes. that is his, his okay. preferred uh, uh, tag team partner in the act mm -hmm. of sex mm -hmm. that he's been talking about out there. He likes oil. What's going on, AQ? We're talking football or what? I don't know. You tell me. It sounds like we're talking about salads. Well, Stephen A's talking about salads. Mm -hmm. talk. yeah, he's getting in it. No watching sports no. during sex. I, yeah. I saw that too. Stephen A said that. that. You can listen to R. Kelly, though, because he's in jail. True. Just in case you want to put did, He did say, I'm kind of torn here. I would like to let it be known. Thunderdome does not play any of that music. No. Mark Kelly free. We don't do any of that stuff. Uh -uh. But uh, Stephen A says, guy's in jail forever, so we should at least, you know, be able to enjoy. That guy was a bad guy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Real Huge bad. Bad yep. guy. Scum of the earth. Wasn't he, AJ? I mean, like, right in front of the world's eyes almost. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bad, bad guy. A lot of those. Yeah, that was a... Was that a like a docu series? I think that came out that kind of exposed a lot of that. Yeah, surviving R. Kelly. We all that was watched. scary. Yeah, it was. I'm like, Whoa. Zito was in it. Same world. Zito worked yeah. at um, Coldstone. Coldstone Creamery in Chicago, <laughs> and R. Kelly came in. Yeah, I left us a tip. It was a sixty dollars tip, and the owner took it all. What? what? So the owner also back. That guy's guy's wasn't yeah, shown yeah. into. Who survival. was with him? It wasn't. Uh, <laughs> A person in the dock, actually. Yeah, oh, sad. No. That was a sad story, dude. Incredible. That was a sad story. You know, why don't you do something, yeah, Z? Why don't you say it? He said, he got tipped. Yeah. He got yeah. tipped. He goes, it's like, It's the freaking weekend. It's about to go down. We can't sing that. We can't, can't do that. <laughs> can't sing that. Yeah. What? You nailed it. He's got good rhythm. That's that's what people say about Zito is his <laughs> harmony and his tone are just two steps. Yep. Yep. Spot on. Speaking of being spot on, joining us now as we beautifully filled time waiting for this man. <laughs> yep. You should check out Stephen A on the internet, though. He's yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. on fire. He is all, He is bad. A mad dog bad a thousand. Yeah, he did. Mad yeah. dog did. They, they, these he guys are hot. on fire. Hot We're, oh, we got hot bats coming out of that first yeah. take studio right yeah. now. Yeah. And it's an, we got to acknowledge it, and we got to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of both of those things, let's acknowledge that there's a man who is the third person ever in the Houston Texans Ring of Honor. Wow. Let's enjoy the fact that this man has the answers for everything because he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. That's yeah. right. He'll swear on the show today and ruin all of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, former Walter Payton Man of the Year, MVP, and maybe future Houston Texan, J.J. Watt. Yay! Hey, hey, hey. The guy with the MVP was yesterday. He took mine. So I'm just, I just got defensive player of the year. It's no MVP. Yeah, but it's defense MVP. Yeah. You get it. You get it. Because you, you guys get screwed. You know what I mean? Defense players get screwed out there the whole time. Just like Jim Irsay been saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like Jim Irsay. Oh, yeah. You've been yeah. saying on HBO last night. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you're moving like on. yeah. 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 We're moving on. Yeah. Hey, Jim Irsay's not happy, Brian. No, he's not. Uh, he's not happy, Brian. He's not happy. He put a tweet out there. Mm hmm. <laughs> Jim Irsay says, HBO's real sports is why kicking the stigma is so important to our efforts. Defeating the stigma of disease, of addiction, and alcoholism. If I had overcome pancreatic cancer, I'm a courageous hero. Instead, Brian Gumbel treats me with mean-spirited contempt. So sad. Heart sign. 
praying for you. I will say, Jim Irsay gave a lot of access to Andrea Kramer oh, yeah. for the real sports, for it to immediately afterwards be like, this guy sucks for Brian Gumble. <laughs> so I think Jim Irsay, if he was to go back, would be like, yeah, not doing that. But it was nice to learn his story last night. Definitely. And Jim Irsay, one of one forever will always be there. Yeah. And Speaking can... of one on one, uh, JJ Watt, how are we doing with Burnley? See you wearing the hat. That team, how how we doing with Burnley? I'll go to Gumpy, I guess. Gumpy, how's Burnley doing right now? I'm pretty confident that they will get a point against the Hammers. West Ham are a good squad. JJ, if you talk to Vincent, coach company, if we get up a goal, let's just put all the lads behind the ball and get a point. Let's park it. Yeah, park huh? the bus. Uh, There's nothing wrong with that. I'll take the message with me across the pond, and I'll tell Vince that like, Gump from the McAfee He'll show know. says, He'll if know. we He'll get a know. goal, park the bus. <laughs> yeah. I'll let him know. Right. He'll know exactly what that means. He'll definitely respond Actually, well big, to Actually, big it. news for you guys, too. Everton getting deducted points. Oh! oh! Addition nice. by subtraction somewhere uh -huh. else. You're cheating. You're losing points. Guess what we're doing? Not relegating. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, like, yeah. we like anytime any other team can lose points, right, Gump? Uh, that sounds like we a good are, thing. That's very good for Burnley. They are now tied at the uh, bottom of the table with Everton. Here we go, okay. JJ. We're climbing without doing anything. That's great. We we're coming off the international break, so the boys have a couple of our boys have been playing internationally. A couple of our boys have been working, resting back at the at the training grounds, and uh, this is a big match for us—a home match on Saturday. I felt it was as such. I felt the boys need to know that we support them, that we back them. So I am going over to the match on yeah. Saturday oh, to be there. In go! Holy hell! Go, JJ! You got whistle yeah. plates? What are we doing? Are we sitting in the stands? I'm, uh, uh, I'm going over there. Uh, I literally land like, I mean, I, I, I'm going in and out. I mean, I get in Saturday right before the match, attend the match, and I'm flying right back. But we need full support for the boys, so I'm going to be on the turf with them, and uh, it'll be fun, man. Sub yourself in. Is, Tom, go ahead. Is Tyler going to be there? Yeah. Is Dude Perfect going to be there? Um, I, I, no, I, I don't think they will be. Wow. Okay. I mean, I mean what, we, everybody's That's got schedules. I, I wasn't at the last one. We can't. I, Were they? I, I, Were they? Was Tyler? Was Tyler there? No. Okay. Tyler! Tyler even more than care! Tyler. Tyler even care? I don't feel like it. AJ's defending the rest. AJ's defending him. He's giving Yeah, there's more. more Why is it just Tyler? Well, Tyler's well, leader. Because, yeah, he's, he's the guy. Tyler. He's Purple hoser. Yeah, Justin Timberlake. Oh, sorry. Purple yeah. hoser? We're going to get it. We're gonna get we're gonna get Nick some points. Drag, we need, need some points. We're gonna get some points. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Maybe hey. a pint or two also. If what? you guys are down three or four, sub yourself in, dude. Just yeah, go in there and start sweet. wrecking shop. You know what I mean? Just start. Uh, just start. I, could, I could see if I get the fastest red card in the history of the league. That'd hard. be fun. And then do a full. Yeah. Are you not entertained? <laughs> My team. I, I, I can promise you one thing. I would get the crowd going. Yeah. I would. I would get the people fired up for a good thirty seconds, uh, and then. And uh, God knows what would happen. No, we need 90 minutes, JJ. We need 90 minutes. Let's get a good one for Burnley. Let's talk about getting the uh, crowd going. You've played in some Thanksgiving games. We just looked up some of your uh, clips from these Thanksgiving huh? games. You dominated on Thanksgiving. <laughs> what are your thoughts on getting an opportunity to play on Thanksgiving? That's first play of the game. Uh, That's first, first play, of the, play game. of the game. 15 minutes still on the clock. There is nothing better than starting a game with a sack on the first play of the game, much less being Thanksgiving. Uh, I loved playing on Thanksgiving. I played on Thanksgiving twice, both times against the Lions. Um, for me, it was always one of the coolest experiences because I grew up watching these games just like everybody does. You sit down, you eat, and then you watch these games. And so I know what it feels like to be sitting on that couch watching these. And then when I was getting ready for the Thanksgiving game my first time in 2012, I very specifically remember this. I was talking to my grandma on the phone before the game and we were talking about how cool it was that i used to sit with her and eat and watch these games and now i was playing in it and so then to go out there and get that sack on the first play of the game uh it i always loved playing on thanksgiving man you kind of know the whole country's watching and loving it how about this a nice pick six how you doing keep it moving uh, i think they said four days before this on sunday you just got done batting five balls as well you were seeing five? the ball Jeez. really well in this span of four to five days but whenever you talk about playing on thanksgiving and like the nostalgia of it all it is special it does feel different it legitimately does feel like hey oh, yeah. everybody on earth is watching this game right now 
Yeah, because I think everybody can picture what your childhood was like or what your growing up was like. So it was really, really cool for me. And it does carry that extra little bit of weight. And then uh, you also know that you've got some phenomenal food waiting for you back home after. Crushing it. Go ahead, AJ. Yes. JJ, I don't know if we have those clips again, but the first play, like you said, the first play of the game, when you get that sack, did you see something? Did you jump the count? Like, look at this. You just annihilate this dude first off, boom, in the backfield. Like, did you do this? Obviously, you did it all day with the stats that you had. But how does it feel after the first play there, like, what does that guy feel? What is the, the guard or tackle you're up against? <laughs> Worst what do you think he's thinking? Yeah. Worst that, that, was, uh, that was a 50-50, a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of guessing and hoping you're right because if you're wrong, you just left a huge gap for your linebacker to cover. But I was lucky. I had some really good linebackers who covered my ass a lot. Uh, Brady James would always make sure I was right. So i jump outside. Because I saw, you know, he, he opened up the he opened up the lane for me a little bit. He took an inside step first and then kind of opened the gate. So I just popped around it, got the sack. And, yes, the rest of the game, you're in that guy's head because he's like, oh, first play sack. This is not good. Worse. And then I'm, I know I'm in his head. So then I'm like, yeah, really not good for you, bud. And, yeah, that's uh, what you're three saying. Three sacks later. Like, let's three sacks. Okay. Dang Obviously me. quite a day whenever you have the first one. You, I think we got to see on NFL Films and obviously on this show – Aside from the F word usage. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Absolute, yeah. absolute general. I've cured it. Despicable. I've cured it. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. TBD ice bar. We're pitching a perfect game right now. Yeah, obviously. Maybe get a little, what was that thing they chewed on for intimidation in that movie? The uh, Alka-Seltzer. Alka-Seltzer, yeah. maybe a little intimidation. Yeah, Alka-Seltzer. Yeah. The entire yep. thing. But you, I learned from NFL films. This guy talks so much shit. So mm-hmm. much. This guy maybe talked uh, the most amount of shit in the history mm-hmm. of humans talking shit yeah. in professional sports. Yeah. You saw it on that one. I don't know if it was his third tackle or what it was. He was in that. That uh, guy was just trying to get off the field. That guy's just trying to run away from him, trying to breathe a little bit. And JJ, excuse me. Excuse I mean, me. look what he did to me. Excuse Rewind me. it. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse Rewind me. It. That's a penalty, Rewind man. It. That's a penalty. Yeah. Excuse me. Rewind it. Taunt. TJ Lee? Taunting. Yeah, who was yeah. that? Peter, that's Peterman. Oh, you know him, AJ. You and him have had a couple. We played against these guys. I, right I, I tell you what, I Watch. I respect the passion this, these old line plays with. Oh, I'm yeah, on he kind of got yeah. you late. Yeah, he, yeah. I should have done more. I should have beat the shit out of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Kind of a coward. Now that I look <laughs> yeah, at yeah, a little bit. Yeah, no, I, I, was, I look like a bitch out there. <laughs> <laughs> the hell was I? Yeah, 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 this is really good. But yeah, <laughs> don't, don't know. Why do you guys got to do that, AQ? I don't know. I didn't see the penalty, though. What? AJ, explain the penalty. Oh, what was God. the penalty? The whistle, on, the whistle had obviously blown. Oh, JJ was on his back getting okay. up, and he got hit again. All right, let's talk about what's going on around the NFL. Uh, before we, do- Hey, what's your favorite side, Thanksgiving side? Uh, my wife makes an incredible corn casserole, like Ooh. a cream corn okay. casserole. Mm. Okay. I like that. You guys got super healthy Thanksgiving coming right yeah. down the pipe tomorrow over there? Nope. Very, very, very unhealthy. I'm, I'm down here in Houston, so we've got a ton of. Uh, Ooh. We've got this. We've got the traditionals. We've got uh, the turkey, the ham, all that. But then we also have brisket and ribs and things. Mm. We got it. We got it all. Who are you down there with again? Uh, it's Kush and his uh, his family, my wife's sister and nephews. Oh, so our whole family. You and Kush are brother-in-law. Oh, wow. geez. This is just like the A.J. Brady Quinn thing. Yeah. Okay. We're creating these super families. Oh, I didn't know that was the oh, case. That's unfair. Oh, yeah. and what, how was oh, I watched his kids all weekend. I, I watched his boys, Caden and Kai. They had their youth football games on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, yeah, superhumans to say the least. Set the scoring record in the third grade Super Bowl was five touchdowns before, and we put up a, a nine piece. So, Gee, wh- How does that even happen? Yeah. What's the final score to these <laughs> games? How, how, they won uh, the championship, I assume, yeah? Oh yeah, yeah, fifty-five to twenty, fifty-five to twenty-two. I think it was. Oh. It was. Uh, it was a route, and then we got Caden here, who is playing in the Turf Bowl next weekend. So, uh, some Cush. Shockingly, Cush built some pretty good athletes. His wife played soccer at uh, USC. So, Megan and Brian uh, can they can put together some some genes. Yeah, it sounds like. And we're talking about Brian Cushing, by the way. If you remember, just Google who he is, yeah, and you'll see you just know. a monster, a specimen. Kid has nine touchdowns in one game. Previous record was five. Wow. I mean, just do do not You're down there in Houston, though, enjoying life. We working yeah, out, maybe? Do, oh, doing a physical? Whoa. Doing a physical oh, down? Yeah, yeah, I, told, I told you I was working out down here. I've been working out at the stadium. Oh, working out with the team. I told you that. I at the stadium? Oh, ah. yeah. that. Anybody? Yes. Anybody watching Great. these workouts with a pen and Casario? Yeah. Looks like he can still bend a little bit. Mm. Bend good. Demi- so is that? Are you in the gym all by yourself? Who's in there? 
The whole team is in there this last. Oh. You're lifting with the team. This guy's a team workouts. Yeah. Okay. I don't need no, what, I, practice. I, yeah, I've, uh, practices right now. They're they're at practice right now. Oh, you're oh. taking a G day. You just said, you know what? I'll lift with the boys. Oh, I'm I'm go, I'm, I'm going over there. I, I, I'm not hiding it. I'm going over there after this to go work with some of the young guys. Like oh. I'm not hiding it. Coaching. I'm going over there right after I'm done here. You're on the Houston Texans. You're playing football again. Is this happening? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. I, I just enjoy. I mean, it's the best place to work out while you're here. It's an incredible facility. Uh, I love being around the guys. Uh, D'Amico's the best. Matt Burke was my D line coach last year. He's the D coordinator now. And oh. there's, I mean, it's, there's nothing better than going back in that building. I mean, all the cafeteria workers are the nice same. Dude. The trainers are the same. I love it, man. Uh, how's it get off? You feel like you're pretty good against these young bucks or the guys you're working with? You feel like they're just running you off the field? You look like After a bitch out there. After last week's show, when you asked me if I was running or not, and I said I hadn't been, I, I tossed on just, – I just wanted to see what it felt like. Ooh. I got fresh legs. Don't worry. I got fresh – Whoa! Whoa! This guy's going to play for the Houston Oh, yeah. Let's go. Isn't it crazy to think about? Unbelievable. It's going to happen. just depends on when, I guess. What, what, what are we thinking? Uh, only need to last four or five weeks? Yeah, so probably. Kind of get a little tune-up. I'll stay at Cushy's house. Yep. I'll eat yeah. meat with Cush. Right. I'll right. do some workouts in the park. I'll watch his kids <laughs> score nine touchdowns. Right. We'll reminisce about Thanksgiving games where right. I'm just dominating people. Yeah. And then we'll get back out there to close the season out with C.J. Stroud. Is that what the plan is, Icebox? Uh, they're they're doing just fine, man. Will Anderson's playing great. John Gennard's playing great. Sheldon Rankin's playing great. Malik, they got, they're doing just fine. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's just perfect. Yeah, yeah bingo. Yeah. Had a whole famer in there. Yeah, yeah just drop Line. Drop a ring of honor guy <laughs> just yeah. right in there. Might help. Oh, wow. Huh. A lot of fun. Massive game this weekend. Texans Jags. Huge game this weekend. AFC South. Massive. Where's it at? In Jacksonville? Place. No, it's here in Houston. Oh, Is that really? Right? Huh. Hey, is it Wednesday? We can still get the papers cleared for that. Yeah. Easy. For sure. For JJ yeah. freaking one? Home game? Yeah. I'll be I'll, I'll, I'm gonna be in England on Saturday. I just told you that. Come on. Oh, that's yeah. what we're Okay, so that's what we're waiting for. So who do they got next week? Let's pull up the Houston Texans schedule here. Mm -hmm. Let's start predicting what week this is going to happen, where Icebox is going to be back out there mm -hmm. doing this one. No, right? no, no, no. JJ, are there any other uh, former Texans in there working out with you, or are you the only one? Great question. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm the only one that, oh. that I saw. How about former Texans going into team meetings and stuff like that? Are you the only yeah. one? Eating food in the cafeteria. There it is. Um, I mean, pretty easy schedule. He'll have I'm sure guys do from time to time. I know Andre's. I know Andre's around. Where are you? We need to look up now, like records where he needs to get to. What is there a number? He oh needs to get yeah. To? Is there a, sack record? Is there any? Is there anything on the horizon other than just Houston Texans football being good and wanting to be a part of it? <laughs> it's nothing to do with that. I, 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 we talked like if I would have done it, it would have been with my brothers. Like it would have definitely been with my brothers. Don't believe you. I see the Turner's tea there, by the way. Nice, Hell yeah. Nice yeah. little Pittsburgh plug. Hell yeah. Love Turner's yeah. tea. This one uh, is a diet, a lot of aspartame, I think. Yeah, that's right. But it tastes delicious. You know, I don't know what it's going to do to me on the back end, but I do know we're about to see J.J. Watt back in a football field. So pumped. I'm so pumped about it. We're going up against the Jets. How many, how many plays do you guys have? If you if you each had to do it, Pat, obviously, is a little bit different than A.J.'s position. But, A.J., if you had to do it right now, how many plays would you have? Two. It's not about, like, feeling – not good afterwards. It's about stopping and starting and all that. So, I mean, I could maybe within like a one and a half yard box, I could throw my head around a little bit, but I don't think my head has as many, any, uh, you know, many collisions left in it, I think. Yeah. Pat, I how many pumps punk. we got? He got, got a full, full, got a full game? I've been, lounge, I've been lunging, you know what I mean? Yeah. Doing body weight squats. So I was trying to see how it. <laughs> I think I could turn a couple over. I couldn't kick off right now if I had to. I could not. Kick uh, they, off. they fair catch it anyway. It doesn't matter. Kick for, off would be tough, but I think I could get through a game punting wise. I think I could. How when you say you could not kick off, like you don't think you could make it to the end zone, or you just don't think you like. Yeah, I could do like a like, kickoff. Like I could hit the ball, but this the whole yeah. thing right here would probably just explode. Yeah. If I had to guess, the whole that's a little that's a little different animal there. You know? How about you? Yeah. You've obviously have you done Queen's Gambit up on the ceiling? How many plays that you could play right now <laughs> if you had to for the Houston Texans? Uh, no. Uh, I haven't done exactly that. I mean, I've certainly, like, all, all season long, you think about it, and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it would be, like, I mean, you, but, no, I, I mean, I feel I feel good. My body feels great. I, I, I really do. I feel good. But that's because I'm not playing. It's, it's awesome. Well, listen, you don't have to make the announcement today. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. we will Couple eagerly weeks. await Couple that announcement when it takes place. <laughs> we obviously will cover the news because it'll be a part of our sport. Right. And a future Hall of Famer says, yeah, I'm on the side 
of the stadium and I'm on the field as well for the Houston <laughs> Texans. What a beautiful thing. Let's move along as we continue to fire questions at you. You do it on your own time. Mm -hmm. You do it on your own time, JJ. Con Man has a question for you, pal. Yeah, JJ, uh, I mean, I can't really stop thinking about you playing for the Texans this weekend, so I, uh, that does a, it hinders my ability right now. But uh, Brandon Staley, another week of this. We're going through this whole, you know, shenanigans about what's going on in L.A. and what do they need to do to fix their team. Uh, outside looking in, your opinion, especially being in a building where they have a first-year coach with the culture already being changed, what, what do you think needs to happen with the Chargers and how many more games are we going to go through this whole charade that Brandon Staley, uh, you know, is the guy in LA because it's, it's just not working out and now he's losing his mind at press conferences after the game. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, obviously it's a very talented team, man. It's a very talented roster, so I'm sure he's frustrated. I'm sure everybody there is frustrated with the results not coming with it. Uh, I think the one thing for me that that when I watch the press conference, obviously he's frustrated, but the one thing, like when he said, I don't speak to the fans. That was one where I was like, oh, man, you, you can't say that. Like, you do speak to the fans. Like, we literally have a job because of the fans. The only reason that we get to do what we do, that we get to live the lives that we live, that we get to chase the ball around for a living is because of the fans. So you can't come out here and say, like, it's not about the fans and, and I'm not going to speak to the fans. Like, no, that's that's we, we understand that. When we get into this business, that's what we do. So I think – no, no doubt he's angry. No doubt he's mad. No doubt he wants to be doing better. But I do think that you can, you know, get yourself a little sympathy if you just acknowledge what's going on and say, yeah, we're, we're trying, man. Yeah, just baby face a little bit out there. You know, just a little baby face. Just a little, instead of saying, you can stop asking me that question. I don't care how shitty our defense looks. I'm going to continue to call it until this thing goes all the way to the bottom of the ocean. Okay? Yeah. So stop asking. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you can rephrase that. Obviously, a lot yeah. of emotions get in there a yeah. little bit. That's going to take place. But it's like the Staley seat being hot. I bet you he's sick of it, too. Yes. Yeah. I bet he's at a point of this uh, is not what I thought this was going to be at all. But you're talking about if heart. You're gonna, go ahead. Yeah, if you're, if you're going to go that route, just go all the way. Just go all the way and just go full on heel and be like, maybe my team will back me now. Like maybe, maybe if I go full blown, I just rip this reporter to shreds and say, I'm going to figure this shit out. We're going to make it all happen. Then maybe his team is like, all right, let's do it. Let's make it happen. Yeah, they have not proven to ever do that. Yeah. I wonder what it is. They're talking about Bill Belichick going over there. Yep. They're talking about Ben Johnson maybe going over there because they got Herbert. Herbert is the pod. Oh, don't tell yeah. Connor. That's who Connor wants. Whoa, shut up, JJ. Jeez, what? Please. Jeez. You off -air just conversations. Had an outburst. Yeah, off-air conversations are not for air. Okay, JJ, I want Bill Belichick. Shut your trap about who I want. Oh, oh no. 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 New England Patriots. Oh, he said he wants Bill Belichick out of there, of JJ. A bitch. Now, let's you talk about son of a bitch, <laughs> JJ. Let's talk about Holy this off-air yeah. conversation. So, Icebox. Uh -oh. One man said that he wants Bill Belichick the hell out of town. No. He wants Ben Johnson I, I, in there. Is that what he said? Wow. No, no, no. Let me reel it back. Let me reel it back. Let me reel it it's back. It's too late. The cat's you, out of the you, bag. You screwed me. No. You screwed me, brother. <laughs> you screwed me. Why don't you just say the F word or something else? Because you screwed me. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm about to defend you here. You actually, I can quote your exact word. You said my number one A and number one B is Bill Belichick. That you literally said okay. that. So right. I, there's nothing. Yeah. People nothing aren't going to remember in, that shit, JJ. They're going to remember you saying that I want him out of town. So thanks for ruining just, my life. Just play the clip uh, Just play the clip of the sharding from yesterday, and everybody will forget. Whoa, whoa. Everybody. Speaking of, Ty has a question yeah. for you about not sharding. Jeez, why don't just you say, just, yeah, just that, Thanks a lot, asswipe. Jesus Christ. I, I mean, I don't need to be taking ricochets, too. But Speaking of asswipe, did you see it's dude the, It's the Hawkeye yeah, sweatshirt. I did. I got I to gotta deflect. Yeah, the Hawkeye sweatshirt is a Big Ten champion. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. that's right. So drink that one in, JJ. <laughs> How's Wisconsin I don't want, doing this? I year? don't want to drink anything coming from you at the moment. Oh! Right? So like, oh! I Swing. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, just curious though, and I know that you know defensive guys probably have a different take on this, but are we kind of in the that prime part of the season now, where like if you going into the year had a very good defense and your offense just absolutely sucks, like? Well, guys start to kind of give in a little bit. I mean, again, you guys, you know, you're trying to put good tape uh, out there and, and no one's going to, like, actually give up. But we talk about this every year where, like, a couple years ago it was the Bears defense when their offense was atrocious and, like, you know, it was, Khalil Mack was still doing his thing. But at a certain point it's just like, hey, our offense is only going to score, like, three to six points. Like, is it even 
worth it, you know, to like kind of keep busting your ass. Like it's kind of already starting to happen with the Jets where their defense is so good, but they know the offense can't score. So like, is it kind of just human nature where guys are like, well, what the hell is the point? I, I do think it depends on the situation of your team. Like if you're still in the hunt for the playoffs, obviously it's a very different thing, but there, there obviously is a point where some teams are pretty clearly out of the playoff race. And I mean, we play the game for the playoffs or Super Bowls. That's, that's why you play. But there comes a point where it's clear that you're out of it and you do want, you have to have that motivation for, okay, like we clearly can't accomplish our main goal, but I still want to accomplish this, that, or the other thing. And so then it becomes, I mean, A, like, I hate when guys like, what, what's my motivation? What do you mean? Like, A, you're competing. Go out on the field and compete. You're, you're playing against another human being. You want to be better than that human being. B, you're getting paid a shitload of money. Like, what, what you're just not going to try hard? No, like, I need C, a speech. <laughs> I need a speech. I need a good speech to get out there and go do it. Yeah. C, there's a billion people that want your job. Literally, every person mm-hmm. on the planet would love to have the job that you have. It's the coolest job in the freaking world. And then D... Uh, you can, if you, if last resort, you want to go out there and play for your own personal stats, go out there and play for your own personal stats, put up good tape, get yourself a bigger contract down the road, whatever you have to. But anybody that any point in the season is like packing it in or saying, no, I don't want, like, you suck. Like, you just suck. Yeah, those aren't the people you want on your team. And if you see those people, it's certainly uh, an indicator of where your program is. And that's probably why these games mean absolutely nothing. And everybody's getting fired. So it's a fun time, you know, at the end of those seasons. And when you have a losing season, you were a part of a few of those, right? A few of those? Yeah, sadly. Those are the worst. I think, but I do think, like, that's why, like, so people will sometimes, like, Tomlin obviously gets a ton of credit for what he does and no losing seasons and all that. And there's some people in Pittsburgh who will say, like, yes, no losing seasons, but he hasn't done this or that or that. But, like, Sometimes when you literally don't have it right now, their offense is clearly struggling. We all know that. We obviously saw you fire Matt Canada, et cetera, et cetera. But to keep these guys at the level that they're playing and the motivation levels to do what they're having to do, even with such a horrible offensive situation that they've had this year, like that, like he is a master motivator. There's a reason that poll that just came out where who do you want to play for most as another head coach? Everybody says Tomlin because that is he is that dude. Yeah, they talked about the stadiums they like to play in as well. I think the Athletic did all the polls and everything. It's uh, it's amazing to watch. First time since 1941 that they fired mm-hmm. a coordinator or a head coach. And I guess Tone said a little caveat to that 1941 stat. That was actually the owner who was acting coach mm-hmm. fired himself. Yep. So I suck. <laughs> Get me out of here. That was in 1941. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> this guy's terrible. Get this guy out of here. This guy had no ball. This guy's. Just... I assume it's because he was enlisting too. Like he was just ready yeah. to go. Yeah, of course that was the case. But Tone did have a question about the Matt Cannon firing. For yeah, I did. Uh, there's a rumor going around, and I just want to know if you want to squash it or not. Um, you know how TJ kicked the door down and said, "You know what? Enough, enough of this. I'll sign the contract. Okay, no more squabbling between my agent and in the front office, but whatever." Is it true? He also he kicked the door down in the Tallman's office and said, "Enough. You need to fire <laughs> Matt Cannon right now." Is that true? Because it's going around. Is it? Yeah. Oh man. I don't. I don't speak. I don't speak on the inside of the organization up there. I just speak from the outside. I'm just an analyst. I speak for myself. I speak for my own words. I stay on the outside. So there's Ooh. chances. Oh, wow. That? Sounds like Ooh. that's crazy. TJ was. Can like, you speak for your brother, TJ? Did he? Because he, he does this one, right? He goes. Yeah. Ah. Picks it down. <laughs> ah. uh, yeah. No. I mean, I'm. Um, Where's Tallman's office? I'm excited. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can tell you there's one person he would never do that to, and it's Mike T. He will never, he will not do that, no. How's TJ feeling at the beginning of the year? Obviously, all signs were to him breaking the sack record because he was going out of his mind every single weekend getting to the quarterback. Obviously, he has all eyes on him and all focus on him at all times. How's he feeling? How's the body? You want to speak as an analyst. What do you project for your brother for the rest of the year? What do you project out of your brother for the rest of the year? I think he's going to, I think he's going to finish this year extremely strongly. You know, I, uh, obviously talk to him often and I've been through it quite a bit. Um, you know, you kind of, I mean, it's hilarious that like he has one sack and people want to consider it a down game or he has uh, a stretch of three games where he only has three sacks and people are like, what's going on? And I'm like, it's just incredible. And that's a a testament to the standard that you set and where you want to be. Um, but if you want to consider this a lull to me, that's great because I, I think that, uh, he only is going to come out of it even stronger, and he's going to—he's 
the kid's playing good football and he's going to dominate and he has for a while. So I, I, I foresee a very, very strong finish to the season. Is that what you were saying, Tone, about TJ? I would never. I actually went to battle for him on the internet yesterday against a scumbag Cleveland fans who said, you know, obviously Joel Batonio was pulling and TJ just absolutely blew the play up and they were like, it's a dirty play. Well, those marks have never watched her play football before. And I went to battle for him and I will go to battle for TJ every single day of the year and week. Okay. And I will take a bullet for that guy. I've said it before. I'll say it again. And on the other side, Miles Garrett. <sighs> Man, what is what what that game there? TJ and Miles Garrett on football fields. You're talking about two right. humans that aren't supposed to be the way they are. This dude is phenomenal, JJ. Every week he just yeah. takes over the game. He had two safeties here back to back. They were neither of them were called that, of, of course. Yeah. But he just took over. He's a game wrecker all the time, JJ. Yeah, I'd, I think on play one of the game, I would really like to, you know, put a body on 95. I think oh, that would be no, uh, an ideal situation. If if I was playing against the Cleveland Browns and I was scheming it up, I'd probably put at least one body on number 95 on the first play of the game. Um, the guy's playing unbelievable. I mean, he really is a great football player. I mean, he's so big, he's so strong, he's so fast, he's so agile. It's another thing that I, I love rivalries, and I think they're – extremely important i think they're what makes this game so great and what makes it so fun i do think that i wish some of these would get rekindled and be stronger than than ever because i think we kind of lose them a bit but when i see like cleveland fans and pittsburgh fans going at it about tj and about miles i'm like there's no reason to tear the other guy down just to build your own guy up like both of these guys are playing unbelievable football right now just enjoy it man it's like the mj lebron debate it's like we have to debate it because we have to debate it but at the end of the day like just appreciate it these guys are playing incredible football we don't debate it we're too dumb to do that and you don't have to tear somebody down to lift somebody else up but those two in the afc north problematic yeah, yeah. problematic yeah. and what i seen miles garrett do to the indianapolis colts yeah. I mean, the guy looks like it. I mean, rude. it's it's pretty incredible. Like yeah, this one him, hits my face. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. Uh, he's got he's got the arms that just look like they just finished a pump. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, like just all the time. Like Arnold. Yeah. Hey, we had Arnold on yesterday. He was yeah. jolly yeah. And smoking cigars. You and him are like what? Bass, you got to play pickleball together. You JJ with him. I uh, I have <laughs> I have eaten breakfast at that table with Lola. Uh, Lola, right? Yeah, the, the, where the donkey comes to the table and eats oatmeal with you. <laughs> it's wild. Oh, you're like best friends with Arnold Schwarzenegger? I, I should have known that. Is that real? I didn't know that was the case. Yeah, no, he, we've we've known each other for, for a while. He's a great man. I love I love Arnold. He's, so it's like you, Zach Brown, yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger, oh, yeah. Ryan Smith, the Utah jazz owner, yep. Cushing at the end. <laughs> he knows like, ZB Michael Phelps. Phelps. Michael Phelps, obviously. Yep. Ertz. Yeah. Ertz. Arnold, Arnold was very generous. John he Ron. came in throughout the uh he threw out the first pitch at the charity classic, my charity classic in Houston oh, nice. a few years back. Um been out there in LA and done some things with his charity. He's he's always been a great man. He's he's How great. was the throw? Pretty good. Yeah, burned it. I assume. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. Yes, absolutely. Perfect strike, of course. Uh, speaking of perfect strike, Rom's about to sign for six hundred million. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's buying dinner right for the whole crew out there. <laughs> yeah, I wish uh, that would be that would be sweet. I, I I tweeted I would I would have been the first one at his front door physically forcing him to sign it if it was worth six hundred. That would be oh. anybody who says they wouldn't do that. Like, would, if you if you wouldn't take six hundred million. I don't know about that. Yeah, exactly. well, that means you came oh, from a place that had six hundred million, you know. So you yeah. have no real sense or grasp True. of reality. Yes, absolutely. But then there's some people though that were really against these guys signing for 150 million. Yeah. Because that money's not good money. It's like I hate to break to you, that particular money <laughs> is everywhere. <laughs> it, it's, there are a lot of the money is the same money. A lot, a lot of, of money is very yeah, similar never, money, and they have a never-ending pit of it over there. Yeah. So I was like, well, distribution. If it's going to get to some of our guys, I think we're happy for that. Be cool. I think, we're, yeah. I think it's good. No, bad people over here. It's like, let's go through the history of the world. <laughs> let's go through. <laughs> let's go ahead and do this. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I, we're gonna get. We're gonna. We're gonna get cut off here. We're gonna get. We're gonna throttled. get the, the A Rob zap. Yeah. No, nah, it's Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know, everybody understands we're thankful. I love the fire, by the way. Fire is a, such a good addition to the show. Yeah, Zito. Zito <laughs> found it actually. It was AQ just threw a log on it, friend of the program. <laughs> yeah. Oh, put another one on there, AQ. AQ, can you put another log on. Yeah. 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 Need the poker. <laughs> Thanks, AQ. <laughs> Fire. Yeah, Best that. friends. Strong. AQ is a good walker. How'd that go? How was the walk? We didn't really get a chance yeah. to chat yeah. about it with AQ because he was working out all morning. It was a good. It was uh, it was about thirty minutes. Perfect time. Fifteen out, fifteen back. Um, 
was a great time. Kids, kids were both phenomenally behaved, no issues whatsoever. Ran to a couple uh, neighbors. One lady said, I, j- "I just really like to see dads out walking their kids." Really? And so, yeah. what did you, got? you know, Look it just just making people's days. Wow. Yeah, you guys best friends now. He's going to John Rom six hundred million. I signed with Live Party too with all yeah. you guys. Phelps going to be over yeah. there, and yeah. AQ's invited. Huh? Going to Burnley with JJ? Yeah, Saturday. Yeah, no, yeah, slowly but surely, slowly but surely. Yeah, no. I mean, so it was, uh, it was, whoa. Which <laughs> answer is it? The first one or the second one? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. tough. It's a good way. You did a good job. No, yeah. we're, we're, we're looking one, for one a second the... walk. We're looking for a second walk. That's yeah, it. let's okay. let's walk before we yeah. yep. fly before into we this run. relationship. That's smart. Yeah. Good, AJ. Dennis Gardak has five sacks this year, JJ. How many <laughs> think he ends the season with? Dude, he's he's like it's, I like watching Dennis play, man. Yeah, oh. Dennis is he's a little. He, I mean, he's a standard I, I for effort, about right? Say he's a menace. Yeah, he's like for, I think he's like I'd put him on like, hey, this is how hard we play, guys. Like, watch this oh, dude yeah. play. Yeah, this is what we do. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, he is that guy. He's got an incredible little spin move. He's also got this bend around the corner where he can duck underneath tackles. Um, mm-hmm. So I would say, let's see, he's at five right now. We got what six six games 15, left. 15? 15. Oh yeah, I could see. Uh, it, uh, yeah, because Kyler's back, so like they'll maybe put up some more points. So you're not going to be behind in games. So you are going to get a chance to rush a pass or some more. Yeah, we get, wait. No, did you say fourteen or fifteen? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Yeah, you I, don't, I do it. not. I love the man, but I don't think that. I I was thinking he was starting at ten, so I was like, yeah, four or five more. I can see that. Uh, double digits would be sweet. Double di- for a guy like Dennis, who I think like that would be really good. Um, and he's still crushing on special teams too. So. I love that when a guy does both. Absolute but, dog out yeah. there. Need more of that out there. If he gets 10 sacks, wow, that'd be wild. You called that at the beginning of the season, AJ. I think AJ I was the one. Yeah. Say, yeah, AJ. pops off the film at you, man. He jumps off the film. How do you know him, AJ? Where'd you meet him at? I do not. I'm a fan of watching him play football. That's all. I, he, he, yeah. He just remind, like huh. Watching him play, I'm like, oh, this dude just jumps off the film, as the coaches love to say. I like that. That's a compliment. Hey, JJ, I think you should yeah. tell him that that's what AJ said. You know what I mean? Because I assumed that this was some backdoor relationship that AJ had yeah. with a guy, so he's just sneaking his name in there all the time. Nope. I was curious how he knew him as well, but I agree with you. He does jump off the film. He's a guy that it's like a – he's just like – the way he moves too is like almost unconventional. He's so like quick and like it's just all zoom, zoom, zoom. And like it's kind of like he goes – yeah, it's – I, this this is great television. I yeah. just I just described a guy with zoom, zoom, zoom. So, yeah, welcome yeah. yeah, welcome to TV, right. uh-huh. welcome to yeah. television. That's a good call. Here yeah, I got look up. There you go. Tone. That's exactly what TJ did in the game, and he got yelled at. But apparently, it's okay for other people to do it, right? Whoa! Sounds like we hit on a sensitive subject there. Let's not forget when tight ends were coming across and doing the same thing to TJ. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. AQ has a question for you. Well, I was going to show you that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, thank you. Why is this guy? You're never going to get what invited. You, yeah. You're never going to get invited. What Heck of a player. He just, he just took, he took a good. nice shot. He what is your does problem? Get, feels like he's, he's sold out for his like teammate. He, he took but, four. But you'll ever get. Oh! <laughs> just, yeah. just for JJ, Houston is on three times later. What's that? On trenches. Really? Ooh, Houston has three plays on in the trenches. You liked the run game last year a lot, but mm-hmm. they stunk so bad you couldn't really showcase it. I kept wanting to. Yeah, yeah you did. Saying. Just we'll, like JJ. We'll get them next week. All right, JJ. We'll let you go enjoy the Houston Texans building and facility as you potentially pass a physical and go mm-hmm. back into the NFL yep. as a member of the Houston Texans Ring of Honor and their defense. Mm-hmm. And that's a phenomenal thing. Any message for the people about Thanksgiving? You know, JJ, just that yes. are watching right now. I was... I was going to end my, my show with a message for you guys. I'm very thankful for the opportunity to come on this show every single week. It is truly a joy. It is truly something I look forward to every single week. I appreciate your audience for giving us the platform to do this because without them, we wouldn't have the opportunity to do so. And I appreciate you for having faith in me and also for letting me just have fun every week. I mean, we talk a little football. We talk a little what? anything. and. It's a whole lot of fun. So I just want to say thank you very much for the opportunity every week. We love you, JJ. Love you, JJ. Love you, JJ. We appreciate you, JJ. We're lucky. Come on. Thank you, guys. Let's go Burnley. Gumpy, tune in. It's going to be a hell of a weekend. And just, also. Just pass along that message to Vincent tomorrow or Saturday when you yeah. get there, JJ. Yeah, just, we can park it. We're allowed to play we board. We just need was, points. We got to move up the board. Yeah. 
Last thing, I don't want to take your time. I feel like I'm being pushed off, which is great. Um, but no, I'm about <laughs> to make the shot. On- I'm about to make the shot. You're about to give away a lot for Thanksgiving. <laughs> that's what I'm. That's Vince what I'm texted saying. me on Sunday because we're it's an off week, so he'd been working all week, and then on Sunday he was like, "Hey, I'm going to watch some NFL football with my family. What game should I watch?" And I kind of looked at the slate, and the, you know, the big game was Monday night. So I was like, "But if you're watching on Sunday, maybe tune into the Steelers Browns. Oh, like my brother no. plays for the Steelers." Halfway through the third quarter, I texted him. I said, Vince, I, if you are actually watching this game, I am sorry. Like, this is not what you should be watching if you're only watching one game the entire season. Uh, and he was like, he was cool about it. He was like, I actually kind of enjoyed it. It's the, I'm seeing the strategy of it. Like, when you, each team's just trying hard not to make a mistake because it's clear that they can't exactly move the ball. Which is what we're talking about. After you put one in the net, yeah, exactly. yeah. go ahead and sit it back home and not make any mistakes. <laughs> Let the other team figure this. Perfect. Sit in, lads. Sit, sit in. in. JJ's shoot, in the crowd. Shoot the people. ball. Shoot the ball. No, how much? Pop how much? Net. It's Thanksgiving. Yeah, come Ten on. People. You talk Ten about people. Five hundred. Okay, what you say though? Corn casserole is your favorite side. Yep, uh, corn casserole. Okay, if you had to rank mashed potatoes in stuffing, where would you? Who would you rank where? Mashed potatoes are higher than stuffing. Yes. Sure. Woo. Way, way higher. Woo! Way higher. Tell him, JJ. Yeah. This guy doesn't like carbs, though. Look at him. Woo! Uh, you, you, who are you talking about? <laughs> Thank you, mashed potatoes! Okay, so corn... Well, is there only one person on Team Mashed Potatoes? I'm the only one that speaks up for him, yeah. He's loud about it. He's very loud about it. They're, very, on, they're on an even playing field for me. Yeah, mashed... Everybody even. else is on Team Mashed Potatoes. I'm also stuffing? Team Mashed Potatoes, oh, but yeah. we let Connor run with the flag because yep. he's just good he, at it. He yeah. guy loves it. He would love. He would love. Not as much as Kirk Herbstreit loves mashed potatoes. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, Kirk, I mean, leader. I love mashed potatoes, but on Thanksgiving, you're f- stuffing all oh, day. Yeah. Uh, and that was, you, oh, 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 Wow. What? Wow. You're talking about JJ. stuffing? JJ, that's wrong. Wow. Yeah. Here, here, brother. Here, here. What is your problem? If I got enough mashed potatoes. I don't need the stuffing. What do I? I don't need that. <laughs> oh, There's man. like celery. Put a bunch of gravy on it. Like, put a bunch of slop on there, or what? Or just straight up? What are your thoughts on crab? Um, no, I do. Yes, I put gravy on there. Absolutely gravy. <laughs> oh, so you put flavor on mashed potatoes? Got it. Got it. That's what you put the gravy. The gravy is what you're eating. You're not <laughs> eating the mashed potatoes. Is there celery in your in your in your stuffing? I go stovetop. That's all I need. I make homemade. Don't need it. Stovetop figured <laughs> it out. Just go ahead and let's make that whole thing. The wife and I had certainly a few conversations the first couple of years we had Thanksgiving <laughs> together because she's an incredible you, cook. Do you cook? No, my wife, badass cook, very very good. Her mom, incredible cook. And they are like, "What's your favorite?" I'm like, "Stuffing." I'm a stuffing guy. They're like, we got homemade stuffing. So I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> and then it is very good. It's just different than like, yep. I need the out of the box yeah. stuffing. Give me stove top. Mm-hmm. I want it a little bit, get a little crunch yeah. too, some of them. Yep. A little, oh, yeah. And then oh, let yeah. me dive all, the, I'm dumping salt on that thing. So much heart attack on there. Oh, really? Give me that thing on, and then I'm just diving <laughs> right in. You know what I mean? Do you cut the bird? Uh, it depends. Tim McAfee, I mean, you got to remember. Yeah. Carries the knife around with him 365. Tim's got that bird. sawzall, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's yeah. doing that. Yeah. So, Could I, you, like, like this is an interesting conversation because I've had some of my friends. If given that responsibility, are you confident in your skills cutting the bird? Yeah. I mean, I've murdered a deer before out in the woods and had to cut that thing open and get all the guts out of it. So, I mean, I could, you know, if I had to uh, be Did a, you shoot it? Well, the funny thing about it is there was no... Uh, there oh, was, no! Well, what happened? What? No, here, just wait, Jage. Just wait. <laughs> so the deer was so close. When I went to shoot it, it actually got so scared it had a heart attack and died. There was no... <laughs> Mm-hmm. There was no bullet wound, not of a that happens. No, no wasted real. meat, you no got, wasted meat at all. You gotta be kidding. You butcher got told me it was the greatest this deer is, this ever is killed. A bit. This is a bit greatest deer ever <laughs> killed, is what the butcher told me. Wasted no meat at all. Mm-hmm. Now, it was tough to find it, you know, because there's no you track the blood. Sure, sure. Turned out it was at the exact same spot it was standing. So we went an hour and a half into the woods looking for this thing because we saw it drop and then a lot of noise. And we walk all the way back, sitting right there, no blood at all, dead. Had a heart attack. Sorry about it. So you shot at it, or you didn't even take the shot? Towards it, yeah. I shot towards it, certainly. Mm-hmm. And I thought I hit it. I knew I hit it. You know. That. <laughs> you scared yeah. it to death, you think? Bingo. No waste of meat. Maybe more people should try it. Okay? Yeah. I, and every single piece of it was used. <laughs> We're not. There's no. 
You know what I mean? This is, this is, I, I, I'm, I'm sure the story's been told before, but I, this is my first time hearing it. That is a phenomenal story. That was the last time I went hunting. My dad, you know, didn't really. Uh, mm-hmm. My dad is the guy who puts his hunting suit, the orange one, in a garbage bag with like leaves and deer piss and everything for like two weeks before hunting season. You know, he's going to. These deer yeah, ain't gonna work. know yeah. Tim McAfee's coming. <laughs> and he is. is. We're crawling through these mountains. He's mm-hmm. ready out there. He's all the way out there. I wasn't as committed to the craft of hunting, you know. Put me out in the woods, yeah. no service, no buddy, for about 10 to 12 hours in the middle of the winter. I mean, not the best place for me. And we learned that. We learned that. So yeah. I have killed before. Don't push me. Scared to death. Had to do it. Boom. You know I mean? I'm just amazed. You just <laughs> you just gave a deer a heart attack and it died. That that is. It lived a good life great. though. It yeah, told yeah. me uh-huh. as it was going down. It lived a great life. That's, this guy's shot is so shitty. I'm scared of what's going to happen next. I'm just going to croak right here. But with that being said, we do not know where that bullet went. You know that that <laughs> yeah, wasn't really chatted about. In one year, out the other, could have been. Might have been a perfect shot. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Yeah, it might have been Tim McAfee. That guy can hit a. I mean, he's. Yeah. I mean, he hits the dialed in. Yeah, yeah, soup can from two and a half miles. I saw him one time. Pull a little cope out there. He dialed a uh, Jack Carr sniper. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly, yeah. exactly. Shot it better than Jack. Some would say. But uh, Jack Carr, uh, he hit you right where he wanted to hit yeah, with yep. a yep. bent rifle. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, that was certainly something. Yep. Jack Carr saved the world. Speaking of saving the world, JJ Watt about to give twenty people five hundred dollars. Boom! On this Thanksgiving Eve, if this ball goes into that hoop, ain't that right, JJ? Owner of Burnley, big one this weekend. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I thought I said ten, but I got twenty. It is twenty. It is. I'm on board. It's all it is. It's fire. Yeah, yeah come on. It's fire. People are thankful. Yeah, nah, no big deal. Yeah, absolutely, totally. I'm all, I'm absolutely here for it. Oh no! All right. Oh, oh bonus ball, bonus ball, bonus ball, right. bonus ball. This ball, this ball will be for fifteen. Fifteen. Oh. This ball will be for fifteen. 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 Five hundred dollars. One time. From oh, here. Oh no! For the fifteen. Oh. You're close. Oh, all right, that's it, oh. JJ. All right. Nobody wins nothing because Uncle JJ Watt doesn't want anybody to win. Ten. Do ten. Ten. Throw something. Throw the helmet. Throw the Colts football. Ten! Oh. It's just not, it's not in the One cards. more. Five. 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 Throw the Stanley Cup. Throw the Stanley Cup. Throw something. Don't you dare. Do it. 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 Do what is this for? Five. He says five. five. Let's just stay ten at ten. Again. Ten again. Ten, ten again. again. Make it! Yeah! yeah! Woo! That's good. It should be 50 because of what you said about Lordo. Yeah. But instead, 10 <laughs> It's a replica. You're a replica. How about that? Oh. How about that? Have you Unless ever seen the real one? <laughs> uh, oh, you don't know uh, what you're this doing. This guy's problem. Uh, okay. Drank I don't out know of it, JJ. Did I walk into a buzz saw here? Yeah. Did I just walk into a buzz saw. Me and Lordo know each other pretty good. Okay, pretty, pretty good. We've boozed with each other right here. Uh-huh. Right, literally right yeah. here. Right here. Damn and it. I get Cushing's your brother-in-law, but AJ's brother's Stanley Cup champion. Oh, oh I don't know if you know that. Cush got one of those? Wow. Huh? Don't think I've, so. I've never, uh, I, as a kid, I've seen the cup many times. I grew up playing hockey my whole life. And I would refuse to touch it until I won it. Uh, so I have still yet to, to put hands on the Stanley Cup. You're not going to win it. Oh yeah, no, that's that's clear. That's become clear to me. <laughs> yeah, so touch uh, that thing. throughout my adult life. Yeah, no. So you've never touched Lordo? Never touched it. Nope. I've been to JJ. Hockey Hall of Fame multiple times, and uh, this year actually they gave me the opportunity to spend a day with it, and unfortunately, the date didn't work. Oh, no. that date didn't work. What does that even mean? The you date didn't. This is Lordo. I was, I was, I was in England for Burnley. I couldn't have made it, I couldn't do it. Well, thank God Lordo didn't have to suffer through Burnley. You no. know what I mean? We don't need that to happen ever, okay, with what Lordo has accomplished <laughs> over all the years. But, yeah, I know Lordo. Here's a clip from May 2nd, 2023, also oh, my birthday. Oh, God, look at that. Yep, that's Lordo. Rupper brought it in, Stanley doing? Cup champion. something wrong with your knee? When, oh, then? I thought you were grabbing your knee. Well, maybe. I mean, who knows what I was going through? It's my birthday. Just yeah, blown away pad. by Lordo. He's wearing shin pads. Yeah, I'm sorry. I look. Oh, what am I doing? Am I going to drink out of it? Is that yeah. what's going to happen? No here? way. Can you? Am I going to touch it? Look, yeah. I'm thinking I'm going to win this the Stanley is Cup. This great. Rupper's the Stanley Cup champion. Oh, oh. Tim McAfee bringing in some beers. That's Five. the guy that's going oh, in the nice. woods to go kill some stuff yeah. this weekend. Bailey McComas his head down there at the bottom taking photos. Ooh, Tim's got a nice fade on him. Tim, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. that has changed. He used to be uh, GI Tim, and uh, we had to get the barber to never give him that cut ever again. <laughs>
You know what I mean? So even, <laughs> hey, Tim, you're scaring people. Rupper here, Stanley Cup John. 35 yeah. pounds, yeah. 35 pounds. Uh huh. You never feel it, though, because when you're lifting it, you're in heaven. Mm -hmm. And when you're boozing <laughs> from it, you're a legend. Right. And that's literally. Uh, this what is I weird because you're talking to me, but I'm looking at you and you're not talking to me. It's really blowing my mind here. Wearing the same costume Except as well. Yeah. Here we go. And you didn't lift it yourself? Pat. Oh, oh, no. no. Oh, oh, what? Right what? in the middle. Raylan right McComas. <laughs> Why'd you put an ad right where I'm about to drink what? this thing? Bill, you slippery son of a bitch. I drink it. You just need to know that I drink it. Oh, no. Okay. There it is. Why, there didn't, it you, is. Why didn't you pick it up yourself? Because I didn't yeah. win it. I didn't, yeah, I didn't win loud. it. Rupper actually uh, is the only reason why I was able to drink out of it is because somebody that won it mm -hmm. was present or something. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that's how this show's ending on ESPN2. We're sorry about it. Have a great Thanksgiving. We'll continue on YouTube. Cheers. Right on screws. Boom. Right on screws. Boom. That's, that's the way a show's Perfect. supposed to end. That was, that was beautiful. Have we mailed it in? Maybe. No. What? Well, this particular show. I don't Who think said so. that? Oh, Maybe. Said that? I don't think so. Greedy didn't even show up. Great. Remember that one. Bingo. Yeah, yeah. We're asking hashtag. You think, if you green. think this is mailing it in, you should go into any office in America right now, day before Thanksgiving. Yeah, because yeah, we're about to go into the, real good time here. The effort put forth on this today. show crushes everybody yes. else's effort on the day before Thanksgiving. Yeah, but you're going to the Houston Texans facility right now. Uh, that's correct. How much would it have to be, you think? How, can we look up the salary cap for the Houston Texans? See yeah. how much uh, they got a lot. See how much they got a lot of money. A yeah. lot, a lot of, of money. Yeah, they basically have damn near. There's no uh, very high cap hits on the Texans. Oh, really? Yeah. The Colts got like six of them. They're just not on the team anymore. Just tons. Well, yeah. Just just, tons. Just, think how bad you'd feel if they go win a Super Bowl and you're like, man, I could have been on that squad. I'm I was working. Coach. Think I was about working it, out man. with them. Think about it. Shaq Mason, you get a ring well, if you. I mean, do I'd be really happy for him. I'd be really happy for him. Like, man, I could. I could have gotten four sacks in the Super Bowl. Could have got one of these. There it is. Boom. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Six million. Absolutely. We'll see. I mean, you know. That's plenty. Big, big game this weekend. Big, big game this weekend. So you got 6.9 million, I do believe, um, if I'm reading this graphic right. So you would have to just like take league men. Four games. You'd be lucky to take league men. Five yeah. mil for five games? Yeah, that's no problem. Or just 100,000. Yeah. 100,000 for five. You get to do it. You know what I mean? Get to just do it. Wear Burnley. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm not. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. Uh, that wouldn't work. Just do it for free. Yeah. Just do it for free. What, <laughs> what if they let you wear yeah. a helmet that has the Burnley colors and logo on it? Boom. <laughs> yeah, that would be good marketing. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's good. That's good. Not, not a joke. No, I am working on. I am working on. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get Burnley over here for a uh, North American tour next off season. Well, let's That's make right. sure they're we'll good soccer tour. first. Don't bring some shitty soccer yeah. team over here. We don't need any of that, right? Ain't that right, Gumpy? I mean, that's the thing. Soccer over here is good if the teams are good, mm -hmm. but if the teams are bad, you're just going to add in people saying this sport stinks. Yeah, we don't need that. We need soccer getting showcased. Like. Get Methy on Burnley. There yeah. we go. What are we yeah. doing? Why don't you get Methy on Burnley over there, JJ? I've, yeah, no, I've, I've, I'm trying. Pulling at the thread, you know, pulling at the thread, just seeing if it unravels. Yeah, that sucker's tight. That sucker's tight. <laughs> <laughs> You're the man. Have a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy yeah. your workout Thanks, with the guys. Houston Texans. Please tell Cushing's that we appreciate them. Mm -hmm. Just exist. I will. I will. I appreciate you guys. Have a great Thanksgiving. Ladies and gentlemen, JJ White. Yeah, JJ! So it feels like I'm getting forced off the program. Yeah, what was that? I was about? just trying to give away his money. Yeah, yeah what are we talking about? Much different force. This is a force out of your pocket. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Not a force off the program. That's just a completely different animal. As Nikki skates, skates out of the Thunderdome on his way to a great Thanksgiving. Thank you, Nikki. Hey, Happy Thanksgiving, Nick. Happy Thanksgiving, Nick. Happy Thanksgiving, Nick. Nick. All right, happy Thanksgiving, Nick. All right, let's get to You know I'm Mike Fred. All right, happy Thanksgiving. That la I had to make that last shot. I had to. Yeah. He did. Must. You shot. knew. And you did. did. We'll do some phone calls in the third hour. We'll talk college football playoff rankings. Have to. Mm -hmm. Have to. Big one last night. Yeah. Massive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's what happened. Yep. Yep. Somebody got jumped. Yeah. In a big spot. Just yeah. The, a very important spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Five one to four, four one five. Mm. Oof. Five one to in it. Got out of it. Did um I didn't catch it. Did they give a reason? Should have been in a few weeks off the bus. ago, to be honest. Well, that was definitely being said. The injury, I think Reese Davis said a couple times, like, they have to take into account that. You have to. I didn't get into the full Boo, Boo Corrigan interview yet. Okay. okay. Where Reese certainly put his feet to the fire. There's a lot of stuff on TV last night. Yeah. A lot. Tons. There's 
College football playoff rankings, 7 o'clock every Tuesday on ESPN. Mm-hmm. This is a big deal, obviously huge, as we get into playoffs and championship weekend happening next weekend. I mean, we are here for college football. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And then Hard Knocks, Miami Dolphins launched last yeah. night mm-hmm. on HBO. Shout out to Gumpy and the Finn fam. I heard it went well. Could not. I didn't think I could love McDaniel more, but he is the man. I didn't get a chance to watch the entire app, but I saw some clips from it. Seems like it's going to be a good season this year. There we go. Yeah. Tyreek was electric in it, too. I appreciate him talking to the refs and the refs being like, just don't put us in a bad spot, please. Yeah. We'll talk about that in the third hour. And then, obviously, uh, Jim Irsay opened up his entire life to HBO. Mm-hmm. Brian Gumble. Yep. And Brian- I didn't see it. Did he just kill him at the end, or what did he do? Yeah. yeah. It yep. Killed him. Yeah, killed him. I, I thought it was a, wasn't a piece on showing him how he's come through the his addiction and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah but anytime Real Sports says, "Hey, we want to do a piece," you always say no to that one. I need to watch it. More like Brian dipshit. Whoa, nice. That the opinions of those on this particular program do not reflect those of their peers, employer, or ESPN. That was Zito who's talking about Brian Gumble. I stand by it. Brian doesn't like fun. Shit. Well. He did say something in there that was certainly... There were a couple things Jim that Jim said <laughs> that True. Brian, you know, yeah, had yeah. some bones to pick with. But it's inevitably, what? it felt like Brian Gumble was not that thrilled that Jim Irsay no, was no. part of his show. Yeah. Especially it, on our last season of this entire thing. Right. Sounds like going back to maybe he wasn't a huge fan of his dad either. So, I'll be the bad guy. Other owners viewed his dad as a joke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do they view Jim the same way, Andrea? And she's like, whoa. Oh, did not expect this yeah, type of. Lord. So that's what that show is? Yeah, I uh-huh. think so. I've only seen two pieces off of that show. And uh, one was with uh, Portnoy. Yep. And yep. then this one was with Jim. And both of them, I think both guys thought, I like that I'm sharing my story. Yeah. And then inevitably, mm-hmm. you're pigs. Mm-hmm. Yep. Wild. Andrea Kramer's not doing that, though. I like Andrea no, Kramer. She's no, not she doing was that. not. Andrea Kramer actually had to go to bat for Jim Irsay. Yeah. Like, on, she was on the hot seat for Jim Irsay at the end of that thing. <laughs> it was wild. She was, whoa, all right, here we go. A minute. <laughs> it was pretty much. She handled it. She's been covering Jim for 35 years. They had photos and videos of her from back whenever he was still doing powerlifting yeah. top mm-hmm. Cool. And she was covering, yeah, this, is, this is the owner of the Colts here, about to deadlift 600 pounds, yeah. Jim Irsay. So she's been around him there forever. Mm-hmm. But I, I'd assume Jim Irsay and team did not expect that to go how it went last night no. on Real Sport. But hey, that's journalism. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's journalism. Last season here for mm-hmm. Brian Gumble. Oh. Last season. Real He's sport. Done. Who's taking over for him? Where's Real Sports gone? I don't know. That's a good question. That's a good question. Did we that, look into that? No. Um, Mox did just sign Dan Levitard. So maybe it's. Oh, um, it. Yep. Metal Luck Media, I believe, signed a deal with um, Mox to do one hour of the show over there. A lot of these streaming platforms are going to get more into sports. Yeah, mm-hmm. soon. Yeah. yeah. Especially what sports continue to do. Who knows? We hope real sports continues, though, because what a staple of sports it's been. Mm-hmm. Amen. But you say no to that one, I think. Yeah, yeah forever. I think that's the one you say no to. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you want to go on Jerry Springer? No. <laughs> hey, you want to go on Maury Povett? No. no. Hey, Dr. Phil would love to have you. Okay. <laughs> That's the sports version. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless you're the bump fights guy. Then you go on Dr. Phil. <laughs> yeah. So good. Yeah. Dude. Well said. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's get the hell out of here. We'll be back on the other side. Bob Carpenter will join us with his top 10. We'll break down the college football playoff. We'll take some phone calls, too, on this Thanksgiving Eve. 1 8 3 3 4 3 3. 4 Four, six, six, three, six, three, three. One eight three three four. One eight three three. The number four. D a d o m e. Yep. One eight three three four three two four six six three. There it is. Bingo. It's hard. You don't use T nine anymore. What do you want? Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. Like AQ, you look very thin today. You do. Thank you. The great. Got back on it. Back on what? Back on the grind. You're taking, you're taking steroids. Nope. Well, what are you? What are you getting talking? back on then? Your diet sounds They're, unbelievable. Like sounds brutal. Ah, uh, you just live for the cheat days. Oh, you just that's not make, a good life. Make, no. no, you just it's wait. not sustainable. It's very sustainable. Look at this guy. He's down hundred pounds. I mean, he just How said he got off it though. A hundred pounds. One one day a week. Okay. What's How many that? pounds are you down? Sixty. And what is the cheat day? Everything. 
No, no, what day, though? Yeah, which day? Sunday? Oh, that's all no, NFL usually, football. Yeah, I no, I to. usually do Saturday. Su- Sunday's yeah. easy. I'm, I'm working all day. I just drink my water. And, and also you feel terrible from what you did on Saturday. Saturday, I drink, I eat, I date night, the whole nine, you know? Oh, okay. Lit. I like it. Yeah. You look good. It's working. Thanks. So do you. Thank you. It's we're, working. We're going. It is all of it. I say that on game day. We're going two different ways. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm going to the trenches. You're trying to leave them. That's yeah. right. But we're in the trenches on this Wednesday, November 20th. Hell yeah. 2023. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Take five. Five. What's up, y'all? It's Pac-Man Jones, and we're back with another week of Undercover Dog. He's an undercover dog. He's an undercover dog for sure. I see all the tweets. I see all the hashtag undercover dog. Chase Young is not an undercover dog. I understand what you're saying, but we're dialing in to people that don't get recognition. My first undercover dog is Jaquan McMillan. Since week eight, he's been targeted 11 times, only allowed five catches for 61 yards. Also have two interceptions and a forced fumble. Check out this play right here with McMillan. He makes an incredible play to get an interception right here. My second undercover dog is Romeo Dobbs. He got seven touchdowns. He got 38 receptions. This last game, he had five receptions for 51 yards and caught the winning touchdown to beat the Chargers. Check out this play, this stutter step. And when that hand get up, DB said, oh, shit. My third undercover is Patrick McCart. He's played every position in his career on the line. I mean, every last one of them from center, Black. left guard, Black. to right guard. Black. This guy should be sixth man of the year. Here on this play, he's going against one of the top guys, Trey Hendrickson. Here's Trey Hendrickson again. See the pass set? Hey, hey. That's it for today. We're looking for undercover. Oh All year. Hashtag undercover. Dog. Dog. He's an undercover dog. He's an undercover dog for show. If you're the NCAA and you're sitting in that stupid office in Indianapolis where we happen to live, it's a great city. It's a great town. Right. And there's a dumb institution that is ruling over college football. Because if you don't want these people dancing. <laughs> Kurt Signatic. Do we like the NCAA? Do we like Pat? Do we love the Dukes? I wish when I was asked, like, why did you punt? I could say my subcommittee recommended I punt. Fuck your shit! Fuck your shit! Fuck your shit! Fuck your shit! against the NCAA. Let them bowl! Let them bowl! Amen. Rest in peace, Dale. Moment of silence for Dale Earnhardt. Moment has passed. Thank you, Dale. This one's for three. AJ Hawk, $5,000! This has been one of the coolest moments of my entire professional life. J.M.U. Thank you so much for the hospitality. They'll have one loss because App State is being J.M.U. Mountaineers, baby. They're going to dog shit all over this dumb place. Stay forever. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you too. How about that?
This show sticks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pick! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Trenches Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. Hour three of this program starts now. Football is happening tomorrow. That man has won a lot of football games. Mm -hmm. That's A.J. Hawk right there. Boy, Hawker. Out of baby A.J., the hair's looking awesome. Growing it out for the winter, huh? Oh. Keep it warm on the sides. Yeah, we'll see. No, I'm, I'll get it cut eventually. No, Dude. no, keep it growing. Keep it growing. Let's Speaking go. of getting haircut, shout out to JC stopping by here today. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Back porch barber, got the boys all tight. Speaking of the boys, here's the toxic table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Con man, how you doing, pal? Hair looks phenomenal. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I feel great. I'm glad the mustache is finally kind of coming in full, full fledged here. Usually you couldn't really tell, but I think now we're getting to the point where mm -hmm. it's at a proper length, I'd say. Yeah, because you would like the shadow look around the face. Bingo. You just want the mustache to be a heavier shadow. Yes, I want that to be the main event and kind of all the sides uh, on the side, actually. Oh, a little appetizer around the face and Big then the man. entrees right above the upper lip. Exactly. exactly. It looks great. Thank you. Yeah, my, my father was a mustache man, so I, uh, it was passed down to me. Tim McAfee was a mustache man. Really? Yeah, he was. And then when he shaved, he looked like a completely different human. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the way mustache people become, which might happen to you. Yeah, there, there's a chance. I go through a mustache every every now and then, but this this one I feel like is the right uh, style, if you will, to keep it. Ty, how are your guts? You shit your pants yesterday on this show. Yeah, I did. Uh, didn't eat lunch today. Not taking the chance again. Couldn't do it. Is this the new you going forward? No, because I do tend to Keep get... the pipes empty. Yeah, well, I had some peanuts because I figured, hey, peanuts should be okay. Um, but uh, I'm doing okay. You know, last night was a, a little bit of tremors from the, the day. Obviously, you're going to get that when you go through something like that. But but I'm doing great. I, I'm Tomorrow is, is a true test. You know, you, I'm, I'm going to load up tomorrow. Um, what do you got tomorrow, Thanksgiving, you think? What do, what do you dive into most? Oh, I mean, everything. I'm going to slop everything on the plate, but, you know, yeah, for sure. You're going to have several crescent rolls. Oh, my turkey. God. The Hawaiian yeah. rolls also. Mm -hmm. So good. But so so good. good. So good. So good. The crescent yeah. roll, though, mm -hmm. little baby croissant. Yep. Oh, Love I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Me, yeah. too. So I'll probably eat like a whole basket mm -hmm. of those. You know, you got your mashed taters, obviously, stuffing. Are you dipping the crescent roll into the mashed potatoes? Absolutely. I think so, too. Absolutely. I would do it. That's Mashed potatoes is a good dip for me, I think. I agree. It's good deal. I agree. dip in there. Hawaiian rolls, too. Same thing. Maybe, you know, slice that thing yep. open. Yeah, I'm Put a little sandwich. layer of butter down. Yep. Maybe some ham, some turkey, yep. some taters, some Bust, stuffing. Mud. Yep. Douse it all down and then close that puppy and, and then toss it right in the mouth. Exactly. Yeah, I think that is uh, tomorrow we're in for one, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Hey, let's do tomorrow. I'm oh, ready. Yeah. Pumped up. One half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys Town Diggs is your town. How you doing, pal? Great. How are you doing? Good. How are we betting on tomorrow's games? What are we thinking about? That's a really, really good question because. The matchups are a lot of favorites, like, and by favorites I mean like Team Lions, Cowboys, Ed. Niners, who are, who are playing well versus teams that you know. Green Bay just got a one uh, win, but they're not doing what they expected this season. The Commanders lost to the Giants. I, re I, I read on Reddit that um, Detroit might not be. They've only played a couple what? teams that are have winning record. Poor Whoa. K. Is that right? Poor K. That's what Reddit's saying. I'm, I didn't say this, but these stats were presented to Reddit, then presented mm. to my face earlier today. And I didn't even know this was a conversation wow. happening about the brand new lines. Is that taking place, Foxy? I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, no, it, it finally is. And I knew this day was coming, right? We have played a lot of bad quarterbacks. We beat Patrick Mahomes, but Patrick Mahomes did not have Travis Kelsey or Chris Jones on the oh, other wow. side. And then we did lose to Lamar Jackson. So I knew this day was coming, but. I'm a Lions fan. Why would I be worried at all? It's the first time since 1963 that they've been eight and two. All right, we're gonna make the playoffs. Sound kind of worried. Yeah, it does, it does sound. Good. Good. No. It's been coming. You said really Dude. defensive, like defensive. No, I don't think so. Yeah, you should just be confident. Don't I think be, reasonable. Yeah. That was a reasonable answer. You do sound a little reasonable about the entire process, but also defensive too, a little bit. For like, sure. You'd Why'd you know it was coming? coming? Yeah. Because I knew that this stat would, like, I've, I've watched every oh. single game, and I've been like, wow, these teams kind of stink. Like, when they play so the So when Bucks, you're chucking those beers out in the yard, you're saying, eh, not really warranted, but mm -hmm. yeah. we did win. 
Yeah, exactly. Like when they played the Bucks, the Bucks were really good. The Bucks kind of stink now. That's one example. Oh, so we're using like college football playoff Got committee, you. right? Bingo. Yeah. Where it's yeah. like, was that a good win or not? We'll find out in a few weeks. That's right. what you're saying the Lions are going through? Yeah, but I mean, still, like I said, it's the Lions. Hey. They haven't done this since 1963. I'm going Man. to enjoy every I feel like single day. <laughs> I feel like a different. Every time I get on bike front, I'm like, the Lions have been dominant. Yeah, That's so just what good. the Lions are. And I haven't even looked into the other side of the coin like, well, they better be. They're playing terrible football. It's still been dominant, though. Either way, they've been dominant, whether yeah. you agree with the competition or not. I agree. And we'll get to see them tomorrow playing yeah. against a good team. And mm-hmm. a part of that stat was them talking about the NFC North being shitty. Okay, that's only yeah. two of their wins. All right, let's relax. And that's not the Lions' fault. Yeah, no. exactly. No. You can only play who's on schedule. Exactly. Bingo. That's what they do. I don't doubt the brand new Lions, but the Reddit community seemed to be like, oh, well, let's start doubting a little bit. Yeah. I don't like that. Not for Thanksgiving, but shout out to the Reddit brains. A lot of brains over there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, the gambling marks are going to kill me for saying this, okay? You are one of those. No. Kind of. No, no, no. These are people who unit shame and say you can't cross zero on a tease, and these people stink. Okay, Okay, all right. right. Got you, got you, got you. Um, You can money line, parlay, all the favorites. Yep. Lions. Cowboys, Why? Niners, yep. minus 115. It's not too bad at That's all. That's pretty yeah. standard odds. Yeah. That's pretty standard odds. Right? Gumpy, you're you're singing and dancing back there to this it's thought. Yeah. One half of the hammer, Don, Cowboys, Canadian, Gumpy, maybe one of the greatest gamblers to ever exist. Gumpy, mm. you're like the money line parlay tomorrow, it sounds like. Yeah, I've been on that all week. Uh, Dak Prescott does not cover on Thanksgiving, unfortunately. Like oh, that's either, just what he wakes up and says, Cowboys. you know what? I'm not, not going to do it. Cowboys hmm. haven't covered in a long time. I think they're like one and nine. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And they are high spreads. I do not love laying that many points with a favorite. Well, especially on Thanksgiving. Everybody's going to be a little tighter exactly. on Thanksgiving. You know what I mean, Gump? The only one I would say I would lay it with the Niners. I mean, the Niners are rolling. I feel like the Seahawks are kind of fading a little bit. Just mm-hmm. lost to the Rams. I love the Niners spread. on. Yeah, but they could have won that game. You know, you make a kick that normally is made. We have a whole different conversation about the Seattle Seahawks, but it does have an ailing, potentially, yeah. Geno Smith, which is not good against that Niners defense out there. And you can't blame a rookie quarterback for not knowing not to run the ball um, and then spike it with eight seconds left. Oh, Geno's not a rookie. That was on me. What well, else? Uh, that was not called. There was oh, no reason no. to do what not you did. It's Thanksgiving tomorrow. Not authentic. Yeah, it's Thanksgiving tomorrow. You forced that one in there. Well, he, he couldn't hear the play call coming in, so he said, oh, I'll just run it because, you know, why wouldn't I not run it with that much time left on the clock and spike it for a 55-yarder? Okay, Tone. No <laughs> reason to get your <laughs> the, the, the kicker <laughs> is taking it on the shins for them being content with a 55-yarder to win a game. So this is something the teams do. They ask you what your line is. What's your line? Vinatieri was very hesitant ever to give a line. <laughs> uh, as close as you can get is the line. Yeah, but if we need drop dead, what's the number? As close as you can get is the line. We can figure it out from that point. Because there's some coaches, and I'm not saying Pete Carroll does this, and I'm not saying anybody else would do this, but there is certainly instances of this in the past in abundance where as soon as they get to the line, they're like, all right, We're this good. is what I was fucking told. Yep. So I was told 58-yard field goal <laughs> was what it is, what it is. I got to the line, didn't I? You told me. I did the job. Get to the 40. You would do He's a professional. Make the fucking kick. So Vinatieri was a very big, like, there isn't a line. Okay, the line is whatever it needs to be, but let's try to get as close as possible. You want us to take a knee to get on the right? Get it as close as possible. Mm-hmm. Just get as close as possible so the least amount of things can happen to the ball while it's in the sky. And for Jason Myers, that thing went yeah. straight right. I have no idea why that happened. I assume he's still wondering why the fuck that happened. It's a damn shit. All I'm saying is they ran third and eight, 41 seconds left. That's a quite a bit of amount of time left, okay? So they, they pick up that, and then they do a run, and then a spike immediately after the run. That was it. Yeah, the end of the games, the way it's handled, is certainly a nice depiction of who could potentially win a Super Bowl. Who's going to make the right decisions whenever the pressure's on? They said there was a communication error. We'll take them for their yep. word. Should have had it figured out. They'll learn from it. They'll move forward. Shout out to the Niners, though. They feel to be... I like that that's the, uh, on, that's the main event. Yeah, yeah the fine. Is us getting to watch them. Joining us, 12-year NFL vet, Super Bowl champion, player coach, Jackie Moon, A.Q. Shipley. Yeah. I like this lineup. I like the Ooh. Niners Seahawks, though, to end this entire thing, A.Q. I love it. You know me. I love the Niners. And one other thing, Kenneth Walker, I think, is out, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that's a huge loss for the Seahawks. Charbonnet too. will get the start. But he's still a good player, and they, st- they got a great run game even with him, but Kenneth Walker is, you know, I love I love Kenneth Walker. Yeah, he's a big-time player. He's been on uh, in the trenches more than a few times. Runs yeah. hard, always gets yards. Do not like that he's out, but it should be a great Thanksgiving. Joining us now is a man who it's great every time he's on a show. Hell yeah. Sometimes there's things that we do for the audience. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
most things. It's like, yeah, I think people will find this ridiculous, hilarious, or informative. Mm -hmm. It's kind of how the thought process goes. Yeah. And then some things are strictly made for in-house reasons. Now, we hope the fans enjoy them as much as we do, mm -hmm. but getting a chance to chat with this guy every week has been a real treat this particular college football season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is the general, the man that saved college football whenever it was potentially getting canceled in the middle of America. Mm -hmm. And his top 10, it's Bob Carpenter. Hey, hey, How are you, General? I'm doing gr great. And I was really just loving that conversation, Pat, where the kickers, when the coaches go to them, what's the line? And you would think that that's them scoring a touchdown. They say, I, I think I could get it from 55. They're like, oh, yeah, we're good. Get to the you know 38, shut that thing down. <laughs> you go make it. And they look at them sideways as if like, what do you mean? You said you were good from here. No, I said I, I could make it from here, not I was going to make it from here. Well, every guy hopes that they're going to make every single kick, but it is a nice cover-your-ass situation for the coordinator or for whoever saying, I was told, hey, did you not? That's uh, what I was. So whenever said. they get attacked, it's like, I was told to get to the 41, and he'll hit a 59-yarder. <laughs> he gets paid to get, do that. Let's go ahead and do it. That never gets talked about, but Jason Meyer misses from 55, normally makes it. Let's move on to college football. Hey, big night last night. A big move was made by the college football playoff committee. Washington goes to number four after a couple massive wins over USC in a rainy Oregon State game. Florida State loses their quarterback, drops to five. Oregon still the highest ranked one loss team out there. They are a buzz saw, and there's been some other moves from 10 to 25 as well in there. And shout out to Liberty cracking in there. Yeah. Shout out to Liberty yeah. doing their thing at 25. Notre Dame at 18. They've been bouncing in that area for the last few weeks. But this one is just trying to mimic another one. Let's get to your top 10, General, and can't wait to hear your reasoning. All right. Well, we're starting off with the number 10 spot. And this is the committee and I are different a little this week. They've kind of hopped in lockstep with me towards the middle of the top 10. <laughs> But in the first, in the 10 spot, I got Penn State sitting there. Now, Whoa. people look and say, what? Louisville's in the top 10. You know, they're one loss team. Listen, I've been watching these games. Anybody that lost to Pitt this year, I cannot put in the top 10. Like, Great. Pitt is not a good team. Pitt took care of business against uh, Louisville. Penn State might not be great. I feel like the cutoff is probably about nine. And so I'm struggling to figure out who's there. But I could not justify Pitt being in there given the fact that they lost, or get Louisville, given the fact they lost to Pitt. And remember, Pitt's heartbreakers. That's what they yeah. do. They mm -hmm. will do that every single year. They will find a way to win a game and ruin a life. That is what Pitt does. And uh, obviously, they did that to Brom and Louisville. AQ, hey, this got to be the first time that you've seen this in a long time. The general's ranking matters, too. Yeah, Putting Penn State at 10 certainly uh -huh. helps Ohio State, too. Absolutely. You know, it certainly helps Ohio State. and also helps Michigan, and it helps everybody in the Big Ten. What are your thoughts, AQ? Maybe a top ten program James Franklin's running up there. I mean, it's it's same old, same old again, Bob, right? Same old, same old. We're going to two-loss it, get to number ten, play in a Rose Bowl, <laughs> and keep it moving. Do, do, You're not proud of the road, playing in a Rose come Bowl? On. Yeah. Do the New Year's Six Bowls mean anything what? anymore, Bob? Yeah, what? they do. Do they mean something? <laughs> Do I they? think they do a little. They do somewhat. Probably not to the degree that they did. But here's the thing, AQ. Like if you're sitting there in the 10 spot this year, next year you're gonna you're be in. playing in you're the 12 in. team playoff. You'll That's be right there with a the chance to advance. Boom. Just do the same thing you always do. Yeah. It's always next. We're being so ungrateful. Anyways, it's Thanksgiving tomorrow. I don't like your negativity. Penn State got a huge shout out there. Negative all day. Yeah. You have been pretty negative all day. Yeah. Kenny Pickett's gonna play well too. Yeah. Don't you. Let's okay. go to number nine. Let's go to number nine, General. Well, speaking of big kicks, uh, the Missouri Tigers, they've been on a tear. This is probably the highest they've been ranked for a long time as far as consistently sitting there inside the top 12. You know, they took care of Florida 33-31. You know, outside of that loss to Georgia, you might be talking about a team that heck, could have potentially made the CFP. And losing, uh, Georgia winning over Missouri is a big win for them. Yeah. Massive. And I think their fans didn't necessarily know that whenever we were down there just one week after beating Missouri. It's like, hey, that was a huge win for you mm -hmm. for Georgia. Now, what matters? Nothing, except for what happens on a football field. But in the ranking department, strength of record, strength of schedule, strength of wins are a big deal whenever it comes to final say and who may... Beating Missouri this year oh, yeah. is a huge win for everybody down there in the SEC, more specifically the Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah, for sure. And then on top of that, you know, like Ole Miss, they're still kind of teetering around that, like in that 15 to, to 10 range. So it's like a couple weeks ago or at the start of the season, even when people were talking about how soft Georgia's schedule is, like mm -hmm. maybe not. Yeah, maybe the SEC isn't as bad exactly. as everybody was saying. And Kirby Smart said, 
you call Greg Sankey, invitations on the table in Washington State and Oregon. They were like, really? Is that we can get it? We well, can, I mean, not, <laughs> not for you guys. But, uh, yeah. or, uh, anybody can come get some of this Southeastern Conference. And Missouri has certainly added. Shot to Drinkvitz. Yeah. yeah. Doing this entire thing. And yeah. also, uh, Cody Schrader coming on the program. He was awesome. Jeez. Who's the number eight general? All right, this is where it's going to get a little dicey here. And I've been holding back on some of these things for a while because I believe games matter. But we have nearly the entire regular season body of work heading into rivalry week. I've got Texas sitting here at number eight. Whoa. And they slid back a little bit. They looked okay against Iowa State. I know it was on the road, and Iowa State's been playing better. But Texas, with Quinn Ewers back, still looks like they're trying to knock off a little bit of the rust and maybe haven't been playing as well as some of the teams ahead of them. AJ, we've been in a couple big ones for Texas this season. The, the win over Alabama has been brought up a lot by everybody when they're ranking. The general says, I don't care. I'm looking at the team right now. How do you feel about it, AJ? Yeah, I don't know exactly how I feel about it because th that was a different Alabama team we saw playing back then and mm -hmm. it's playing now, I feel like. So, yeah, maybe they're right where they need to be. I agree with that Alabama team conversation. There was a benching that happened. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a yeah. lot yeah. that has taken place. And they say they judge every win and every loss about when it happens, what your team looks like now. But Texas has remained above Alabama, and everybody said it's because they beat Alabama, which makes sense. But then don't tell me that you're judging – everything else alongside of it. If it's just wins and losses, schedule a week schedule, get in there, exactly. and then try to do your dance. It's a terrible job to try to make these lists. The general does it every week. What's number seven? Uh, so the seven, I had Bama jump in Texas, and it okay. hurt me to do that because I always say results matter. They've got the double-digit loss at home to Texas, but like you said, they've been playing really good football. Not a big game last week against Chattanooga. They obviously take care of business. Probably shouldn't have a huge test this week in the Iron Bowl. They're two touchdown favorites, but they're going to be gassing up, and I think that SEC championship game between them and Georgia could be an epic one. Let's go top six. I'm excited to hear about this. Oregon probably at six, I'd assume, because they have one loss, even though they're maybe playing great football. Bob, did you make a big play, have a one-loss team, go Ooh. over an undefeated team? I couldn't get there yet, Pat. I'm, I'm right on the cusp of it. Oregon and Bo Nix, they just keep rolling along. Everybody says Bo Nix a check down king, and then all of a sudden you watch him throwing darts 30 yards over the middle of the field as they wiped up ASU pretty good, and he's been fantastic. This Heisman voting thing is going to be another monster when you start trying to factor in him, Jaden Daniels, you know, every Michael Penix Jr., how these guys all look. But I've got Oregon sitting there at number three. I don't know where you have Or number six. Carson Carson Beck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's about to be in some highlight games here. Mm -hmm. Huge. Yeah. He's averaging 300 yards a game. I mean, he's – He's fucking unbelievable. Yeah. He's very, very, very good at football. But he's got Brock Bowers. Well, he didn't. And when he yeah. didn't, he had his best game. Yeah. Well, he's got Lad McCock. Well, he didn't. And when he didn't, he was playing his best football. It's like, well, he's got a Georgia offensive line. That's not his fault. Yeah. That's not his fault. You got Milton running the rock as well. Same with Dejan Edwards. They got in the backfield. Mm -hmm. They got obviously a lot of weapons. That's not his fault. He's just a guy that nobody knew even existed. And this six foot seven leg tatted fella is a baller, an absolute baller. He might be a fucking national champion yeah. this year. Also, that shit has never mattered in the past. I mean, you look at any of those guys from like Alabama or anything like that. Like when they've won a Heisman, it's like you know you're not you can't pick and choose. It's like well they have. You know, eight first round draft picks out here. It's like, that doesn't matter. I mean, Georgia's number one for a reason. They have a lot of talent. That's the way it goes. Well, we don't know if they're number one in uh, it, the general. If he was, if he was top 10 in the Heisman odds at the beginning of the season, he'd be a lot higher than he is now. Um, yeah, it seems like a who, Bo, who do we know? Bo Nix's numbers are hard to. Jaden Daniels has the best numbers, but those three losses are whatever. But Bo Nix has absurd. Yeah, it's That's filthy. my guy right now. Yeah, Bo Nix is your guy, yeah. especially if they continue to play the way they played. They yeah. lose that game against Washington, right? And then all of a sudden, backs against the wall. Every game is a playoff game, potentially, because that's why Bo came back. Was like, hey, we need to go win this thing. Yeah. And they've answered every single time. They're going to talk about their strength of schedule, though. They are. People are talking about who they beat, how they beat them. Still got a lot of time to make some big plays, though. Pac-12 championship going to be a repeat, uh, replay, a rematch, probably, against Washington. And then they got Oregon State this week in the Apple... No. No. Yeah. Yeah. no, 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 sorry. That's, Washington. That's Washington. 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 It was the it was the Civil War. Civil War. It was the Civil, Civil War. War. I'm not allowed to say it anymore. Yeah, they had a different name for it. Yeah, I can't oh. remember. It's still Civil what War. What is it now? It's the Civil War. Well, the no. dust up? Yeah, the dust up. Civil cup. disagreement, I think. Yeah, I think they call it January 6th in Oregon. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they. Okay. The, the interaction board. Actually, they called AJ Hawk, they called AJ Hawk Day, guys. It's birthday. Happy birthday. Let's happy, get it going. Happy birthday, AJ. Happy they had that little party for you over there in Washington. Happy they did that. What a, what a wild time. Oh, uh, it's now just called the Oregon-Oregon State Rivalry. Oh, that's a great name. Boo. <laughs>
Much better. Anyways, that's a tough one. That's going to be a tough one. Oregon State, tough, tough team to play. Especially if fans are pissing in the stands. Yeah, that happened last week against Washington. Washington gets out of there with a big-time win. And Rome Adunze, you want to talk about having weapons. Him one-on-one seems to be unstoppable. Happened against Oregon. Happened against uh, Oregon State as well. Good, Bob. Let's move to number five. Did you make the same play that the uh, playoff committee did? Coach, I've been making this play for the last three weeks just because I thought Washington's been playing better. So I've got Florida State sitting there losing Jordan Travis. I think impacted them the fact that they started off slow against North Alabama. And you know what? Here's the reality of it. You know, Tate Rodemacher, Rodemacher is going to have to basically be what Cardell Jones was if they want to try to get in. He's going to have to explode onto mm-hmm. the scene these next three weeks because love it or hate it, I think the committee – it's like the NFL draft now. Like they're looking for reasons to tear you down. And without Jordan Travis, you have to wonder is this team as good as they were before? It certainly gave the committee an excuse, I think. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It kind of gave them a reason, which is not Florida State's fault. And obviously, Jordan Travis had an incredible season. And that was a brutal, brutal injury. But when you talk about them going undefeated in the ACC, yeah. oh boy. And undefeated, they got Florida this week. Yeah. So it's not just in the ACC. If they go undefeated and then they get left out, (laughs) it is going to be so loud. It is going to be obnoxiously loud, as it should be, by the way. Could you imagine if Bama wins and then there are two one-loss teams in and they keep Georgia in too? Ooh. And then, and then if, Ohio, if Ohio State Michigan close game, yeah, let's say it's a close game, bingo, very close game, and whoever goes on to beat Iowa by I don't know fifty, I don't, I, I, we don't need to litigate that right now, but I wouldn't be so sure. Yeah, but whoever it is, you know, goes, <laughs> sure. goes on to play and against Washington Iowa loses and loses. wins, and then yeah, what if Ohio State Michigan both yes. somehow, and then what if mm-hmm. Georgia Alabama both somehow. And then all of a sudden, the committee's going to have to answer questions about Washington, Oregon. Yeah, Oregon. They're going to have to answer about Florida State's going to be the loudest because they're like, what are we, UCF? What are we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We play in the ACC. It's a great, what are we even? Power five. What are we even doing? The fact that it's only four spots is so dumb. Has been since the beginning. There's mm-hmm. no way you can get it right. And this year, it's setting up to be the loudest it's been. Who's number four? Obviously, we just talked about it. Washington, the Huskies, I assume. Bob Carpenter? Uh- Absolutely. The Huskies are at number four. And don't, hey, don't sleep on that Florida, Florida State game. That line is inside of a touchdown, which you have to think of Jordan Travis is playing. That would not be the case. Uh, but Washington squeaking out one against Oregon State. And this actually taught me a lot about Washington because it wasn't a pretty game. The weather was bad. It was a classic Pacific Northwest night. And you know what? It wasn't pretty on offense, but they found a way to squeak one out. And that's what you love to see is teams being able to win in a variety of ways. So I got Washington firmly sitting there at number four. Yeah, and I think Coach DeBoer has been doing a fantastic job up there. Dog. In Penix, when he had to spin one, he did. Mm -hmm. That weather was bad up there. Terrible. And they were talking about how that was a big thing with Penix is that his hands are so massive that the weather really doesn't affect him as much as other guys. Did they run the ball as much as they had in weeks uh, Uh, prior to weeks? He ran for like 87 yards, I think on like 19 carries. So not as much as they had been. Um, They were trying to get the run game in. They were trying to build the run game up over the last two weeks. It was the first time they went for over 150 back-to-back weeks. Back-to-back weeks, yeah. They they were dominant against USC and then the week after that. Um, But then I... I think Adunze had like 110 out of. And McMillan back, Polk yeah. back. Mm-hmm. I mean, they got they got a squad. Of, yeah. What if they get left out? They're not. They They're can't. poor right now. People forget they, Penix can really move too. Like that's what he did at IU his whole career there. No, remember he had surgeries on his knees. Uh-huh. Oh, when he yeah, needs true. a first down, he'll go and get it. We got a guy who got an Achilles uh, four plays into a season. He's about to come back, and mm-hmm. people are still talking about Michael Penix's knees. Yeah. From it's like science is a little different these days. Yeah. And Michael Penix, young dog out there, happy for that Washington Huskies team. Who's number three? Number three, you got the Michigan Wolverines who had a tight one against Maryland. That game, I think, was a lot more entertaining than what probably a lot of people thought it was going to be. You know, Michigan rushed the ball for 150 yards, but it was on like 45, 46 carries. Uh, not nearly as impressive and explosive as they have been in the run game. But I said this before, Maryland, they've got some skilled players. They're capable of scoring. They're better up front than they've been. You know, Michigan at the end of the season, that had a chance to be the cherry on the Sunday. And, you know, also, you're on the precipice of looking forward to the game. So I'm not going to penalize them uh, for maybe a performance that wasn't what people expected. AJ, you think uh, Ohio State's coming in much harder than Michigan? It feels that way, doesn't it? Uh, it does feel that way, but you never know. We're going to the big house playing there. It's a tough place to win. Yeah, you guys uh, have obviously both played in this rivalry game numerous times. It's different 
than every other game. Like, obviously, clearly, everybody treats it that way. Practices separately. It's different this week. It's everything's just uh, bananas. We'll start with you, AJ. So whatever happened, last, for instance, J.J. McCarthy has not been playing his best ball. Last week, he did not play his best ball. The week before, they didn't even have him throw in the second half. He just handed it off. But then you look at uh, J.J. McCarthy last year against Ohio State, and it was like he was all over the place. Is it like... You know, throw out the record books, but for real. Like, is this just a different animal altogether for both teams? Yeah, I mean, I think it kind of is. Bob Bob knows way more about, like, the history and different – Bob, his, his recall is off the charts when it comes to things like that. But, yeah, we – our junior year, we were not that good of a team. We had, we had what, four losses, I believe, Bob, and Michigan came in. Yeah. And we weren't – they were very, very good, and we were supposed to lose all this stuff. We ended up beating Michigan. I remember, Bob, we got a – we had a pick our – our DBs returned to pick and Bob penalty on Bob because he went low on Chad Henney and, and cut him. You can't cut on the, anyone, but I won the quarterback, I guess, when you're trying to return a pick. But yeah, everything we won that game and it was like, oh, boom. It kind of like springboarded us into the offseason. Everything was cool now, even though we didn't have a good year. Bobby, obviously, you're cutting quarterbacks. Uh, certainly a guy that'll gnaw on an Achilles <laughs> or bite a kneecap. But it's different. Does it feel different over there whenever you're calling? Obviously, you do radio in Columbus every single week. This is the one, right? This is everything. It's it. This is what your legacy comes down to. At Ohio State, they ask, you know, what your record was. They don't mean your total record. What was your record against Michigan? And AJ, I give these, they get these little gold pants charms. I mean, those things are as valuable as they come, especially coming out of the 90s. And Pat, literally, the moment the clock hits triple zero on the Saturday before, like it's Michigan week, you're diving into it, and everything changes. There's a, a level of intensity, and this really defines your legacy, and all of those guys feel it. And the, the guys who are third- and fourth-year players, they have not beaten this team. They didn't play three years ago. The last two years they've lost, so there is a lot of pressure, excitement, passion on that Ohio State side to try to Course correct. Pumped to get up to Ann Arbor. Michigan's ranked number three in the generals mm. ranking. Who's number two? Number two, I got the Georgia Bulldogs yes. putting one on <laughs> Tennessee. Talking about Carson Beck, over 300 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. He's been playing really well. Brock Bowers, seven catches, 60 yards. Like he looks to be playing good again. Lad McConkey, like this, this Georgia team, and you got to give Kirby Smart a lot of credit. And people talk about coach of the year. Obviously, you talk about DeBoer's, what he's been able to do. You know, you can look at a lot of different places. You know, Drinkowitz out at Missouri. But, man, you look at what Kirby's done for three years in a row, man. Nobody has done this, and they are really rounding into form nice late in the season. Nobody talks about Kirby Smart winning any of those awards. No, it's no. just he's at the ex it's expected level for him to do that. Not easy to get a group of men that age to dive in every single week and be attentive and accountable and tough and gritty. Still at this stage of the amount of success that they've had, Incredible coach. He's he was phenomenal on our show. So yes. good. He was very comfortable on Gary, our program. He's the man for a reason. It's no wonder why they're so damn good. Crowd was not good, Donner. No, no. no. Weather, <laughs> weather sucked. Yeah, we'll blame Matt. I yeah. think it's strictly because those people hate me, Donner. I genuinely believe that. I genuinely believe that Donner in Athens. I thought it was a beautiful place. But fans though. who would come to the show, you think? That's what there was none of them. Did you see that? No, I know, but I feel like that demo does like you it's the it's the older crowd who you know is i think entitled. they told them to hate us like i, I think that is a direct <laughs> quote from those people he is enemy get him the hell out of here but i had a blast down there and listening and chatting with kirby he's blue collar guy oh yeah he's oh, got yeah. that crew hey we haven't accomplished shit you mm -hmm. have won nothing this year that's the difference between being at the top of a dynasty and trying to build one you know, it's uh, yeah. it seems like two different mindsets. And a number one team in the country, according to the general, Bob Carpenter. We got the Ohio State Buckeyes, and they'll be taking on Michigan this Saturday. Started a little slow against Minnesota. Was able to pull away, and we'll see if they can get that running game going because Trayvon Henderson has looked electric the last four weeks, and he, I think, will be the key to them being able to take on Michigan in the game this Saturday. Okay, what are we expecting out of McCord? I think I'm telling you, when you go and watch him play against Notre Dame, and it wasn't the best game in the world, but when the chips were down and the stakes were the highest at the very end on the road with you know 20 million people watching and you go out and put in a drive like that, that to me speaks volumes. He's gotten more and more consistent each week. And I talked to our guy, Jim Trestle, AJ, earlier in this week, and oh. he said, he goes, listen, it's not for Kyle McCord to win this game. He's like, he just, as a quarterback, you don't lose it. Don't put your team behind it. Don't, And this goes for J.J. McCarthy. Like, don't throw interceptions. Don't turn it over. Lean into the running game. And then when it's time to make a play on a big third down, you throw one to Marvis, Marvin Harrison 
let him go get it, and that can be the determining factor. Hey, Cade Stover, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Luka, they got weapons. They On the yeah. offensive side, they got them if they need them. But you're right. Trevion Henderson, since coming back healthy, he's been the dog. He's been the horse. They're going to need it. This game is going to be ugly. So yeah. pumped. Isn't it? It's going to be. Oh, yeah. Grind. Physically, oh, total is way too high. Two top five defenses all across the board, pretty much. What is the total? 45. Now I know the last. Oh yeah, hammer the under. The last two years the have been uh, high scoring, but what's that? I think it's supposed to be thirty degrees. I don't know, man. Twenty-seven degrees, thirty degrees. What are you saying, AJ? You're saying uh, you think there's going to be some, some. I don't fireworks? know. I think there could be some fireworks. I know both these defenses are legit, but yeah, I, th- I think we could take some shots down the field. Oh, you're saying Ohio State's going to get the over? Okay. Oh, I think both sides can because both sides can run. So I think that opens up that play action. You know, get sucked up. Hit over the top. Dan Rolovsky couldn't take us talking about no. those linebackers getting sucked, sucked off. Oh, no. He's just a little kid. He's a little kid. I'm a child. That's what he said, actually. I'm a child. I'm a child. I'm a child. I got a little boy. I'm a Sorry. child. He came from lacrosse practice. He's a child. Yeah. Those linebackers do get sucked up whenever you got a good play action. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. That's where Kate Stover comes. Mm-hmm. Hey, he's dom- – What is? I think he's like uh, maybe second at mm. – I don't want to say it. It is something crazy. What? Kate Stover has some ridiculous stats. Yeah. Like, he is – nobody really talks about him when you talk about tight ends around the college football world. Obviously, you talk about Brock Byers. Mm-hmm. And you talk about yeah. some other guys. But Cade, sponsored by John Deere last That's year. That's right. Uh-huh. John Deere lad. You know what I mean? This guy, mm-hmm. he's wearing a Farmer green. Gronk. Gets it. Bingo. Gronk. We love everything about it. All right. Oh. Uh, I heard we got two gimmicks. I'm excited for these. Yeah, I got two gimmicks for you. And, Coach, I got the James Vanderbeek TJ teenage nostalgia coming right at you. I haven't watched the WB in prime time in about 15 to 20 <laughs> years with a little Dawson's Creek. And all of a sudden I see Florida dates, Florida states down by double digits. So I got to give it to North Alabama, despite the fact that they didn't win the game. They drew me into a prime time college football game with the top five team on the WB. Okay, WB, you watch the show, Tone. I assume you're the first person I thought of whenever he said this show. No, I was an OC guy. Oh, huh. what's this show here? This is Dawson's, Dawson's Creek. Creek. You be- watch Dawson's Creek? No, I was also an OC guy, but Charlie Conway from the Muddy Ducks, also a big, big cast member. Rotate and, the and, stick. Uh, that's No, that's, that's, that's Banksy. Banksy. I'm talking Conway. Team Dawson's Cat. Creek was a little oh. before our time. Charlie Conway. He wears the, wears the seat. Bombay's boinking his mom in the first. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Triple yeah. Deke. Okay, yeah. 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 No, 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 Charlie. He's in this one. Yeah. You watch Dawson's Creek? No, 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 no. Bob, are you the only one on this call? It's a little I older. It's no, a little I watched older. it. Yeah. I watched Dawson's Creek. Right a little now. older than you guys. That's the problem. Yeah. I mean, we you might have missed it. By probably two or three years. But by the way, I did watch a lot of OC as oh, well, and that was yeah. absolutely yeah, fantastic. California. Well, Vanderbeek went straight to Varsity Blues from yeah. Dawson's Creek. That was like absolutely. Boom, skyrocket. I love that. I, I missed all those shows. I didn't watch any of them. But they sound like a blast. Oh, yeah. Everybody was having a blast. Oh, yeah. And the OC one really changed a little with the way people acted. Yeah, people started dressing different, and acting different in Plumboro, Pennsylvania. <laughs> really? When that one started showing. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Alistair, Yeah. Yeah, the hills. Days. When the hills started happening, people started dressing different, and acting different. It's like, oh. holy shit! This show, <laughs> this show has some real influence out here. Laguna Beach too, probably did the same thing. Oh, I, well, that was a little past. Yeah, we're a little, okay. Just okay. like Jersey Shore, probably. Yeah, I think those are more younger. Yeah, yeah. 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 Kind of did their thing. More mine, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you get you got impacted and influenced by Jersey Shore? Um, in a way, you could say. Start shaking your body. Uh, not not in that way. Sigs. It was before your time, Con. No, it was GTL. That, that was my time. Yeah, you got Jim Tan laundry, obviously. Cabs are here. DJ Pauly D. What sure. Mm-hmm. I went sure. to West Virginia. It was the Jersey Shore of West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was awesome that the world got to see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have fun. a good time. Those people have a good time. Oh, yeah. And then they started that show in Virginia. That was like the Jersey Shore version of West Virginia. Really? Where they were like mudding and stuff. Oh, I remember Buck that. Wild. Buck Wild. Yeah. Buck Wild. There Buck it is. Wild, yeah. yeah, there's a Buck Wild show. It was. Basically for West Virginia. Really? It was in West Virginia? Buckwad? It was unbelievable. I, th- I thought it was. There's in another West one down Virginia. south, too. Yeah, I think Flo- that Florabama. Yes. What? All those Florida, shows, yeah. because yeah. of what Jersey Shore did, they basically said, okay, we're going to take that concept and Different just do it Which all is over. Walk them in houses, no phones. Yep. Yes. Just put cameras everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Let them party, party, man. Like, it's party drink. Drink. And like, it's the same type of person, like Staten Island, Long Island, New Jersey. And then they just did that with West Virginia, Different Florida, Florida, Bama, Texas. Yeah. yeah, love that. They did it all over. That was real world. That was real world. Bingo. Yeah, yeah. back yes. in the day, exactly. that had a hell of a run. Oh yeah, yeah it did. Remember when the Miz went in there and really started yeah. popping off? Yeah, mm-hmm. big time. Now we have forty years of the challenge. It's been awesome. Is CT yeah. still still doing it? Still, still doing, doing it. CT is still doing Damn it. Damn near fifty. 
What'd you say last week? He's your favorite. He's uh, my favorite Boston athlete. Yeah, he's my favorite athlete from the New England <laughs> region. Still got it. Yeah, by a mile. He's dominant. We want to talk about titles. Here. Yeah. And he will talk. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he backs up his shit, too. Yeah. He's not just talking. Thank you, CT. Thank Love you, you CT. CT. All right. What's the other gimmick there as we went down Nostalgia Lane with North Alabama? <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, that was fantastic. The last one, hopefully you've seen this movie, Matt. There's a movie, or, uh, Pat, with James uh, Ban on Fire, Denzel <laughs> yeah. Washington. I've been giving Dabo a lot, and, man, since they turned that corner against Notre Dame, they came out and pulled out a full-on <laughs> can. So Dabo Sweeney is the man on fire with Clemson 31-20 over UNC. They are looking hot right now when we are ready to bury them. I wish you had more time. That's from that movie, right? Yeah. Boom. And yes. then the jump off the swim yep. with the blocks. Creasy Bear. Yeah, I've seen it. That movie's a good movie. Great, great movie. Bear. That movie's a great movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you, if Denzel's in it, I'm probably watching it. Yeah. yeah. No doubt. That's probably a pretty good little rule to live by. Yeah, yeah. Equalizer Three. scratches the man on fire itch. Yeah, you haven't seen Equalizer. I have not seen Equalizer. Three just yeah. came out. Ooh, it's, it's good. good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got to see them all, Bob. Pat. They're, they're nice. Let's talk about they're good nice. and being nice. Are you in a garage right now? Where And what is the uh, what is the OSU Heisman thing? That's all the numbers that the guys have won Heisman's of Ohio State people. Yeah, th- yeah, those were the living Heisman's. So, like I said, when you're when you have a big game against Michigan, Troy Smith, number ten, had three of them. Um, I'm actually down at our house. We bought a place in Portsmouth, Ohio, on the Ohio River. Nice. Little Appalachia for you here, trying to enjoy it. So we're down here for Thanksgiving, and I'm kind of in a pseudo garage breezeway type deal to keep my kids away from me so they're not just all over the place well have an incredible thanksgiving we're very thankful for you this season you know shooting us straight on these college football Mm -hmm. rankings has had ohio state at one since week one all the way through will that change this weekend in ann arbor we shall see college game day will be there tomorrow what side what's your favorite side thanksgiving side Ooh, favorite side. I really like a nice, uh, like, sweet potato. Oh. My mom makes this little souffle with this little crust on Ooh. top, pecans. It's really nice. Oh, yeah. That's a nice little dessert slash. Am I healthy? There is a sweet potato in yeah. here somewhere. Mm-hmm. My mom makes a sweet potato little casserole thing. It's also delightful. Anything else? What are some other sides that you'll definitely have on the plate? Oh, Coach, my plate's going to probably you know, have the turkey, obviously, right. but I'll have the gravy and the stuffing kind of smothered all around with some gravy, some broccoli casserole with a little rice in there. Yeah. That's going to be a big win. And then we do a little green bean casserole, big casserole guy. Okay. And then it's it's on to the plethora of desserts, Coach. I mean, pies, 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 oh. cakes, all kinds of different things, cookies, you know, whatever, whatever your heart can desire, we're going to have that. Yeah, you got it right. You got it right. Thank you so much. That's the general. Happy Thanksgiving, pal. Bob Carpenter. Yeah, Bobo. No room on the fucking plate for mashed potatoes. Wow. Well, Ain't got room. Pies, pies, pies. <laughs> yeah, it's already got pies, 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 obviously. <laughs> I'm a casserole guy. Not a single mention of mashed potatoes. Yeah, That's not. why the general is the guy we listen to. Yeah, a- yeah, absolutely. You guys can have the general, and, you know, mashed potatoes can have Walter Payton, man of the year, three-time defensive player of the year, J.J. fucking Watt. But, yeah, you guys get Bob. Oh, okay. Whoa, Watch what? your mouth. Whoa. This guy's the general. You're- this guy saved football. Yeah, absolutely. He did. 2020. What have you done for me lately? What has he been saving lately? Uh, he's giving rankings. He's saving the college football playoff committee. Sure. Guy's got Perhaps. 1% body fat. Is that where you guys are at JJ? right now? Huh? Is that where you guys are at? Pinching? I don't know. I do not know where we are at, but I, Bob's probably pretty close. When was the last time you tested your body fat percentage? Uh, whenever the Packers, I think, made me do it. Uh, Lie. Yeah. Lie. Bob two, Pod, I think. Two weeks ago, okay. Bobby and I were in war. <laughs> yeah. We were testing that thing out. I don't really worry about my body outburn. fat percentage too much. Sure. Are you getting more jock now than you've ever been, or are you maintaining the same? I'm trying. You know, it's hard to put on muscle, at, you know, at age 39 as I am right now. But uh, I think I sent a picture. I you I got a new dumbbell rack. I got a nice. new uh, glute ham deal that I took over from my brother-in-law. So cool. things are looking up. We're trying to we're trying to make some gain. You're doing this thing with the glute ham thing. Uh, no, I'm doing it where I lay back and my legs squeeze. My legs go up. Uh, just, already, yeah, yeah just reverse sorry. hyper. And you got reverse go, hyper. Gotta, oh, you're going this oh, way. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. it. The dumbbells, remember what Arnold told us? Get to the chopper, put the cookie down. Mm-hmm. I'll be back. Yep. yep. <clears throat> Shmay. 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 And then he said, whenever you're forcing reps, that's when real gains happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no rest. Yeah, and re- you rust, you rust. Correct. That's right. Boom. So why don't you get those dumbbells and just until your arms fall off? Maybe you could be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Maybe. I mean, we're all trying to get there, aren't we? Well, mm-hmm. yeah. I think with the life that Arnold Schwarzenegger is living right now, I do dream to get to that level. His Amazing. message is awesome. For real, though. Like, his message is basically, who cares? Work hard. Have fun. Like, yeah. 
consistent hard work, it sounded like. There's no secret. There's no secret pill. There's no secret he can tell you. Just work hard and do what you want to do. If there is one unavoidable truth in this world, it's that there is no substitute for putting in the work. That's the first. Hey, what's this book about? Let me read the back of it, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Put in the work. Okay, what's this one? There's no shortcut, growth hack, or magic pill that can get around mm -hmm. the hard work. Okay, hard work right there. Then this one, let me get to the next one. Right. People have tried <laughs> to cut know, corners honest. and skip steps as long as hard work. As, there's another one. Yep. And then what's this last one? Uh, yeah, don't you get left in our dust because working your ass, working your ass off is the only thing that works 100% of the time for 100% of the things worth achieving. That's a great message. Yep. Unreal. We don't need to hear that, actually. You know what I mean? I've heard him say on different, uh, he did a couple of podcasts where he's talking about the book and he's, what, he has seven, he has seven things in there and I asked him why. And he said, well, he would have had 30 or whatever, but the publisher said he had to get it down to seven. <laughs> so he has, a, he said he has a ton of them. So he combined probably 10 of them into one. Yeah. Hey, this yeah. one, you can dr drift off a little bit, but basically it sounds like his message is easy. Just work your dick off. You want to do something, go work your ass off. Yep. I appreciate that message. Yep. That needs to be hear heard more because everybody just sees things and they're like, well, how'd that happen? How'd that happen? Well, everything that led to this point is probably uh, sleepless nights, a lot of anxiety, yeah. stress, mm -hmm. uh, focus, uh, missing out on a lot of stuff, missing out on a lot of stuff so you could potentially accomplish something. Like, that is what it is. And I think with the way the world has become, that has kind of got camouflaged and disguised by people think, thinking that overnight success is a real thing. Like, maybe once or twice whenever TikTok just chooses, yes. hey, this person's going to be famous. We're uh -huh. just going to put this person in front of everybody that can take place. But that is very, very few and far between. Everybody else that has ever been considered an overnight success has worked their asses off to get to that point where they get recognized one day, where the previous day nobody knew who they were. So I will stand by working your ass off forever as the best message. And I think that's what we learned from Arnold yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Just Absolutely. work your ass off. Agreed. He did say seven million people have died from pollution, though. Did you hear that, AJ? That was I he didn't hear that. Seven million. He, he said total or a year. I thought he acted like year. per year. Is that on on the planet? What's he talking? I, about? I was listening to what he was saying, and he said, "Because you know, it's seven million. Yeah. And I was like, "Well, that was a lot of information." I didn't even question. It. I took that as gospel. Smog in LA. You never know. Mm -hmm. The amount of bums. Yeah, they don't count them. Oh, okay, good. He's actually the Schwarzenegger Policy Institute I mean, works on homeless stuff. Oh, they do. Yeah. So no, it's great. Arnold policy. counts him, but yeah, Arnold's a good guy. The actual death count, I don't think there. There was some what a terrible that... schedule he went through. Sorry, his schedule went from being Arnold and doing what Arnold does, and then he was the governor, and he has to go. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Oh yeah, yeah. He signed. I mean, I, I guess get, yeah, he go, signed up it. for it, but like, no, yeah, he wanted it. The doc. That's a world you don't want to do. You know what I mean? No. But thanks to all the smart people that will maybe do it in the future because it feels like they're not doing it now. Yep. Right? Keep going. Do it, smart people. Do it. You hey, got it. Smart people, figure it out. Figure got, it a out. got a big thing going on next uh, November. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can't wait to hear about that every day from people that have no fucking clue what they're talking about. Yeah, that'll be, be a good time. That's a good time. Yep. That's American politics. Yep. Everybody's Where'd next. you hear that at? Well, I read an Instagram meme. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Cool. It's true, though. It's cool. so true. That's what they do. That is absolutely true. Like, I saw a meme. It's legit a meme, or, yeah, it really is. What was that? Remember the hey, last? you know, with your platform, you need to take a stand for insert something. Somebody that I was friends with, like uh, maybe in college or whatever. And I'm like, okay, you got it. Now, what's the other side say? There is no other side. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, just yeah. so I know who I'm, just so I know who I'm starting a war with. Can you let me know? There is no. Other. Did you hear what I just said? That's Ten it. People dead. That's correct. So, so do you want to? Do you want to do it? Oh. Is that what you're? Gonna, oh. You, you're not saying Pat. I knew. <laughs> mm. I knew the guy that would take. It's like, all right. Well, <laughs> those people are the worst. That makes me angry hearing that, honestly, because I know a lot of people like that. To everybody these days. Oh dude. yeah. Except for us, honestly, and like, we're a little bit too transparent with how dumb we are about that whole thing. Maybe, uh -huh. you know, because I then that turns people off as well. But like, it feels like a no-win situation over there. Like, I think we're all in agreement that we would like good things to happen to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I think that is. Yeah. But that gets lost, it seems like, in the conversation of, ah, ah, fuck you, ah, fuck you. <laughs> well, I got this stat. Well, funny you say that. Fucking, I got one too. And it just never ends. It never ends over there. And it's like, that's, let's not have any of that at Thanksgiving. Yeah. No, let's not well have any said. of that. Oh, well yeah. That let's not have any of that at Thanksgiving. Have it. Don't bring I can't that. wait. I can't wait to hear all kind of stories about Thanksgiving families coming together and they get to kind of hang out and chat and talk for the first time. There won't be any issues. We'd like to let everybody know that's thinking about bringing up like changing the world at Thanksgiving. Don't. 
that there's going to be somebody that is equally as passionate as, uh, passionate as you are on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. So if you want to sign up for a nice 10-rounder in front of the whole family, God bless you. Do it outside. Go get them. I think yeah. that's what everybody do it outside. There you go. I think that's what everybody's thinking. Mm -hmm. Yep. And with that being said, you're both fucking wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they're not going to do it outside, by the way. <laughs> and nothing's going to change, right. which nope. sucks. We're not happy about it. We would like to get it to happen, but let's just enjoy some turkey and ham and stuffing. Oh, and man. Wide. Sweet potato casserole. Wide. And some green beans. Wide. wide. And pies. Pies. Wide. Pies. Wide. 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 Let's enjoy wide. that. Hell let's yeah. enjoy everything and not worry about changing the world maybe for three, four hours. There's some NFL football on top of it. Ooh. I do appreciate the fact that the ESPN folks are back to tweeting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We'll see how long that lasts. What's that? Well, I'm assuming X no. is probably on its way out. Elon made it right. What do you do? Do you apologize? All the advertising money's going somewhere that I think people were happy with, something like that. <sighs> Every day oh, really? it's fucking something new. It's a great platform. Can we just keep it alive? Yeah. Can we just, you know what I mean? Can we just keep it moving? It was nice to see the ESPN people back tweeting, though. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I saw that, right? They're all the way back. I think. Uh, yeah, I, they are. I think they're all the way back. Yeah, yeah I never would have guessed. Foxy. Well, I mean, what are we doing? Exactly. What are we doing? What are we doing? Exactly. We're all making it. Foxy. Like, Come on. You have to have Twitter. It's the most important app on earth. Yeah, Foxy, they're well, just looking for a hill to die on, brother. There's a lot of people no that don't point have to think most about important There's a lot of people that don't have it that aren't in, uh, I don't know. There's more people don't have it than do have it. I don't know. Yeah. Sports run that app platform, and yeah. uh, there's a lot of Go stuff to threads. that we have questions about. Go to Threads. Threads is real. Threads is a real thing still. Still a thing, still mm -hmm. thing allegedly. Head on over. You'll enjoy Tom Segura told a story about what's on his Instagram now. Yeah. And I didn't know that that was infiltrating Instagram. I thought that was just X. X was just showing like the worst videos of all time on my timeline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're like, hey, welcome to X. Elon owns it now. Yeah. Here's five guys getting curb stomped in a row. It's like, bro, what the fuck happened to this place? You're on the For You tab. You need to go to the following. It's like, well, who knows me? Who's saying For You? This is not for me. No. I don't know who this is for, but this is not. I don't want to see this. I don't even watch scary movies. No, right. I, don't, I don't even do that entire thing. So that was... Now I guess Instagram's having a similar type oh, of yeah. situation. People are just getting murdered on Instagram. Oh, yeah, all the time. How's this happening? What's the deal? Murder's out there. They just want to let you know it's out there and that you shouldn't overlook it. IG's a big mic thing as well. What's if your mic, if your microphone's turned on when you have your Instagram open, yeah, if you mention something, whether they're you know Tom's talking on a podcast about Garth Brooks or something like that, IG will pick it up. Has there been a ceasefire in that particular conversation? Uh, Garth oh, Brooks. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so. And Tom I don't Segura. Think so. No, no. There was a ceasefire, right? If I read uh, in... Uh, in Israel and Hamas. Uh, and a hostage, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's good, right? That humans, real? humans did couple, something. Four-day yeah. four ceasefire, yeah. yeah. Four That's now. good, right? Humans Hostages. came together and made a deal. Yeah. For now. Mm -hmm. Okay. But so four, four days, right? It's only yeah. four days? Four days. Yeah. yeah. Like how they get to that. Are they trying to extend it now, or how's it work? We're going to do this four days, okay? Everybody needs to get turkey, ham, the whole thing. Thanksgiving. They want to watch the world. I want to watch the games. Dude, you smart people. Thank you for figuring it all out, smart people. We wish you would do it differently here, though. In, like, a better way, too. It's too loud, too negative. We need more positive stuff. We yeah. do. It's like the football. Does Gump know what Thanksgiving is? Give it a rest, AJ. That's a good question. Do you I'm just curious. What was your life growing up with Thanksgiving? What was your relationship with Thanksgiving? Canadian. It was in October. It was the first weekend of October every year. What's AJ? it called? Thanksgiving. What do you guys celebrate? Can you do it just like this, turkeys and everything? Exact same deal, AJ. It's awesome. Wow. What are you, were you celebrating us? Yeah, exactly. Tiger, tiger? Thank you, Ken. Yeah. Thank you for celebrating no us. No tiger, yeah. tiger. Tiger, tiger is more of a summer treat. <laughs> there was somebody that said you got it wrong, right? Nobody calls it tiger, tiger. Is that right? Yeah. yeah Someone, that person was wrong. Yeah, Gumpy, That person's that never guy. had tiger, tiger before. They were speaking <laughs> of tiger ice cream. If you have tiger, tiger, you know that it's called tiger, tiger. All right. Well Boom. said. Thank you for clearing that up. No problem. Welcome to Canada, bitch. Speaking of Canada, um, there was a car explosion Yeah. Uh, at the border of the Rainbow Bridge in Canada. I, as a person that went to Niagara Falls as a 16, 17-year-old, utilizing my brother's ID, saying that you only have to be 19 years old in Canada to drink and gamble and live, uh, drove across that Rainbow Bridge plenty of times, mm -hmm. had been to Niagara Falls, Fantastic humans, great people. This morning, I guess a car blew up on there. Jeez. Yeah, so we're obviously, hey, let's let's take care of each other. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. Let's take care of each other. It's Thanksgiving. Exactly. Yeah. Let's live. We got ceasefire. We got handshake. We got things happen. Let's live good. Here we got we go. football tomorrow. Here we Come go. On. Let's do this.
this, AJ. Let's do it all. Let's enjoy the hell out of Thanksgiving. And on that well, note, let's get a little bit smarter about yep. what we're going to watch tomorrow. It is time for a segment that happens weekly that not only do teams watch, but they anticipate potentially being on it. Mm -hmm. And each week that they fail to get mentioned on it, they think to themselves that they are a failure. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for In the Trenches with AQ Ship. Let's go. We got a lot of Texas. We got a lot of Texas teams in this week. Nice. Starting with team that might be the hottest team in football. Get the Dallas Cowboys. Look at the split zone. Check this out. I love the split zone. Why? Because the backside here, they man block it. Typically on a zone, everybody's going this way. We've seen zones every week, right? San Fran, everybody just gets elephants on parade, right? We're just rolling. But here, we man the backside. We cut the defense in half, send the fullback through the backside B gap. You get a long push right here with Zach Martin, one of the best in the game, going there and he just breaks, breaks, hey. breaks, breaks, breaks. Man. That flag you saw come in, not on the offense. Oh. Not on the offense. That was defensive holding touchdown, Tony Pollard. Play stands. Tony Pollard runs hard, AJ. Oh. Oh. He we, does. Can we see the defensive holding AQ? Yeah, I think it's on the center, if I remember It's correctly. not called that often. No, it's right there. See him holding him yeah. to get to the second nice. level? There yeah, it is. He's holding the hell out of him, yeah. <laughs> yep, they call it from there. He doesn't get to the second level. There's the call. Oh, he yanked oh, yeah. him down. He oh, yeah. yanked him down. What's yanked the deal? Down. I'm trying to do my job here. Guy's going to get hurt. Oh. I saw it in the game on Monday night. They did not call. Jason Kelsey did a little spin out of it and still got to the backer. Pretty Jeez. awesome. Is stuff. Jason Kelsey on here? I saw him toss the guy full speed. He is not on here. Oh, we give a quick haters. That's that his man of the year. Oh, okay. he, oh, he, he played oh. great. Should have been you, huh? Yeah. Yeah, here that we go. That was your first question. Hey, this is awesome stuff. We got the Houston Texans. This is third and one against the Cardinals. We get a nice little gang up here to here, but check this out. Let's go back here. This is what I love about this play. We put him and him together. So if this edge guy works inside, he's going to leave him for the fullback and then climb to the corner. And if he stays outside, then he would insert through there and go get him. Watch how these two just work hand in hand. Leave them for him. He gets this. He goes to the corner. We gang up there. Wow. Third and, one, third and one plus 30. Is that good? You tell that's me. Pretty good. That's, I think that's, so. Pretty that's, good. That's J.J. Watts, Houston, Texas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's playing for them at the end of the year? Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Legs feel good. Hey, this guy. Connor knows a little bit about him. Right guard for the Houston Texans, Shaq Mason. He's a dog. He is He's a junkyard playing dog. right now. He Speaking is playing. of dogs. Hey, listen, I could have, Foxy watched this game, right? There's better runs in this game. I could have picked five or six different runs. The reason yep. why I picked this one, let's showcase the big boy, the big man, Penny Sewell, right? Check out the deuce block. Takes him five yards. Now climb on a backer. Take him another five yards. That looks like a high school play. We get plus eight right there. Great block kicking out. And then you get Sewell. Watch this deuce. You do not. Move people like this in the NFL. What are we watching? Yeah. Deuce? Yeah, a little deuce block. A little deuce. Oh, uh, a deuce. Yeah, watch it. Deuce. Deuce. Kind of. Like did, did, did it break up in there? Night, like a deuce. Wrapped up like, <laughs> like a, a douche. douche in the room of the night. That's what you said. Did my tongue get a little twisted? No, it sounded like we were singing a song. Yeah. Yeah. I love that song. So it's a ends great up song. 20 yards downfield. Is that unbelievable? Yeah, he's a beast. AQ, best offensive line in the league. Whoa. Whoa. Listen, and that's that's anybody? the one thing you can hang your head on moving forward with this Detroit line. They can say all they want about competition, yeah. but when they have a top three offensive line in the NFL and they're playing good on the defensive line, you got a chance every game. Top three, Foxy. That's pretty good. We'll take it. That's pretty good. They're, they're in my top three every week of favorite O-lines to watch. It's them, what? San Fran, and what? Cleveland, hands down. Not Philly. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Philly I runs. love Philly. Philly's in there. Well, they're not, just they're, they're not they're not where they were last year. They're still climbing. They got time. They got they time. Got time. Okay. They got time. What oh. really shoves happen? Hey, we got a little them. we got a little something different here. What do we got? We got a little screenplay. Whoa, for the case. Yeah, so let's check Dollar. this out. This is what I love about this, right? So so many teams, before you let this thing roll, so many teams run this little alley screen where they throw the quick screen to the wide receiver and we get a little funnel back inside, right? So here's what they're gonna do. They get now. They called this into a perfect play. I'm sure they had some hint that they were going to be man coverage. They definitely didn't think they were going to get zero down here, but they do, which was the perfect play call against this. So you get all these guys. You get a safety rushing from ten. You get all these guys coming. Now he's going to peel on the back. Now watch how awesome this is. They run a halfback angle screen back to the middle, but the center is going to leak. And as this back puts his foot in the ground to come back inside. It leads him right into the block for the center, and you get a walk-in touchdown. Oh, genius. He's defenseless. 
Ahmed's a dog, too. How good is that? Great play. Well, AJ doesn't love it. He said he's defenseless. No, it's a great play. It's, I mean, come on now. That's so that's so difficult to stop. So, so difficult. You gotta, you, if you're coming off the edge, oh, I got to peel him. Okay, cool. Here we go. Hopefully he doesn't throw a balloon over my head for a touchdown. Oh, he, he's crossed my face, and now I'm getting smacked in the face. That, that was perfect. I'm just glad he too. threw the ball because if I'll, he didn't, yeah. Bobby Spillane was about to take two of his head off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, train's coming down the track. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The season's over. Yeah, yeah, him and him coming from the tracks. tracks. Bob's boy. But AQ, hey, you're right. You, oh. Your safety can't be coming from 11 yards deep when you're on the 20. You can't do it, right? I mean, that's one yeah. of those things you got to. You're gonna have to give that one away and at least get it linebacker depth. Yeah, let him know. Let him know. Get there before he has time to break that angle back in. Yeah, I mean, he's all the way gone. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He's coming from. Yeah. It's over. Yeah, it's crazy. What a Good play. play. Awesome I wonder play. if we're gonna see it on hard knocks. Oh, probably. Right. Oh, we got some big bumps coming up, it sounds like. Oh, we got some good ones. So this is a play that I was talking about. This, we're not watching guard deck. Guard deck does end up getting a little chip and gets thrown down here. But watch whoa, Jack Mason hey, right kid. here. We get him. And watch this little torque throw. Whoa! Oh, jeez. Oh. Casario taught him that. How good is that? Look, look at Gardak's effort, by the way. This is not a <laughs> negative play by his part at all. This is an amazing play. Are you kidding me? This is the man that down. JJ and AJ were talking about earlier. That's Watch right. this. Chip, knocked down. Oh, oh doesn't Gets matter. Gets back up. Got tripped. Okay, like top cat. of him. He's like a cat. He Excuse almost got me. a sack here. He is. Excuse me. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> that is great. Sorry Ed. about Beast. it. Beast. Yeah. Tud. Tud. Instead. <laughs> yeah. Instead. Hey, good play. Force good play offense. Absolute facial the floor. So when you when you do see this though with Shaq, now here, let's pause it right here. Right. See that little swim move? Mm. See the little swim move by 97? As soon as 97 makes the swim move, this is what you're kind of taught. Your hand is right there in that armpit, and when this swim move comes over, that's when you can just mm. dump. That's yeah. why they teach D linemen AQ and everybody. Don't put your arm, don't yep. ever swim high. Swim all the right down here. low. Yeah, right kind there. of one of those guys. Yep. Oh, you got another one. Same, same, guy. same guy. Same guy. Again, I love when you see this. When you get a couple, well, this one's this uh -oh. one might be the best one of the day. Uh oh. Check out number ten. We get uh -oh. loop. Oh boy. Oh, no. oh boy. Oh no. Oh boy. Oh, 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 oh he went low to hunt ribs. The ribs. Well, he, he had no work. Listen, if you're a linebacker rushing, you gotta have some awareness. You gotta have some awareness, AJ Wright, that this is this might come. Especially when you're doing a zone blitz here, right? He's looping to contain. Mm. Oh man. man. Oh. Target locked. Ooh. Shaq like. Oh no. Boom! Oh, geez. No, that one hurts. Ribs. Yeah, that, that one hurts. hurts. Good coverage by Gardak, but that hurts. <laughs> it was good coverage. Great work by Here's Gardner. a big one, huh? Hey, we get a little twofer. We get a little twofer action. We're going to watch the right tackle steal, and we're going to watch the center here. The center is going to be a little later, but let's watch here. He's going to get two guys, and his helmet's going to come off to start this thing. Watch my man pulling out in space. Six, seven, 330 pounds. Boom! Boom! Ooh, oh. Double whammy. Oh. And we get another one oh, coming no. down the field. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Oh, yeah. And we get another one coming down the field. Oh, Two, yeah. Baby. We see it. In one play. Oh, yeah. Boom. Oh, oh solid yes. shot. That made the play. Such a physical shot, too. That doesn't, it doesn't play over film, but that is, such <laughs> a, that is a very physical shot right there. Hit him clean. Very. Hit him clean without breaking man. stride. Launched. Right in the chest. Helmet. Oh, Watch this go one low. again, too, man. This one's, this one's impressive. Steals a dog. Gets two people, and his helmet pops off. <laughs> Boom. Now watch this. Boom! That's awesome. Got something for you, too. Oh, my God. Look at this. That was a face mask. That's carnage. Oh, That's carnage, God. people. There's just bodies on the floor. Kind of put his helmet down, didn't he? Kind of. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fly. A little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it might right. be. Let's stop with the fines. No. We're no, done. No, no, I can't. No, I can't co-sign that. Don't give a... Don't even... Yeah. Don't okay. turn that in. That was yeah. a great <laughs> word. Okay. Thank you. Baby, Way to go, Kush. And now we'll wrap up this program. That was great. In the trenches, by the yeah, way. Yeah, well, Thank mm -hmm. you, uh, Very thankful for In the trenches. Amen. Very thankful for you guys. On this Thanksgiving Eve, mm -hmm. are you going to make a putt or no? Let's do it. No, oh, not yet. Yes. We're not done. Jesus. No. Make it. I Sit do down. like the Jeez. excitement, though. Yeah. There's another putter option for you if you need it. Uh, before we get out of here, let's go ahead and make all the picks for the weekend because we're going to be off the next two days. Obviously, some people would say, well, it seems like you guys took today off. Well, you need to have a little respect. Yeah. yeah. This <laughs> is our doing? art. Okay, remember Bingo. that. Mm -hmm. This is our art. This is how we go exactly. about expressing ourselves. Game one. Packers, Lions, 12.30 start. A little half hour early on this Thanksgiving day. I think a lot of people will be hammering turkey ham oh, yeah. in stuffing while this one's going on. Lions favored by 7.5 at home, AJ. Your thoughts? 
Hmm. Seven and a half is a lot, especially on Thanksgiving. Give me the pack plus seven and a half. Hey, Q, how do you feel about this particular game? Well, one thing I've learned Here we is go. Um, yes. I'm not great with this spread stuff. Really? It's one thing I've learned. So I love the money line parlay. Okay. Okay. There <laughs> the we favorites, go. All yeah. the favorites. I love the money line parlay. All the favorites. Okay. okay. All so favorites. you like the Lions to just win the game at minus 360 on this particular mm -hmm. uh, yeah. bet or pick. That's a good pick. Foxy Lions are built to dominate here on this particular Thanksgiving or yeah, what? Yeah, I'd say so. They have not won on Thanksgiving for six years. And oh, I believe geez. they've only Yikes. won five times in the last 20 years. And I think that changes today. Will <laughs> they cover? I, or tomorrow, excuse me. Will they cover? The last two games have been pretty close. I don't know. But Ford Field deserves a winner. So I think the Lions definitely win this. Go ahead, Ty. Packers have like 15 guys on the injury report. Uh, there you uh, go. A lot of guys potentially not playing. A lot of guys on offense, receivers, tight ends who have been making a big impact. Uh, Aaron Jones, too. So it's going to be a pretty bare bones team out there. But. I think I like the Packers this week. Okay, yeah, sounds like it. Uh, AJ, you've played in this game. Going to be close on Thanksgiving? Is that what you're saying? You said on Thanksgiving you like the seven and a half. I think so. I think uh, I think Jordan Love kind of has some momentum going. I think he makes some plays that keep it close. That's awesome. Give it to Lions minus seven and a half. Hell yeah. Commanders, mm. Cowboys, 12 and a half point spread down there in Jerry World. Sam Howell's going to sling it as will oh. Dak. What defenses will show up? Which ones won't? We'll start with you, AQ. Which uh, You like the Cowboys to win. Do you think they're going to win I like, I like big? the Cowboys to win. I like Washington with the points. Okay, here we go. All right. Now we're doing it. Now we're Washington's doing it. defense is awesome. AJ, your thoughts? So I like Dallas to win, and I like Dallas to cover 12 and a half here. I think they win by two touchdowns plus. Okay, give me the Washington Commanders wow. to keep this one closer like than right. 12 and a half points. San Francisco 49ers taking on a Geno Smith led Seattle Seahawks in Seattle. Gonna be a lot house. Uh, AQ, I know you like the Niners to win on the road. Do you like them to win by more than a touchdown? Nope, I'm taking the Seahawks with the points. That place is bananas. I love the atmosphere up there. They're good for seven points with the with the fans up there. Okay, you like the fans plus seven and a half. AJ, your thoughts on Niners and the Seahawks? Thank you. He brings up a great point. That place is very difficult to play, but man, you can't phase Brock Purdy in this offense. So give me the Niners minus seven and a half. I like the Niners minus seven and a half as well, just because uh, you know what? Seven and a half is a lot of points. Dude. A lot of points. I know. It is. Make it six and a half. That's the hook. Kenneth Walker out is a pretty. Charbonnet's good too. Is yeah, that his name? I agree. Yeah. Agree. Kenneth Walker, uh, dog. Charbonnet, great. Pete Carroll, smart. Okay. Seahawks have not been playing well at home for whatever reason lately. Yeah, but everyone's close, isn't it? Every game's like close. Yeah, they're in every game. They're in every. Mm -hmm. Yeah, except for the uh, Ravens, I believe. Yeah, Ravens kicked the shit out of them. All right, I just believe in the Niners. I'm sorry about the Seahawks. I like you guys, too. Yeah. I like the Seahawks a lot, but I feel Kind of where I'm at. Same I love thing. the Niners a mucho. Let's go to Black Friday game. Dolphins versus the Jets, 3 p.m. on Amazon Prime. AQ, nine and a half is how many the Dolphins are favored by in MetLife Stadium, which is a stadium that I don't believe anybody liked playing in during uh, that poll that they gave out for players on the sure. Athletic. Miami able to take the show on the road here, you think, in a big way, AQ? I do. Usually when I'm so confident about something, it backfires on me, but I couldn't be more confident about this one. Okay, perfect. Uh, AJ, who do you like? Goopy, what do you think here? Uh, I think it's a lot of points, to be fair. I know Give the Jets. the Dolphins minus nine and a half. Yeah. We got it. I picked the Jets plus seven last week. As yep. did I, yeah. And it was an embarrassment <laughs> yeah. while watching the entire thing. Yeah. yeah. Tim Boyle, though. What are his stats? Do we have do we have Tim Boyle stats since he started playing started playing football? If you subtract the one touchdown and thirteen picks that uh, didn't happen, he had fourteen touchdowns with twenty three, twenty two interceptions. Yeah, but he's never had the opportunity to now. He knows the thing no hackett's offense inside yeah. now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He yeah. really does. Right. Well we'll see. He Ooh. absolutely does. Well You heard Aaron say about the test. Remember he came in like day one and he knew everything? All right, give me the Jets plus nine and a half. Nope. Can't believe I'm doing this again. That, uh, me neither. I mean, look. Can't believe congrats. I'm doing this again. We don't see eye you think to eye on Mashed in did nothing, but this is this is. I don't normally like to step in here. This All right, give me the, the Dolphins. Right, give me the Dolphins. Give me the Dolphins. Yeah. Minus nine and a half. Do you think the Dolphins are going to score 20? Yeah. 
than I would. Jets exactly. D is legit, though. Exactly. Jets D is legit. Is it? They are. They're, they're yelling at each other on the sidelines. Well, that's because well, hey, hey. Yeah, they need some points. I'm out of this. I'm out of this. Give me the Dolphins. All right, I'll go with the Dolphins. You can go to any of these games uh, thanks <laughs> to uh, today's sponsor, SeatGeek. Hell now, yeah. SeatGeek currently has $30 off all football tickets if you use the code PAT30. That's P-A-T-3-0 at checkout on the SeatGeek app, which is the greatest ticket buying platform on planet Earth and the, the moon. moon. Whenever you think about SeatGeek, you think about going to live events, you need to understand that they're the greatest because they don't lie to you. They don't catfish you, and they even let you know if it's a good ticket or a bad ticket. Mm. Nobody else is doing that. No. Nope. Shout to SeatGeek. It's a great time to buy tickets to a live event for a gift, too. Now, football obviously has a finite amount of games coming up, so okay. let's do that for sure. You know, not a bad gift for a, a boyfriend, husband, girlfriend, uh, mother, daughter, whatever. Not great gift is tickets. Yeah. Right now, you get 30 bucks off all football tickets with Pat 30. Let's go into the weekend slate now. Uh, on go. Sunday, we got to make these picks. Shout out to SeatGeek. Um, we will go with the Steelers Bengals. One point spread on Sunday. What's that, boys? Is uh, that right? Is no, that no, the right no. spread? Yeah. Here is. we go. Bengals getting one. At home. Go to that thing. Yeah. Tough to see. Getting one at home. The Bengals. Uh, who do you like? How do you like it? AQ Shipley. Um, I like I like the Bengals. Plus one. Okay. AJ, offense coordinator has been fired. Does that yeah. change anything for you? Yeah, so this is a fired coordinator game, correct? For mm -hmm. the Steelers. This is game one, fired coordinator game. Give me the Steelers minus one. Okay, give me uh, Steelers minus one as well. Tony, you like that or hate that? I actually, actually, I normally don't, but I do actually like it this week because the Bengals' defense has been so, so, so bad that this actually might be a place where the Steelers could score like 17, 18, 18 points. Well, and also, who's quarterback for the Bengals? Yeah, what does that line. mean? How's it go? A great question. I like the Steelers minus one, even though I love that Bengals uh, yep. environment. Oh, yeah. They Both deserve true. Joe to be there. I don't love the, what has happened. Panthers, Titans, three and a half point spread. Titans favorite at home. Listen to that. Frame's got to be pumped, AJ. I don't know. AQ, who do you have here? I mean, this is a clusterfuck of a game. I'd rather mm. uh, Titans minus what would you rather? What would you rather? I was excited to hear what you'd rather, rather do. Rather what? <laughs> All right, I would like to hear what you'd rather do. I'd rather watch paint dry than watch this game. Oh, okay. oh, no, you would. No, you would. Yeah. I did that for a living over there. Watch paint dry, made yeah. paint dry. Obviously, a, an artist like Bob Ross on those ships. Lucky to have you, Gumpy. Who do you like? Thank you. Titans minus three and a half. AJ. I don't really know, but give me the Titans minus three and a half. Me too. Give me Will Levis, just somehow playing much better than he has played for like four straight weeks. What do you have to? I think this is the uh, the first time that they've been home in the last five. Like they've had four on the road, and this is their last. Right, give me Carolina. Back. Give me Carolina. Actually, oh, you're gonna oh, bet on Frank Reich over wow. Mike Vrabel. I'm just you're, betting on Jeff. I'm not. Be I'm keeping the coaches out of it. I'm just. I think Bryce Young might make some plays, Thielen. I think the Panthers find a way to find some magic. All right, I'll be on the Titans. Let's go, Bucks, Colts. In Indianapolis. Ooh. Obviously, Gardner, Minshew, and the boys are going to be buzzing fresh off a of bye week. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Taylor, he knows. He knows. Oh, yeah. Michael Pittman Jr., he also knows. Of course. Okay, the boys are flying. They lose Darius Shaq Leonard on the defensive side of the ball. That's going to be something uh, that I think Colts fans are going to pay attention to this, yeah. this particular Sunday. Like, okay, didn't need a guy that was defense player of the year a few years ago. Got it. Couldn't find a place for him to play. Got it. Cut him in the middle of the season. Got it. Yeah. Don't even trade him to get anything else. Right. Got it. Okay, sounds good. Let's keep an eye on that. But the Colts defense has been great. Favored by two and a half at home. Hey, Q, do you like the Colts or the Bucks? I'm going to go with the Bucks. Fuck I'm, you. Yep. Sorry. Sorry, boys. Sorry yep. about it. AJ? Give me the Bucks plus two and a half. What's everybody's deal? You know why the Colts are favored at home? Because it's tough to play at Luke's Oil State. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, yeah. It is. Dope, dope. Welcome to that, Bucks. Yeah. Hope you guys played that all week at practice. Also, potentially a Jim or say revenge game. Yeah, with what Brian Gumble did to him. Exactly. Don't even put the More. T on the end of his name. He's definitely going to rip an axe <laughs> at halftime. All right. Ursay minus two and a half then at home. Let's yep. go Patriots, Giants. Patriots favored by three on the road. Bruce, the New England Patriots are favored by three in a time where everybody's thinking Bill Belichick's going to get fired from the Patriots. What's that say about you and Tommy DeVito, pal? Uh, I mean, you know, it's it's not a kind story it's telling, but this has been a curse phrase on Hammer Down, but I think the wrong team might be favored here. Oh. 
Ah, boo-hoo. We're 2-8. and eight. I hope we lose. So, yeah, I think the wrong team's favored, too. Okay, so you think Patriots lose this game? Just is that you hoping? or actually? No, no, no. They're going to win this game. Yeah, because Tommy DeVito is going to be seeing Who's those. the quarterback for the Patriots? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Is Mac the three? Oh, we'll find out Sunday. I've told all of them to be ready. That's a, Bill Belichick, who's the starting quarterback? You know, every other team basically has to do this. Every other coach has <laughs> got to say this thing. I told them all to be ready. Who's all? Everybody on fucking roster. Mm -hmm. Next question. Shut up. What's that ring camera thing? I'm a fucking dog. Sorry. <laughs> Next. I wish Bill Belichick would treat this like Please Jim Harbaugh. Please do that. Like Jim Harbaugh has treated yep. this entire thing. Jim Harbaugh has done a stand-up set after a stand-up set after another stand-up set. Every single press conference since the punishment has been weighed down on him by the Big Ten. Bill Belichick needs to do the same thing. Yeah, he won't. Uh, he'll never change. Uh, but he will win this game, and this will be the last one we have this year. Thank you. Who do you like? Giants plus three. AJ. Patriots minus three. Just because how stupid it feels to say that at this stage with this Patriots? No, I just I feel for Bill in the ring cam, and I know how <laughs> juiced up he looked in that in that video, and I hate that he has to deal with that, and someone put it out without his consent. Amen. We don't know. Maybe he yeah. saw himself and was like, "Fucking let her ride." Yeah, yeah, true. You know what I mean? Send it. Yeah, you're right. They no got a plums. video of me doing what? Oh, showcasing my diesel fucking chest? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Run it. Release. Fucking yeah. send it. There's not an ounce of flub on that body. Give me the Patriots minus three just because I don't even oh, want to make a pick in that game. Although I do like Tommy DeVito. History tells us that maybe Belichick led defenses against younger quarterbacks. Not the best. You know, not the best opportunity. What's up, Colin? For, to for Tommy? Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to take away the run because that's what he does. He's going to take Saquon out of the game. And then Tommy's going to have to figure out what the fuck's going on. Okay. The back end, there's going to be four different game plans. Great mm -hmm. stat, too. Matthew Judon, he's been out since week three, leads the team in sacks with four. So Good. maybe maybe we get some guys. No. Okay. Maybe, maybe we get some guys, you know, get a couple sacks on there. It's huh? just hard to pick the Giants, I think, but it's impossible to pick the Patriots as well. So you just like, all right, Belichick. I'll just take Belichick. Yeah. Okay. But are we past the time of just picking Belichick? A lot of people are saying yes. Yeah. Against good teams. Off a bye. Let's go. Saints, Falcons, Artie Smith, favored at home. Against the Saints. Go. I am going Saints, and the reason, because we're playing musical chairs at quarterback. We're back to Desmond Ritter this week. I'm going Saints. Okay. You don't think that's good for Desmond Ritter? Go ahead, AJ. Um, give me the, the uh, Falcons at home minus one. I, you know, I feel for what they're going through in Atlanta, and I think Ritter, I think he has a day. I don't understand why they're favored, but I, I like it. This is the classic yep. Lee Corso. Somebody knows something. Give me the Falcons. I'll yep. go with the Falcons. Jaguars, Texans. Now, J.J. Watt is in Houston. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will he be at the game after going to the Burnley game on Saturday? Who knows? He said he's in and out. Is he out of Burnley because he's going to be in the Houston Texans game? AFC South rivalry, Jacksonville Jaguars. Texans getting two at home, A.Q. Shipley. Uh, we know very well how loud that stadium can be when they're rolling. They're starting to roll. I am a huge believer in C.J. Stroud and the offensive coordinator there. Texans. Okay, Texans plus two. A.J., who do you like? Man, pretty much I'm right on, in line with A.Q. Defensive coordinator Matt Burke. I love that guy, too, for the Houston Texans. So give me the Texans plus two at home. Man, dogs at home. They're probably offended by this. Yeah, yeah. I would, especially this new Texans team. Yeah. D'Amico's probably pulling from it a little bit, draining from it a little bit, getting the boys wild up. Give me the Texans as well. J.J. was on the show. Today, and he's going to play for them. Go. Rams, yeah. Cardinals, pick them. Stafford, Kyler, who do you like, A.Q.? I like the Rams. I think uh, I, I could be wrong on this stat, but I think the Cardinals have are like one and something against the Rams in it's the bad last record. five years. Okay. Does it matter, though, now that there's a new coach? Uh, I don't – yeah, I do because it's the same – Defensive line staring across at the same offensive, offensive line. line. Okay, so the reason why you're picking is because nightmares that you have had playing the Los Angeles Number Rams. 99. So you like the Rams. AJ, who do you like? I was going to go Cardinals, but AQ flipped me, so give me the Rams. I'll take the Rams as well. Uh, Browns, Broncos. Ooh. Two and a half point spread. Broncos favored at home against who at quarterback? Joe Flacco. DTR? Yes, who is it? DTR still the guy? I would believe so. Okay. If that's the case, I'm going Broncos minus It has moved half. to plus one, by the way. These odds have moved. Since the graphic has been made, it's plus one for the Browns instead of plus two and a half, a point and a half movement. Okay. I'm still going Broncos. Okay. You like Broncos minus one and a half. Yeah. AJ, who do you like? This is a tough one for me, but um, 
With the uncertainty at the quarterback position, I'm going to take the Broncos here at minus one. Give me the Cleveland Browns plus two and a half or plus one and a half. Chiefs Raiders division opponent. Obviously, no love loss here. No. <laughs> Chiefs favored by eight and a half in Las Vegas at 425. Can't wait to watch that on Sunday. AQ Shipley, who do you like? Chiefs have been shut out. Uh, Three second halves in a row. Andy Reid will not let that continue. They're going to fix this, Chiefs. You think in a big way? He likes the Chiefs way. minus eight and a half. Uh, AJ, who do you like? Yeah, I'm with AQ here. Give me the Chiefs uh, minus eight and a half. Yeah, a little redemption maybe, but also the Chiefs normally like show us who they are and they they stay with it for a bit. Yeah, for a little, yeah. Especially we're, when it comes to covering spreads. Yeah, we're in the middle of the season. Mm -hmm. yeah. Give me the Raiders plus eight and a half. Oh. Okay. okay. It's a good pick. Yeah, because Max Crosby and Patrick Mahomes, yeah. they got that little yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Kept just close. kept it close against Miami. Yeah, give me the Raiders plus eight and a half. Bills, Eagles, 425 on CBS, three and a half point spread. Eagles favored at home against a Buffalo Bills team that might be all the way back, AQ. I uh, still go Eagles. I think they're too good, and every time you try and doubt them, I think they continue to show up. See ya! Nick Sirianni said in the tunnel to the Kansas City Chiefs fans after their last win. AJ, who do you like? I mean, how could I pick against the Eagles with that Sirianni video coming out from Kansas City's tunnel? So, yeah, give me the Eagles all day minus three and a half. Oh, yeah. I'll take the Bills plus three and a half. Okay. I think the Eagles win, though. But I think it's uh, – I do appreciate really? Razul Douglas looking up buildos and showing it to the camera when he was on here. Though. That was great <laughs> television. I was watching. On ESPN, too, for sure. And then yep. the game that will end the Week 12 Sunday, the Ravens and Chargers battle. Three and a half point spread. The Ravens favored in Los Angeles. Six hour flight. The Ravens have been the only team that has seemingly been dominant throughout the entire season, but they still have three losses. Mm -hmm. They can be beat. There's been some games where Lamar hasn't looked as spectacular as he has for most games this season. And then on the other side of the ball, this team stinks, is mm -hmm. what everybody's saying. Who knows who's going to be fired next over in Los Angeles? Ravens favored by three and a half. AQ, who do you like? I like the Ravens. I think the Chargers are dead. AJ? Ravens minus three and a half. I think LA is a place where it's not really like a home field advantage. Like Lamar and the boys want to show out. Odell wants to show out oh, in LA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a lot of friends over there. Yeah. There's uh -huh. going to be a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of people out there. I think they're excited to play on the road here. So I think three and a half is not going to be enough. Give me the Ravens as well, even though I feel for the Chargers fans who have been through it. That's the entire spread. Yeah. Slay to me. Let's go, boys. That's good work. Shut the door down. What's that, pal? I want AQ to put another log in that fire. Oh, yeah, you're right. Hold on a sec. Nice. You missed. Did you hear it? No, you missed the fire. I think I nailed it. No, it's right down there. <laughs> but it went through the screen. Did you mm. see it? Oh. Lost. I didn't see it. I, just, I didn't see it either. It hit that thing. And then bounced. Why don't you get there. the poker? Hey, boom. Since we're not going to be live on Friday, we want to give a little love to DoorDash. Hey, DoorDash. Now's your time. You're the yes. best. A lot of people are going to be home right now. Mm -hmm. You need to download this app. If you haven't downloaded DoorDash yet, the f I don't know how. Yeah. What are you doing? I don't know how. What are you doing? I don't know how you've existed in 2023 without it. And they say neighborhood favorites delivered. That's real. Mm -hmm. Those restaurants that maybe you don't want to go up and get out and go to. No. I'll just come right to the doorstep. Mm -hmm. Easy. Shout out to DoorDash. We appreciate the hell out of them. And thank you for being created. You've made me a little bit lazier for sure, yeah, yeah. but certainly got me to enjoy more local restaurants than I normally would because there's no way on a Tuesday I'm going to go to this place because I got 100 things to do. DoorDash says, we got your back. We'll bring it to you. It's great to bring the community together. It's great to not have to leave the house. Mm -hmm. And it's a fantastic creation that's been brought into our lives. Thank you, DoorDash. Love thank you, DoorDash. DoorDash. All right. On this, uh, yeah, that, that thing does work, by the way. Yep, scan it. This scan, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. QR, QR code. code. Yeah. Boom. It works. Take it right to the DoorDash changed the world. They really did, AJ. Real it deal. Changed my world. Mm -hmm. Changed my life. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's fucking awesome. It's the best app on the planet. The best. All right. Before we get out of here, I'd like to go around the room and uh, <laughs> do a what are you thankful for? We should do the AQ putt before then? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. AJ is the last one to yeah. give us thankful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he didn't get his promo at the end of the second hour, so. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Power right through it. Mm -hmm. Come on, AQ. Right, here we go. AQ. On, AQ, sure, there's another putter over there if you want to change the putter. Mike looks like a puka show. Bruce, yeah. we turn off. We are. We are. There we are. There we are. There it is. Here we are. Going with the same putter that's been here in the past, brought an Odyssey in. Didn't know if you wanted to dance with the O. <laughs> here you go, AQ. <laughs> you got six balls there, I do believe. If you go three for six, we'll give another 20 people. Five. 
Hundred dollars. All you gotta do, AQ, is just put three balls into that hole right over there. It's simple, isn't it, Connor? Come on, AQ. It's it's pretty easy. You just hit the ball and it goes in the hole. AJ, any read for this guy Thanksgiving Eve for maybe twenty people to win five hundred dollars? Yeah, don't miss it left. That's what everyone does. Okay. Okay. Don't pull it. He says, make sure you don't push it either. How many balls? You have six balls. All you gotta do is make three. That's fifty percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy. That's easy. Already, no chance. This isn't a gusto. He's got it. AQ Shipley. First ball. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nice. One Pass. Here we for go. one. Here we go. Hit the stick Eddie. dead center. All you got to do is that. Two more times. 20 people, $500 on this Thanksgiving Eve. We found it. He was actually getting golf lessons on the phone this morning, I heard. Yeah, out here really? by Clyde Christensen. Push. Ooh. Oh. It's all right. Okay. That one's rolling off the green, by the way. Yep. Yeah. That doesn't count in our particular game, but mm -hmm. in real life golf, that one's in the sand trap potentially. That's right. That's right. But I like how aggressively you stroked that, AJ. Yeah, I'm not leaving it short. Nice aggressive stroke out of the man who has seven hundred dollars shoes on. Like Jack Nicholas, his feet all close. That's how much those Bam. Shoes are. Okay, okay, another one off. Are they really that much? Uh, yeah, I think so. Because you're paying for it to look weathered and look bright. Uh -huh. How comfortable are those shoes? Is it very, sh yeah? very comfortable. Is it shoes they, fault that we've they called one for three? What's bowling the brand? shoes, AJ. What's the brand name? <laughs> Golden <laughs> Goose. Golden oh, Goose. Oh yeah, I know yeah. a lot of they have uh, they have men and women's of those, right? Yeah. One for three, looking to go two for four here in his golden push, goose shoes. Pushed wow. it. I pushed it. Oh, this my guy's God. falling apart. All right, he's going to have to go two or three here for 20 people on this Thanksgiving Eve to maybe win $500 going into the holiday season. Oh, two or two, because there were seven balls cool. and we said three to six. Oh, going Looks in. like That's I got cool. a bonus ball. All right, bonus oh, okay, ball. Cool. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, we'll okay. okay. Just checking. Doesn't need it. I pushed it again. Uh, he this is, guy sucks. Yeah, he actually oh, does. Yeah. Yeah. All right, AQ. All you got to do is go two for two to end this thing on Thanksgiving Eve and. 20 people win $500 going into the holidays. Come on, Don't you want to help some families? Don't you want to help some, get some people out? Yeah, it's straight. The do, the plum bob. do the plumb bob thing. Can't mm -hmm. make the first one and then miss six in a row. Seriously. No. No. He has. He could. He could. And he oh pulled it. Oh, my God. That's the worst one yet. <laughs> what what the the Happy AQ. Thanksgiving, AQ. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. AQ, uh, as oh, you, no, we gave him the yips. As you probably roll this one in. Okay, nice. one of seven. Nice. All right, nice. one of seven. Come on. That's in. pretty good, though. Come on back. Come on back. Make the first one. Just some phone calls here. Let's go to uh, Raider Man in Vegas is on the line. Raider Man, what's going on? Happy Thanksgiving. It's a tough put, AQ. I mean. Raider Man, you on the air? Terrible. Hmm. Mike, Michael Cole missed like 15 in a row, I think. So yeah, I think that guy sucks. The only option that should be your favorite side is Thanksgiving. Mashed potatoes are year-round. Thanksgiving is one-time deal. Stuffing cool. is the only answer. Well, Raider man, it's it's great to hear that you found your voice again. Remember the last time you yeah. called us mm -hmm. at the, about halfway through, you kind of lost the pirateness <laughs> yeah. of that whole thing, Raider man. Gentlemen, I'm sorry for that. You know, would I even be the Raider man if I didn't follow my face from time to time? True. Hey, love the self-awareness there. How yeah. do you feel about the they're, the Raiders getting eight and a half this weekend? How do you feel about that against Jeez. the Chiefs? I mean, look, we all see the way to beat the Chiefs is you get in Mahomes' face, which we can do that with the Condor, but also just take out Kelsey. I think our secondary and our defense has been playing better as a whole all season long. We so just got to get a, a little bit of our offensive click going. He's a pirate. Uh, eight and a half is a lot. Very clear. Hey, yeah. what are you thankful for this year, Raider man? You guys. We're thankful for you too, oh, Raider. Yeah. Have you. a Thank great you, Thanksgiving, Raider man. Thank man. you, Raider man. Have a great Thanksgiving, Raider man. Thank you. Let me hear you say Raider. 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 Yeah. Yep. So, can't hang up on him. Yep. Things broke. Uh, oh, nice. Yep. This thing sucks. <laughs> yeah, I am not thankful for this thing. No, okay. should I will be. say over here. Got things sticking out of it. I don't know what matters, what doesn't. Might as well do one more call, though. Let's go to Lawrence in Connecticut on the, uh, on the phone line. What's going on, Lawrence? Hey, Pat, AJ, boys, happy Thanksgiving. How we doing? Happy Thanksgiving boy, to Lawrence. you, Lawrence. Larry. Let's right. go, Lawrence. Hey. Hell yeah, out of Connecticut. What's going on? Hey, so this is really for Tone Diaz. Shout out to the pod. And uh, Boston Connor. Shout out. With all the OC hoopla going on, who would you rather have? Mac Jones or Kenny Pickett? Oh, great question, Lawrence. Happy Thanksgiving to you for doing that, obviously. Tone, I'll let you start. Who would you rather have, Kenny Pickett or Mac Jones? Kenny Pickett. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, 
There's been some things that have been great as of late, but as of late, Mac Jones threw the worst interception I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay, worst interception you've ever seen in your entire life, a little fadeaway one that dropped yeah. right into the old buddy's yeah. uh, chest. Yeah. How about you, uh, Con Man? Would you stick with Mac Jones or Kenny Pickett? Yeah, Mac Jones. Okay, you talk about worst um, worst pick of all time being yeah. Mac Jones. Yeah. Happy anniversary, worst play of all time, butt fumble, celebrating 11 years today. Wow. Yeah. Love 11 years ago today, back when the New England Patriots were the New England Patriots and weren't oh. talking about Bill Belichick leaving. They created the worst play in history, and it's all Mark Sanchez's fault, even though he's been on the wrong end of this one, the rear end of it, if you will. It's oh. bullshit that he gets kind of ridiculed about this type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Because AQ, this is by far the worst play in the history of the NFL. Yep. Ain't that right, AQ? I think you got... I think there's a lot of other plays that are worse. What? Oh, it's a butt fumble. What? It's like, what? Is that right, AJ? It's like a butt fumble. I mean, we've seen a lot yeah. of these. When? When? What the fuck? When have you we've seen, seen some butt these. fumbles? We saw one this year, didn't we? Did they score a touchdown Just on real quick, to, to break this down even further, it was a miscommunication. What? Mark Sanchez, obviously, he didn't. He wasn't, Maybe he wasn't he was trying to back, run right? this. No. Yeah. Okay. That's the worst play of all time. I you can't so? believe that you're saying that. I love that, that you say that. You think that's the worst play of all what time? By think? far. What, what, what other plays? Your play was stupid and it was the wrong call. Why'd you have to bring that person. up? What are you talking about? No, we, no, my play, Thanksgiving. Your play, you called it. Yeah, my, the, my play's not the dumbest one of all time. No, that I, I wasn't even on a play. You yeah. know, I was on the field, but I wasn't. Uh, this is not the worst play of all time. You're right no. there at the bottom. No, that's good day. Good day, four punts, 49 yards. I was probably about to drop another 62-yarder here. I was really feeling it this particular day. But people say, this is the worst play of all time? No way. No, not even close. No way. Look at Griff Whalen get under center. Colt Anderson, the Montanimals quarterback. I mean, you guys had the numbers. It's a problem. You got Ebner. You got Ebner out there. Well, the they also called every human was lined up off the line of scrimmage. We didn't have enough guys on the line. Yeah. so <laughs> That was a flag. There was four Almost had it. Almost got it. Well, Colt Anderson, you know, if he could wiggle just a little bit more, might have been able to beat four or five guys. But there's our people's coach, Chuck. But we missed you, Chuck. We Love missed you, Chuck. Chuck. Yeah. Miss you, Chuck. Matt Overton standing right there. He's still in the league, I do believe, Snap, and he has a podcast called the Stay Ready Podcast. Illegal formation, the entire right side's off the line is what old cuz says. <laughs> right yeah, it's not the worst play of all time. No. No, it's a butt fumble. Exactly. 11 buff, years ago. Uh, butt fumble was the worst play on the Sports Center, not top 10, and they used to do that thing where they rolled over the worst yeah. play, and if it was worse than number one, they had to retire the butt fumble because for an entire year, it was the worst play that was on that list. And so they said, you know what? We're done with this. We can't keep doing Look it. Look at Ninkovich. What a fridge running down there, yeah. escorting. Yeah. He's running the parade for the touchdown there. Look at Big Nink. Wow. Look at Big Nink. Hey! Armbands and all. That defense was good. That defense was unbelievable. This was back when the Patriots was the Patriots. And yeah. Sanchez, not his fault. No. no not no, his no, fault. No, no, no. Defense still good. Just like for, for our particular play, nobody's fault. This mm -hmm. is just football. Football yeah, happens. Put his face down. Oh, you see him put his face down at the very end? He's like, oh, no. People are going to remember Sanchez, this. Yeah. right there, you can see it. Oh. Yeah, he's laid out there. Hey, hey, Mark, we think you're great on calling games. Yes. We think you're great on TV. And we think it's bullshit that people are celebrating 11 years of this. Because this is by far the worst play of all time. The play that I was on the field for, nowhere near as bad as it was. No. no. Nowhere near. Nope. Just so it's all clear. Not even close. Nowhere near as bad as it. Nope. Nope. I don't really think it's a debate. I mean, look at that it. angle, though. It looks pretty bad. Almost had the edge. Did the Patriots score a touchdown? <laughs> he did almost have the edge. Yeah, you know, and then he's gone. <laughs> it's a touchdown. What does happen in the first? What a first play here. There's a lot closer game, though. Yeah, what happens one. here? Yeah, this Brady is Brady play close. action touchdown? It was 14 nothing in the other game. Like, it was a touchdown. Like, it, there are a thousand things that are worse in that play than this. This is in the second half. I mean, there's a lot to talk about, but wasn't supposed to happen. The problem with that by play, six. You what, the best thing team. that might make your play worse is that you guys definitely. Stop saying your play. I mean, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Colts, so, play, Colts play. Is that you guys definitely practiced that a ton throughout the week? I don't know if they practiced the butt fumble. Well, that's they the practiced thing. that all year. What's that? The Colts play. That's been pra that might have been practiced for 11 weeks. Never with Griff, though, <laughs> at center. Yep. Guy got sick, who was supposed to be the snapper, on day of game. Ah. Showed up puking. Okay. We probably should have said, hey, let's not throw it out today. He's yeah, we Stanford throw that one guy. out then. He's a Stanford guy. He understood. He read it quick. He's too good. He read the playbook too good. It didn't, it's uh, going to happen. Of course. Colt Anderson was not having There's a miscommunication. That's going to happen. Let's clear the air, though. Let's okay. talk about what we're grateful for. Okay. AQ, we'll start with you, pal. Mm -hmm. Nobody on earth that's watching this is thankful for your putting abilities. Yeah. Trash. It's okay. Mm -hmm. One of seven, embarrassment. It's okay. But you aren't a professional putter. No. You're a pundit, an analyst, a dad. First one was good. Yeah. What have you done for me lately? Missed six straight. Bingo. In 
total opposite directions. Yep. So, like, we have no idea where the fuck that ball's going. At least I was adjusting, right? What are you most grateful for on this particular Thanksgiving, A. Kush? I am uh, I'm thankful for you guys. Okay. Thank like you, that. Nice. We like that. Thankful for the opportunity to come spend some time with my guys every sure. week. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Thankful for my family, my three crazy little kids. Love them. I'm thankful for stuffing. That's right. Thank you, A.Q. Baby A.Q. That was really cute. Town, how about you, pal? What are you thankful for on this? Uh, I'm also thankful for my family, obviously. Uh, wife, daughter, family. Uh, I'm thankful for you guys, obviously. Uh, we're thankful for you. Uh, thankful for Ginger Ale. Um, nice. Chicken wings. Yeah, okay. I love those. Wagovi. What, who? Um, Wingies. Wagovi. Wagovi. Mm -hmm. What is Wagovi? It's a, it's a, it's a uh, diabetes slash weight loss drug. Monjour. Oh. <laughs> Wagobi is the name of the thing. Right? Yeah. Um <laughs> Thankful for that we live in America, and you're allowed to fire people. Hmm. Oh, because my Canada. And I'm thankful for mashed potatoes and stuffing. Okay, thank you. We're thankful for you, Tony. Nice. Aren't we? Absolutely. Ty, what are you thankful for on this Thanksgiving Eve? Goes without saying, I'm also thankful for uh, all you guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very nice. We're yep. thankful for you, Ty. Thankful for my family as well, my wife, my daughter, uh, all my brothers, you know, my parents, of um, course. my extended family. <laughs> uh, thankful for my Iowa Hawkeyes, oh, yeah. kinda, despite all odds, making it to the Big Ten Championship and, and letting me lay eyes on them in a mm -hmm. couple weeks here. Um I'm How about your butthole? Well, I was just, I was gonna say I'm thankful for uh, those beautiful Hanes boxers that I had yesterday yeah. for holding the line. And uh, <laughs> oh, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Trench warfare. You know, I'm not thankful for that, but that's what they went through yesterday. And they you salvaged them admirably. Had to throw them out when I got home. Mm. No, good move. No, smart move. Smart move. you put them in the trash at your house. I did. All right, because today's garbage day. So of course, it's only Get a it out. couple of hours. Exactly. Just exactly. Put it with the diapers. Bingo, bingo. Those smell so bad. They do. The diaper trash cans. Yeah, oh. I would recommend oh. uh, getting like a car air freshener and kind of tape, taping it inside. Those it diaper do genies much. are legit, man. No, no I have a terrible. diaper genie. It do, it doesn't. And if you man. accidentally leave it open, oh. so like I well, held like it open a second, a second. Yeah. throw that yeah, thing in there. That. Need to go grab maybe like a wet uh, a wipe a wipe or whatever, and you go back. Oh, it's already the waft. It's already game set Gross. match. Yeah. Well, and if you get turds smothered on it, you know how you like put it down through the little yep. deal. If you get turds smeared on that part, then you need to get a whole new plastic situation too. Yep, agreed. Poop's a real deal. Yeah, especially for you yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm thankful that my my butthole battled, and I'm hoping that it's going to battle tomorrow <laughs> because I am also uh, very thankful for all the the food that I'm going to eat. As What's well. your favorite side? Uh, it's it's going to be definitely uh, a stuffing, and then I think, like, like I said, the crescent rolls are uh, yes. close to. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love the stuffing representation on this particular program. I'm thankful for you, Ty. Hey, Boston Con, man, I know this is something that you love doing. Sure. I love this. This is my favorite thing. We all go around and suck each other off, and then Jesus, yeah, all right. Go. Is that what we're going? Is that what's going on here? Is that what? Has I mean, if you're not thankful, then so. just you don't have to. You have say to be thankful. Okay. It's Thanksgiving. Yeah. Cool. So, Corn Man, go ahead and talk about what you're thankful. Yeah. Sure. Uh, uh, soda pop, that nice big can of soda pop. Well, Dirty pop. Uh, can't stop. Boy, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking. I am. I am. I've been. Uh, what about your oh, shirts? Oh, Cotton Candy Big League Chew. You've been big addition yeah. to your life. Love yeah. that. Um, yeah. yeah, Cotton Candy Big League Chew, curveball mm. Cotton Candy, if you will. Um, uh, I'm thankful for oxygen and being able yeah. to breathe. Yeah. Need that. Uh, what about America? And a, a, hab a habitable planet. Love that. Mm -hmm. That's big. Mm -hmm. Arnold was talking about that yesterday. Very, very thankful for Arnold. Absolutely. Arnold, throw yeah. him in there. Um, Ty, point out for me. Very thankful for uh, Zen nicotine pouches. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be big, especially these next couple days, because boy, oh boy, we all know we're going to get pissed. Uh, no, not and, this Thanksgiving. Um, it's different than all the Thanksgivings of the past. These are going to be a super positive Thanksgiving. Yeah. Nobody's going to bring up any shit that's uh, disagreement calls. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I I, I know that's going to happen because I'm next the one. Year. I, I'm the one that... Don't do it. Don't be the guy. I'm the one that knocks. There's no reason. <laughs> Me There's too. no reason. Don't yeah. do that. Yeah, boys, we just did a whole. We did a whole show about that's not we, doing. That's where we live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we live. No, I'm telling other people not to. I'm not. Oh, <laughs> that's the worst part. You're a grandstander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I'm saying you guys should do that because it causes quite a stir. I like to cause a stir. I, I want to get a little rowdy at the oh, dinner. No, I know. Okay. Anything else you're thankful for other than raising hail a little bit? <laughs>
All right, we're thankful for you, pal. Yeah. Oh, it, you guys? Yes. You no. guys? No, we're not sucking anything. Um, no. Yep. Boys in the back, I'm thankful for all of you. Uh, I'm very appreciative uh, that I get to live this life with the group of humans that I do. My wife is kicking so much ass. Being a mama, I appreciate the hell of her. The baby, Mackenzie, mm -hmm. you're the best. All I'm trying to do is spend my life trying to make eye contact with her. Hey, make sure. eye contact with me. Because then whenever she smiles after she sees me, I'm like, oh, she knows who I am. She loves me. That's what I spend my life, so I'm very thankful <laughs> for her. I'm thankful for ESPN. Hey, ESPN has not been nearly as terrible as we thought. Maybe. Not at all. Not, no. not at all. Right? I mean, that is real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not at all. Nowhere near, especially with how it started. Been yeah. great. Anonymous quotes coming from ESPN executives, two places trying to tear us down. Yep. Yep. You would think old us would have been like, all right, fuck these people forever. Yep. Mm -hmm. We didn't do that mm -hmm. because oh. the good has certainly outweighed the bad. Yeah. So very grateful and thankful for uh, ESPN. The offseason should be spectacular. I'm thankful oh. for football. Mm -hmm. I'm very thankful for football. I'm thankful for tomorrow. I'm thankful for the next day. I'm thankful for the day after that. Right. And I'm thankful that all of you allow us to do this for a living. So, as we wrap up this Thanksgiving Eve, AJ Hawk is going to let you know what he's thankful for, mm -hmm. and also a nice note to kind of go off into the holiday on as we take two days off to finish this week before college game day on Saturday. Well, I don't have any special note or whatever, but I have no no problem being serious and letting you know what I'm thankful for, what I'm grateful for. When I was at Ohio State, we had a winner's manual, and every single day in camp, we had to open to a certain page, and there was a little box, and it said, I am thankful for, I am grateful for, and it was before camp. So my, my winner's manual from my freshman year and my senior year changed a bit. I was a bit sarcastic and terrible and stupid my first two or three years where I'd say, oh, I'm thankful or grateful for. I thought it was dumb we were doing this, you know, thinking like, what am I doing here? All right, let's go to football. And I grew to understand it and love it and realize, hey, this is a good thing. So, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's a good thing to realize where we are. And I tell you all the time, hey, what? These are the good old days. Don't mm -hmm. sit there and look back and say those were the good old days. I want, to, I want to pause this moment in time right now with everything, with you guys. I love doing the show, with where my kids are, my wife, my family, everybody. I want it to slow down because I love what's going on. I love everything going on in our life. So, yeah, I'm dead serious. Oh, yeah. So, I appreciate you guys. We love you, AJ. Mm -hmm. We love everybody that watches. Have an incredible Thanksgiving. Don't be the Connor or the AQ at the table. Be a unifier like yeah. sports are, which is what we try to do. Have an incredible four days. We will see you on Overreaction Monday. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life, especially with everything we're learning about people in the modern world. You could really change an entire day, change a whole Thanksgiving just by saying, hey, you look good. Good to see you. Yeah. You look good today. Yeah. Sweet shirt. Mm -hmm. I'm happy you're here. Don't be scared to say it because there's going to come a day you won't be able to. And the what ifs kind of disappear. So be nice. Be happy. Let's enjoy the shit out of life. And we'll see you on Monday. Goodbye.